Group A came to a dramatic last match finish yesterday as MDOCs just couldn't quite make it in that final dramatic game against the Napa Royal Kings. But instead, it was the Limassol Calunders who hung on by the skin of their teeth. Today, well, it's a new day and it's the start of a new group. We'll see Group B action today. And boy, this group involves some mouthwatering teams. We've got the defending champs, the three times consecutive finalists, and also some feisty underdogs. What are we gonna see in this group? Well, stick around and find out, because live action is up next. The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode, and Grizzly Bear Sports. We're just moments away from the coin toss of the first match of the day. And of course, uh, we'll give you a quick weather update. Well, we're finally starting to see some of the 300 days of sunshine that were promised here in Cyprus. Temperatures are expected to vary between 16 to 23 degrees Celsius, and we expect blue skies throughout the day. We haven't had much rain the last few days, so the pitch should be nice and dry, of course. Without further ado, let's head over to match referee Stefan Gooch, who's joined by both the captains. Okay, Sri Lanka lines to call. Head. Heads is called. Tails. Bowling? Okay. All right, good luck, guys. Have a good game. All the best. Well, the news from out in the middle is that Mark Hoare have won the toss and decided to field first. Well, a lot of people say that this group is the group of death, and I'm sure we're going to see some giants slain. There's a lot of heavyweights in this group. We've got the Mufflons, who are three times consecutive finalists. We have the Black Caps, who are the defending champions. We have Mark Hoare, who are playing in their first ever tournament, brought an extremely strong team. We've got the Sri Lankan Lions, who already finished third twice in ECS tournaments. We've also got the Limassol Zalmi, and we saw how impressive they were the last time they took part here in an ECS in Cyprus. And then we have the Nicosia Tigers, who are a feisty underdog, and maybe, just maybe, they could give us our own little ECS Buster Douglas story. Well, this should be a very exciting match, of course. Uh, the two teams we have playing this first match are the Sri Lankan Lions and Markhor. Markhor, well, I told you they're playing for the first time, but there are some key players in their team who we've seen in previous ECSs. The main one is Wakas Akhtar, who scored 758 runs so far in his ECS career and taken 42 wickets. They also have Ahmed, who has been leading the way with the runs here in Cyprus, but he's yet to play in ECS cricket, and I can't wait to see how he copes with the pressure. Of course, the Sri Lankan Lions, we know all about them. They'll have plenty of familiar faces, such as the big hitter, Roshan Sturiwardhana. I can't wait to see him come out to slog in the death overs. Anyway, let's not uh, have a, too much delay. The first ball is coming up shortly. Oh, welcome back to Ipsanas for the first day of action here in Group B. And as we take a look at this beautiful drone shot of the cricket ground right here and the beautiful village of Ipsodos, which is seven kilometers west of the city of Limassol. And let's start today with a quick recap of yesterday's action. Of course, uh, we saw MDocs needed to win at least one game yesterday, but would fail on four separate occasions to get that win. Well, this time around, they would restrict the Nicosia Tigers to just 89 runs, but failed to get to the target after a rather poor effort with the bat in hand in the second innings. And then, and one of the most sensational stories of Group A, Everest would notch their fifth consecutive victory after five defeats on the trot to start off the tournament. This was, what, this was an absolutely sensational turnaround and something truly remarkable as Everest would take this game by five wickets. And then going from Everest to the battle for the summit of the group, well, the Nicosia Tigers would dethrone the Napa Royal Kings and secure the top spot in Group A. This was a stellar performance by the Nicosia Tigers. They were sensational with a bat in hand. Some big runs made by Rashidul Hassan, who has stepped in later in this tournament and provided a big, big boost to the Nicosia Tigers. They are peaking at the right time. And then let's have a look at this. Of course, Everest's five game winning streak would be snapped in this match against the Napa Royal Kings as they would lose by eight wickets. Napa, well, they would finish this game inside the five, fifth over 
largely thanks to the fact that they restricted Everest to the lowest score we've seen so far this tournament. And going from the fifth over finish, let's have it. Let's talk about the fifth game of the day. Everest would come right back to winning ways and deny MDOX a chance to make it to the quarterfinals. This was a stellar performance by Everest. A good rebound after a gutting defeat. And uh, they would take this game by 15 runs, giving MDOX quite a mountain to climb as they would need to win the final game against that dominant Napa Royal King side, which show no mercy as uh, they would start this uh, group just the way they ended it. Of course, uh, they had two dominant victories right here at the end, and this one was a pretty one-sided affair as the Napa Royal Kings took this by 49 runs and put MDOX out of the group. Of course, a big congratulations to the four sides who have made it through. Napa, the Nicosia Tigers, Everest, and the Limassol Calunders, and of course, commiserations to all the MDOX faithful. But a big congratulations to their side for their commitment throughout the tournament. They've certainly been a joy to watch, as have all the teams involved in Group A. And let's have a look at the Fantasy Dashboard. Of course, uh, some key players here for Marquardt, and I would say the two players to watch out for would be Zishan Ahmed and Wakas Akhtar, both of them. Very important players, and Zishan Ahmed, potentially a bargain at just four and someone to have on your fantasy team. And of course, uh, the Sri Lankan Lions, a lot of familiar names there including Chamal Sadun. What a terrific all-rounder he is. A good left-handed batter and a solid wicket-to-wicket -wicket medium pacer. I'm really looking forward to this game and should be a nice one to start off action in Group B. And... Uh, just waiting for the uh, two opening batsmen to get ready. Of course, same skipper for the Sri Lankan Lions as uh, we saw in the previous ECS the Sri Lankan Lions were involved in. Nalan Pathirana still captaining this side very well. Of course, we've seen his twin brother, Sachitra Thuranga, umpiring throughout Group A action. Of course, he can't umpire this match as uh, certainly won't be allowed to umpire a game with his twin brother captaining the side. But uh, certainly a great cricketing family. And of course, uh, we're inside the power play. So just two fielders allowed outside the ring. The two fielders are currently stationed at long off. And then a fielder out at deep third man. And it looks like it's going to be Tajamal bowling this first over. And this is a very wayward delivery to start off action in Group A. And uh, hopefully we do see a lot of runs in this group as uh, this is a poor full toss. That is stroked away nicely. Of course, the theme, certainly for Group A, was that uh, most matches were pretty low scoring and that uh, you set a target of about 100. It would be a very competitive chase. When, uh, of course, at the start of this tournament, we were expecting that a target of just about 110 would be par. But uh, we got some very nice low scoring chases. We take a look at that one, of course. Uh, the umpire is just checking if this is a no ball. We await their uh, final decision. Decision is it's a legal delivery. He's gone high up in the air, early catching opportunity for Marquardt. Will they get their first wicket? They do. And this is a big moment for this team, of course, as they pick up their first ever ECS wicket. Big congratulations to Tajamal as he uh, notches his name on the European cricket record books. And a good response after losing a wicket. So good stuff here by Marquardt, of course, a team. We really expect to make a big impression throughout this tournament. This one was popped up in the air. Very well seen and taken there by the fielder. That's uh, Away Sulahri. Of course, Away Sulahri expected to bat at number four, so certainly might see him play a big impact in the second innings. <laughs> and there he is, Roshan City Word. We talked about him right at the top of the broadcast. He's a very, very big hitter, and especially good coming into the late stage of an innings and uh, playing that closer role which we saw Arjun Shahi play so well for Everest, but this is a different role for him now. He's been promoted up the order, coming in at number three, and he's now going to have to try to just weather a little situation here and drag this uh, Sri Lankan Lions through the innings.
And it looks like Sirwanda is ready to face his first ball. Where is this one going to go for him, Tajamal? It's a good ball. Right on the money, and it's well played by Siri Wardana, who will uh, get off the mark with a single. A little juggle for the fielder out at long off. That is Umar Farouk. Of course, we've seen Farouk take part in previous ECSs for the Black Caps, but first time he's going to be playing for this Markor side. And they're just making a slight fielding change for Kalugala. So they brought third man in for him and uh, sent the fielder out to deep cover instead. This one uh, just played away very gently and there's a half a chance for a run out. Siri Wardana eager to get a quick single but Certainly wasn't on there, so good call in the end by the Sri Lankan Lions. Very good morning to you too, Rob Thompson. Certainly, I agree. If uh, this group is uh, just as exciting as Group A, I think we're in for some great cricket. <laughs> that ball just very comically slipped out of the bowler's hand, and boy, it's uh, ended up towards the point fielder. Let's take another look at this one. This is a very comical moment to start in the morning. Whoop! Hey, <laughs> it looks like he's got a bar of soap. As it slips out of his hand, of course, Rob Thompson supporting the Black Caps because he's from New Zealand. So good call, Rob. Of course, uh, what did you make of the uh, Napa World Kings jersey? It was certainly inspired by the New Zealand national team's jersey. This one is uh, down the leg side, but it's going to be played away, and I think it's cleared the boundary rope, so that's going to be a six, and... Uh, very nice introduction here for Kalugala. His first ECS runs come via six. This is very well played off his pad. It's a poor ball. And slightly negative bowling, of course, uh, by the uh, left arm bowler going around the wicket. Comes off, it's played well off the pads, of course, fine leg inside the ring. So that's going to be a very easy shot for the left hander. And I like this move. He's coming back over the wicket now. And uh, this one's uh, played aerially. And this is also going to go straight to the Sri Lankan Lions dugout. So a really, really good shot here by Kalugala, who ends this over in style. It's a couple of big blows. And an over where Tajamal got a wicket is unfortunately for him going to be an extremely expensive one as 18 runs come off the first over. He's uh, struck away by Roshan City Wardana, but he finds the fielder, Zishan Ali. Uh, this is a big swing and a miss by Roshan City Wardana. Of course, we know there's only one way he plays, which is to strike the ball hard and strike it cleanly. So I don't expect him to try to place too many. Balls. He's going to look to go for brute force. Yeah, this is a very good ball here, so it's a nice start to the over for Awais Sulari. A lot of good chatter here by these Markhor players. They're, they're really up for this game, and they've just brought third man inside the ring now and they put a fielder out of cow corner so let's see if this is change in strategy and it's just taking an edge it certainly has and it's a very good bit of bowling Sulari's been terrific to start this over and he gets the wicket he deserves and that's the dangerous Roshan Siriwardhana who has to depart so excellent stuff by Mark Horley they're making quite an impression with all our European cricketing audience 
Goes for the big swing and see, takes the nets through to the wicket keeper Nadim who makes a very, very good catch. And there it is, a thickish edge, the ball deviates away and it's uh, gone to the wicket keeper. Watches it well and takes a good catch. So this is a nice bit of work early by Markor. They're looking very sharp out in the field. And for any sign, playing in their first match there. They're not showing too many nerves. They're looking steady, they're looking strong. And we're going to see the skipper, Nalin Pathirana, of course, uh, Pathirana. This is his uh, fourth ECS tournament as captain of the Sri Lankan Lions, so he's an experienced operator. Going up against this uh, very rejuvenated uh, Mark Horsai, who are, boy, they, they've started off by making a terrific impression. It's going to see him... Uh, as guard, the batsman is just uh, putting his gloves on, and as he does so, it's a good bit of chatter here by Marco. I like this, a uh, nice bit of applause. Everyone's up for it, and you can see it's the first game of this group, so there's a lot of excitement in the air. This one's uh, away, and it goes uh, straight to the fielder at point, so this is some good fielding here. Of course, uh, they're backing up the bowler very well, and uh, well, I, do, I really don't want to hex Sulari, but he's just one ball away from a maiden. That would be a terrific start to his ECS career. I know, I've done it. I've done it again. <laughs> it's the old commentator's curse that struck early in the morning. It's four wides. It looks like it's a minimo. Actually, seems to have got some bat on that one. Beg your pardon. And uh, well, that over is slightly spoiled, but it was still a terrific over nonetheless. Uh, Solari goes for just four runs as he was one ball away from a wide. So let's just take another look at this. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of bat on that. And uh, it's uh, going to be a very tough take for uh, the keeper, Nadim. And a couple of wickets fall early for the Sri Lankan Lions. They're still going along at a run rate of 11. And we're immediately going to see a bowling chain, so Tajamal doesn't get a second over here. I wonder if he's being saved for uh, later in the innings. We've seen a lot of sides so far in Cyprus just bowl their uh, strike bowlers out in the power play. Look to get wickets, but we're going to see Umar Farouk here instead for Mark Moore. That's a terrific ball first stop. That's right on the money. Great bit of bowling. Of course, uh, Umar Farouk has uh, taken part in previous uh, ECSs. He uh, has 18 wickets for his ECS career. And uh, his economy rate has been just under nine. So certainly enjoyed a good time so far here in the European Cricket Series. It's a fuller delivery. The bat just turns in Kalugala's hand and it's gonna go away to Oase and that's just a single. on a very good length and it's a uh, nice bowling here by Omar Farouk to start off. He's uh, continuing how he has for uh, most of his ECS career. And I really like the way Markhor have uh, played this power play so far. Their uh, field setting has been good. Their bowling has largely been on the money. Up in the air, could be a catching opportunity. It's a very, very well taken catch. That is terrific stuff by Oasis. He got back well. He had to backpedal a little bit, but he tracked the trajectory of the ball, never let his eyes look away from the ball, and he takes a great catch. And as the Sri Lankan Lions lose their third wicket, this is a good start for Markor. Very impressive bowling, and it's been backed up by some good fielding. Skipper Nolan Pathirana just trying to beat the fielder in mid-off, but he certainly couldn't get past a waste who was uh, on his feet and took a good catch and a well-deserved wicket for Umar Farouk, who has his uh, ninth wicket of his ECS career. So this is a bit of a rough start for the Sri Lankan Lions. Of course, we know 
that they are extremely experienced in this tournament, but this is uh, not the start they would have wanted. Of course, they're determined to finally win one of these tournaments. They've come third on a number of occasions. Can they make a final this year? Uh, certainly is a good sign for them so far as we see Kamal Reyes. We know what a terrific bowler he is, but now he's been pushed up the order to bat, so this is an interesting move, and let's see how he does. This is uh, just gently dabbed away. It's very well played, and it's a single. Terrific over so far by Farouk. Just the two runs of the first five deliveries. So uh, protection on the leg side for the left-hander, Kalugala. There is a sweeper on the leg side, and then a fielder out at Cal Corner. And played away. Is this a catching opportunity? It's always going to be a difficult chance there for Mullick, but I think he's done very well to get to it. A little bit of confusion with their running, and this could be a chance for a run out. But Mullick, after doing a pretty good job to get to the ball, misses out on a great run out opportunity. And this is probably the first mishap in the field by Markor, who have so far been terrific. As we take a look at this one, it's gone high up in the air. I think he's done well to get to that one quickly. Mullick, we've seen a lot of these go for a four, but then a little bit of miscommunication between the batsmen. And boy, they're very fortunate to still be there. That uh, was a huge let off for the Sri Lankan Lions. And Markhor with a, an early mishap, and probably one of the only mishaps we've seen in this initial stage of the game as the Sri Lankan Lions currently struggling a little bit in the power play, going at just under nine and over. And they've also lost three wickets, so this is going to be an introduction of a spinner. I think it might be Zishan Ahmed. We know how good he's been with his batting, but he's been equally good with his bowling as well. You know, in the domestic T20 league, in the three matches he played, he took seven wickets and had an economy rate of 5.8, so he's uh, kept things tight. And oh, it's just an LBW opportunity as... Uh, Another run out opportunity passes by, and uh, once again, some very dangerous running by the Sri Lankan Lions. It was Kamal Reyes running to the danger end as we take a look at this one. Oh, I think that's a tight call. So, um, the umpire gives that one not, not out. Just trying to get their field setting right here, and this is a good move, of course, bring the spinner in. Right at the end of the power play. And a very optimistic appeal, and it says a lot that the only appeals really came from out in the deep. As we see a little bit of a mix up in the field, and yet again, the Sri Lankan Lions slightly suicidal with some of their running. Uh, I think they were aided by a, a mishap. Out on the field, that was a quite error out of deep fine leg. So uh, Markhor with a few errors these last uh, few deliveries. And again, they're just a bit slow with their communication, the Sri Lankan Lions. And the wicketkeeper just quite not able to uh, grasp the ball. And in the end, he just uh, hits the stumps with his gloves. One's uh, played away well, and is this going to go to a boundary? It certainly will. So uh, much needed boundary for the Sri Lankan Lions. They haven't had one since uh, the rather fortuitous boundary at the end of the second over. I feel against this uh, Markhor side, the Sri Lankan Lions are really going to have to try to get to somewhere between 100 to 110. So. As you can see from that projected, they'll probably need to go at a, just about 12 and over as the uh, batsman just wasn't quite ready. This one's play uppishly, and this is a terrific hit, a very, very good shot. As you see, ECN's very own Ravi Punchal with a nice bit of fielding. And this is terrific stuff there. Look at how well he got behind the ball and then 
got that terrific angle of elevation and just manages to hit it over that mid-wicket boundary. So Kalugala certainly looking the most impressive of all the Sri Lankan Lions batsmen so far. This one's a catching opportunity, but it's going to fall short. And a nice bit of fielding there by Malik. He got behind it well. And uh, just one ball left in the over. Seen a few runs go off this one. Uh, Lankan Lions need more overs like this. After a quiet power play. And uh, this one is uh, going to go away for a four as well. So the fielder out in the deep. I believe that is uh, Wakao Zakhtar, actually. Normally such a good fielder. Tries to make an attempt at that one, and it just slips underneath his hands. That was always going to be a tough opportunity. As uh, Well, Ahmed walks off with his hands on his head, as that's a rather expensive over for Marco, as the Sri Lankan Lions rebound with a good over, one they desperately needed. As so far we've seen, Sri Lankan Lions have lost wickets at regular intervals, but they've... Uh, Managed to keep themselves in this g game with that last over, a very productive one. You can see Raymond bowling this uh, fifth over. And they've just called mid-wicket back into the circle. And uh, long on has gone a lot wider. This one's a drilled down to the fielder at long off, and it's just going to be a single. So a nice full delivery by Raymond to start off bowling to his field setting. Of course, uh, keep in mind... A lot of batsmen target that straight boundary here in Cyprus. It's the shortest boundary, whereas the square boundaries are a lot, lot longer. You can just see from that camera angle how short that straight boundary is. Nice to bowl one shorter, and it's uh, very well played by Kamal Reis, but there's uh, some protection out in the deep. by Kalugala, so Rahman is uh, certainly persisting with a much uh, fuller length to Kalugala. This is a terrific ball. Yeah, it just moves away ever so slightly, and that's what beats Kalugala, who's uh, going along a strike rate of just over 200 so far. A slightly wider and shorter delivery, and that's why he's going to be punished for it, Rahman. He, uh, Started the over fairly well, but this is a poor one, especially with no protection on any of the boundaries on the offside. Uh, all he has to do, the batsman there, is just help it over the fielder inside the ring and get a four. So Kalugala just continues to race away. But he needs to go back to what worked for him earlier in the over, Raymond, but still just a six run so far of the first four balls. Goes a little bit shorter. It's going to be quite a chase for the fielder, and it's a very, very good chase. You can see a waste with a terrific bit of fielding, but the Lunken Lions do well. They come back for a second run. One ball left in the over, and uh, this ball is going to play some role in determining how it goes. As let's see if Raymond can close this one out well, or is it going to be Kalugala? He's going to hit a big shot here to make this a terrific one for the Sri Lankan Lions. Goes shorter once again. Doesn't quite get hold of it, and it's just a single, so uh, fairly average over, one would say. I think uh, both sides will be content with that one, as it's uh, just nine runs off the over, as the Sri Lankan Lions are 53 for three at the halfway stage of this inning. So it's a finely balanced game. This uh, partnership has done quite well to get the Sri Lankan Lions back into it after a little bit of a wobble during the power play. And I believe we're going to see Farouk bowl this over. Of course, he bowled his first over was absolutely terrific. And it's a good time to bring him back now that 
Sri Lankan Lions have built a little 30-run partnership here between these two. And we just see Kalugala getting a, a drink of water. It is a much hotter day here in Cyprus today. Uh, I believe the temperature is just above 20 degrees Celsius right now, but it's extremely sunny, of course. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of our viewers who watch some Group A action will remember just how windy it was uh, through uh, most of Group A's games. At one point, we had wind speeds of up to 42 kilometers per hour. That certainly has died down these last couple of days, and we'll be hoping that's the case today as well. That is a good ball by Omar Farouk, a really good ball, and he is extremely unlucky. That's gone for a four, as they say, uh, not too much justice for bowlers in T10 cricket. That one's taken the inside edge. And, uh, well, things are going swimmingly well right now for Kalugala. Even when he doesn't quite middle it, it's going away for a four. We'll just left back a little bit. This is a catching opportunity. And oh, goodness me, it's a little bit of a juggle by a waste. And I think that's a four. That's been immediately indicated by his teammate. Who's uh, honest enough to admit that. That is, of course, Hamza Rahman. And uh, I just think that it was right there to catch for a waste. He seemed to do a very good job in the field so far. But it seemed to be at a very awkward height for him. And then, of course, we can clearly see from that replay that it does cross the boundary rope. So... Riding his luck a little bit here, Kalugala, these first couple of balls. This one's a more clean stroke, but it's just a single. You know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes in cricket. And uh, another lucky start for Farouk as well, you have to say. He's uh, bowled quite well so far. He deserved that second wicket for his bowling, but this wasn't to be for him. Takes an edge and it goes away for four. So Omar Farouk must be feeling like he's the unluckiest man in the world right now. This takes a thick edge and we've seen a catch put down so far this over as well as a couple of edges go away for a four. So the uh, statistics for this over certainly not reflecting how uh, Omar Farouk has bowled so far. And it's uh, glad to see that he sees the funnier side of things. Up. Good one on the left side. There's no protection on that boundary. It's a good chase. And they're going to come back for a second run. And uh, well, there were calls to throw it at the non striker's end, but Batsman gets back well. So some nice running here by the Sri Lankan Lions. Yeah, that's terrific stuff. Got back very quickly. Come on, Rays. played away towards long off and that's going to be a single to end the sixth over as the Sri Lankan Lions will be 69 for three so it's been a very nice recovery by the Sri Lankan Lions of course uh, they were 23 for three uh, near the halfway stage of the third over but these two have come back come in and really settle things for them this uh, partnership worth 46 as we take a look at the uh, scorecard for the Sri Lankan Lions of course Akila Kalugala leading the way so far for the Sri Lankan Lions with that terrific innings that he's playing out there. Of course, he's been aided by a dropped catch. And you just wonder if Markor will be made to pay a lot more for it. Uh, this is just a late fielder at point and a good single, a very sharp single taken by Kamal Reyes. Right on the pads, it's gone up and uh, it's going to drop well short of the fielder. And uh, that's just going to be a single for Kalugala, who's uh, presented a few half chances, you'd have to say, and actually a proper chance as well in these last few deliveries. That one, of course, uh, landed well, well before the fielder. Uh, this one was probably going wide, but he gets some bat on it, Kamal Reyes, and uh, with fine leg inside the ring, that's probably not too bad an idea 
Uh, that's going to be a free boundary for him. He's going to take this one with both his hands. All he needs to do is just throw his bat at it. And it sails over Tussawar Hussein's head, who is currently standing at fine leg. So just take a look at that projected score. They've really managed to bring it back up. We remember how rough the start was for the Sri Lankan Lions. Looking a big swing, and that's a, a good response by Raman after being hit for a boundary. That's that's really where he needs to be bowling as a, a left arm pacer. This time it's a low full toss, and he'll uh, get away with this one, Raman. It's a uh, gently played back to the bowler, of course. Uh, this is a bit of a trend in limited overs cricket that a lot of times full tosses are uh, more difficult for batsmen to play. This one's a slightly over pitched I would say, but Kamal Reyes is just incapable of getting a hold of it as the over comes to an end. Very good bowling figures for Rahman. He's done a terrific job as uh, giving up just 16 runs in the two overs he bowled. As Sri Lankan Lions are 76 for three at the end of the seventh over. As we take a look at some of the upcoming events here on the European Cricket Network, we'll be here in Cyprus through to Sunday the 23rd of April before heading over for a great fortnight of cricket in Milan. And then should have a, a nice uh, series going on adjacent in Gibraltar. Really looking forward to that one. And then we round out the month of May with some brilliant cricketing action up at the Sea Barn Ground in Austria. That should be a terrific series and some good action here on the European Cricket Network once we conclude action in Cyprus, but we're only halfway through the cricketing action here. Of course, today is the start of action here in Group B, and I've, I've really enjoyed this uh, first innings. So far in Group B, there's been a good back and forth. We've seen some terrific bowling by Mark Hoare, and we've also seen a good, good counter-attack by the Sri Lankan Lions after being in a rather rough spot. Fuller one, and this is struck cleanly, and that is struck beautifully as Kalugala will bring up his half century and a brilliant half century. He's batted terrifically well, raises his bat in acknowledgement, and deserves a good round of applause. And of course, Kalugala in his uh, first ever ECS match for the Sri Lankan Lions has made a 50, and boy, this is a very, very good 50 in a, in a moment when, of course, the Sri Lankan Lions were in a tough spot early. He's uh, led his side well. He's played away and he celebrates his 50 with a big one. So that's a couple of big blows. So Hale, who's been inserted into the attack while well, he's been greeted in a manner he'll not really like. This is a terrific shot. Take a look at that one. And it's a good catch by his teammate out of the dugout. That's a wider delivery. And you can just tell he's feeling the pressure after getting hit for a couple of sixes. Of course, it's a rather interesting move that they've decided to introduce a sixth bowler into the attack. Maybe that's a sign they won't use uh, Tajimal again, who bowled that first over and went for 18 runs. This is fuller and wider, and it's going to beat all the fielders and go away for a four. So Kalugala looking really, really good here. And just smacks the ball on the half volley. No protection on that boundary, so it's... a. Uh, not a very wise idea to bowl there as uh, Sohail. Boy, he's been under the cosh throughout this over. And uh, just look at how that run right now has gone to above 12 for the Sri Lankan Lions. This one's not struck as cleanly, but it's still going to get the desired result. It's a fortuitous boundary. But Kalugala, well, things are going perfectly for him today. He's had a bit of a slice of fortune when he was dropped in the late 30s. But he's taken full advantage for, of it. And you can bet away Shaw is feeling absolutely sick right now for dropping that catch. That is a single to round out the over. So it's a good cricket by the Sri Lankan Lions. Uh, of course, uh, the informed Kalugala smacks 22 runs and then keeps the strike by uh, bringing up the 23rd run of that over off the final delivery. So the Sri Lankan Lions are now 99 for three at the 8-over mark. And of course, if you remember during the power play when these 
two batsmen came out. We said that they need to go at about 12 and over to try to get the Sri Lankan Lions to that uh, 115 to 120 mark. But they've both done a stellar job. They've really dug their side out of a hole. And of course, you can see from that graph, it's been a very good ascent for the Sri Lankan Lions. They've steadily improved that run rate after losing three key wickets in the power play. I've been very, very impressed by these two. Goes up in the air, and it's going to clear the boundary by quite a bit. That is an enormous six. What a huge shot. As we see him just get underneath that ball, it's gone high up in the air. And boy, look how much it's cleared the boundary rope by. That is a stellar shot. As Kalugala, well, you just wonder. 29 more runs needed for by him. And if he keeps striking the ball as sweetly as he has for the last couple of overs, is there a chance for him? to make the first century of this tournament. This is a full toss. It's gone high up in the air. And boy, it's going to be deposited into the Olive Groves. What sensational batting by Kalugara. This is a poor ball by Sulari, of course. We know he put down the catch earlier, and he must be feeling sick. Giving all these dollies to... Uh, Kalugala, boy, he's been very generous to Kalugala so far, and uh, Kalugala is uh, happy to accept these gifts. This is a much, much better ball in response. They're certainly going to push for a second run here, and in the end, they decide not to, but they ran that first one really hard, which you like to see. I think the intent was there to go for the second run, but it's um, just a one run due to some good fielding. The fuller delivery and Fathi Rana provides a catch. Beg your pardon, Kamal Reyes to the fielder out at mid-wicket. So uh, Sulari, after getting clubbed at the start of this over, gets a wicket. And uh, boy, this has been a very good partnership. Kamal Reyes has certainly been a good companion to Akila Kulagala so far out there. These two came in when the Sri Lankan Lions were in a bit of a tough spot in the power play. And they've guided their side well and set up an excellent platform for them to uh, really... Let's go on and try to get a really big score with uh, eight balls still left in the innings. Of course, uh, this partnership was worth uh, just about 89 runs. So what a terrific partnership. Absolutely stellar job. We just take a look at the replay again here. Fuller delivery. Bat slightly turning in Pathy Rana's hand. Peggy Pardon raised. And it goes uh, straight to the fielder at mid wicket. And Janaka just going for looking to hit it across the line, but it's uh, going to be a dot ball and really. I think the last thing that uh, the Lunkin Lions would want is for Janaka to get a single off this ball and keep strike to start the next over as it's uh, going to be a dot ball. So I think this is a good end to the over mark where they deny Galugala the chance to uh, see the ball for the last uh, three balls of the over. So the Lunkin Lions are 112 for four at the end of the ninth over. But more importantly, Kalugala is going to be on strike to start this final over. I think the way he's seeing it, a good 15 to 18 runs is uh, certainly attainable. I think he's just going to have to slog the ball in this over. I don't see him looking to take too many singles. Janaka, his first couple of deliveries, hasn't looked overly convincing. And it's going to be Wakas Akhtar. So, of course, uh, the experienced operator from Markor, uh, interestingly enough, he hasn't bowled at all so far this inning. So this is the seventh bowler. Mark are going to use. This is a rather interesting. And it's a poor start to the over. There's a full toss. 
It's up in the air. Let's see the fielder get underneath the early cat. And boy, he actually crossed the boundary rope. Well, no, attempting to catch that one. So even if he'd managed to get to it, it would have made no difference. He was uh, literally standing outside the boundary rope, as you can see, when he went for that catching opportunity. But uh, good, good slog by Kalugala, who's now just 16 runs away from the first century of this tournament. So rough start for Wakas after. Yeah, this one's been drilled. They're certainly going to go for a second run here, the Sri Lankan Lions. They're calling for the throw at the striker's end. Mark Hoare, they know they want to get rid of Kalugala. And uh, let's just see what the decision is by the square leg umpire. He's saying, uh, let's have another look at it. But uh, Kalugala, he didn't ground his bat. That is very poor by Kalugala, who so far has had an innings almost without fault. He needs to be grounding his bat. Let's take a look at this. Why is he doing this? He's casually running. And he's going to get run out because of that. So he's going to deny himself the chance to get a century through uh, basically not following some uh, very basic cricketing fundamentals. He surely has to ground his bat. This is really disappointing by Kalugala. And uh, that's not the way you want to see him end in innings that has so far been absolutely terrific. And it looks like the umpire has indeed given him his marching orders. So a sensational innings by Kalugala. Boy, it was a joy to watch. It's been uh, certainly the best innings to watch so far this uh, first week here in Cyprus. And it comes to a rather disappointing end as uh, he falls sh short of his century. And, uh, well, we're still waiting for our first century so far this tournament. As we're going to see an experienced operator for the Sri Lankan Lions, Jamal Sadoon, come into bat. So a lot of protection behind uh, square leg on the boundary for Chamal Sudun. They've uh, really packed that uh, leg side boundary. And uh, boy, that's not how you should be bowling. It's also going to be a no ball. It's going to race away to the boundary rope. So it's actually been a very poor over by Wakas Akhtar. Extremely uncharacteristic for him. Of course, he's taken 42 wickets in his ECS career. That's a simple enough decision for the umpire. It was immediately signaled a no ball. But boy, with all this protection on the leg side boundary, you really shouldn't be pulling full tosses outside the off stump. That's going to be very easy to get away as. Boy, this is going to be a free hit, so nice chance for Chamal Sadun to uh, strike another big one. And of course, he is going to see his stump shatter, but that doesn't matter since it's a free hit. <laughs> Completely agree with you. Ke Keanu reviews uh, saying. Oh my goodness, that is bad running. Come on, you need to ground your bat. I completely agree with you, Keanu Reviews, and it's even more disappointing because I really think uh, Akila deserved a century for the way he batted, and to, to see him end the way he did, it's, uh, it's rather heartbreaking. Three more balls left, though, the Sri Lankan Lions innings. Uh, they'll be eyeing 135 now. One's played well by Chamal Sudun, and it's going to beat the fielder. So, well, Wakas Akhtar, he's uh, obviously had a very difficult time this over, but he's not even been backed up by his fielders on this one. It just slips underneath the fielder. And boy, you talk about swings of momentum in a cricket match. I mean, right at the start of this innings, I mean, Mark Hoare could do no wrong in the field. And as the innings have progressed, we've seen the errors come in, and they look a very different side to the one that started this match off as the Sri Lankan Lions have put out Spectacular recovery. This one struck well by Chamal Sadun, and it's a good bit of fielding here. They really needed that, the Sri Lankan Lions, and oh, they're going to get a second run because of an overthrow. And uh, really disappointing, and of course, the, the bigger cause of concern is that Chamal Sadun, who's been striking the ball well, will uh, come back on strike to face the final delivery. This is well struck by Sadun, and a terrific bit of fielding. And it's a good throw, but could this be Wakas Akhtar? needs to be behind the stumps. <laughs> He's spending his time applauding the uh, fielding effort rather than actually doing the old uh, cricketing fundamentals. But, well, it looks like one of the players has injured themselves. This is Akhtar himself. That'd be a really, really big blow if he's the one who's injured. And yeah, that's, that's on his knee. It looks like he's uh, going to need a bit of the old uh, magic spray on the knee. And they're going to need him fully fit, of course. He's uh, 
one of the most important batsmen for this uh, Marfor side. He's made over 753 runs in his ECS career and also did terrifically well in the domestic league. Scored 136 runs in the four innings he batted in. Uh, the strike rate of just under 220, so he's a spectacular player, unfortunately. Not quite seen that in this over. So struck well by Chamo Sadoon, and it's going to go away for a boundary, so terrific stuff by Chamo Sadoon to close out the innings. And boy, we've seen him play in a lot of European cricket series, and uh, he's showing us the fireworks once again. Uh, love watching him play cricket, and uh, it's been good to see this little five ball cameo by him, which has helped propel. The Sri Lankan Lions to 135, and well, after having a difficult power play, the Sri Lankan Lions close out this innings in style. That was a terrific recovery, largely led by, of course, Akila Kalugala, and we'll get a chance to check out some of his highlights for this innings. And of course, we saw Srinath Rajit get a four on the first ball, but then the very next delivery, he uh, popped one up that was taken extremely well by Awe Sulari, of course. Uh, Awe Sulari will drop a catch later in the innings a very expensive catch to drop as you take a look at some of these terrific shots by Akila Kalukula made 85 runs of the 31 balls he faced hit six boundaries and eight sixes of course uh, things back then were looking nice for Mark Ford they were in a very solid position in the power play and of course had the Sri Lankan Lions at 23 for three at 2.4 overs with a very good catch going back there by Owais this is a good job and boy Bowler with his hands up in the air and this is uh, well, this was a run-out opportunity. We saw some uh, rather risky running by Kalugala and Kamal Reyes early in their partnership. But once they settled in, they would look really, really good. That was a nice shot by Kamal Reyes, of course. He was a good partner to Kalugala, just uh, deputizing at the other end with some solid cricket. He had struck three boundaries and maintained a strike rate of 150. And, uh, of course, he just allowed Akila Kalugala to uh, go off at the other end. That was a rare mistake by Markor, of course, uh, the mistakes did start to add up as the innings progressed. A little bit of fortune there for Kamal Reyes. And this was a very, very poor delivery by Hamza as uh, full advantage of that one Kamal Reyes. He would just help it over fine leg. And then Kilakulugula uh, reaching his 50 over there and uh, saluting the rest of his team, just raising his bat in celebration. And uh, well, he'd send a few balls into, towards the dugout too, but that would have certainly delighted them. Uh, this inning was such a joy to watch, just the way he was hitting the ball, timing it so sweetly. Had a little bit of fortune at times as well, but of course uh, he deserved that for his terrific batting. And of course uh, that would be the end of Kamal Reyes' innings. He was a, a good partner to Kalugala for this one. He'd send it straight to Taji Namal, but we didn't see bowl after the first over. And uh, that was uh, certainly a nice effort by the fielder out of the long off. He uh, tried to get to it, and boy, this was a humongous disappointment. Uh, of course, Akila Kalugala batted so well, and it looked like he might get a century. He uh, didn't even ground his bat on that final attempt. And then uh, Chamal Sadoon, boy, he was entertaining in the four balls he paced. He uh, slapped Wakas Akhtar all over the park. He had 14 runs of the five balls he faced. And that ensured the Sri Lankan Lions would get to a total of 135 for five. So we're uh, not too far from the second innings. And of course, uh, I'll leave you with the scorecard for this innings. And we'll be right back very shortly, bringing you the Marcourt Chase.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fan Code, and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to Ipsonos for the second innings of this first match of Group B. It was a thoroughly entertaining innings to watch. As, of course, uh, the Lunkin Lions, boy, they sure looked good in that innings, I think. Um, they uh, ducked themselves out of a bit of a hole in the uh, power play. And finished strongly, of course. Uh, they ended up with a total of 135, so this is going to be quite a chase for Markor in their first ever ECS match. And we're going to see Ahmed batting here. Of course, uh, Ahmed had a very solid performance for Markor in the domestic T10 league, making 94 runs in the three innings he played in, going at a strike rate of just under 200. This one's uh, going to take a bit of a top edge. It wasn't the best ball by Kamal Reyes to start off. He's normally always on the money, bowling in and around that off stump. He loves to go around the wicket, of course. That's really his favorite angle, but doesn't quite get it right there. So it's a good start for Mark Hoare. Fuller delivery, it's played down the ground towards Chamal Sudun. And that will just be a single. As we saw how well Sudun batted at the end of the previous innings. He uh, put on quite a show in that final over bowled by Wakas Akhtar. Made 14 runs of five deliveries and he's going to play a major role with the ball in hand later this innings. Uh, I have no doubt the captain should give him a chance to bowl. Of course, uh, skipper for the Sri Lankan Lions is Nolan Pathirana. He's Currently stationed behind the stumps, just trying to get his fielding absolutely precise for uh, Ahmed. Of course, just the two fielders are allowed outside the ring, so there's a fielder at long on and a deep mid wicket. So struck hard down the ground, and that's going to beat the fielder. So uh, come on, Ray's just getting his length wrong here, and the powerful, powerful Ahmed will. Uh, get underneath that one and slog it very cleanly. That is a beautiful looking shot. Just goes like a rocket down the ground. That was sweetly struck. Let's see what happens here now for Sri Lankan Lions. Of course, Kamal Ray's nine runs off his first three balls. This is uh, extremely unlike him. You can see he just pulls his length back a bit there. And that's just going to be a single. So uh, good response here. And I like this little uh, back and forth between the, the batsman and the bowler. Of course, we uh, very interesting power play for the Sri Lankan Lions, of course, because they did try to attack, no question. But it didn't quite work out for them because Mark Hoare were all over them. But then they, they really grew into their innings. And I wonder if that's going to be the case for Mark Hoare as well, of course. This is their first ever ECS match. You can imagine there'd be a bit of nerves around. And that's a swing and a miss, so it's a dot ball for Kamal Reyes and a much needed one. As we've got one ball left in the over. It's been a very interesting one so far. We've seen a couple of boundaries stru struck, but since then Kamal Reyes has recovered well. And it looks like there's just a little bit of discussion going on here. There might have been a bit of confusion about that one. I think it's been signaled a no ball, so the umpire, I believe this might be to do with uh, the fielder. So there might have been too many fielders outside the circle. So it's a no ball and a free hit here for Markor. And uh, he's just going to get away with that one, Kamal Reyes. He was uh, aiming for the Yorker. It was a lowish full toss, not, not too much of a full toss to hit, but it's just a single. Yeah, you can see he's just aiming for that Yorker right outside the off stump. Doesn't nail it as well as he would like, but I think the outcome will satisfy Ray's. Down the wicket here, Rahman, and we saw him strike a beautiful four right at the start of this over. 
Well, he'll miss that one, and in the end, it's a very even over. 12 runs off it. So uh, Mark Hoare get off to a steady start. As they look to chase down this target of 136. Of course, I do keep in mind it's been 128 matches since we saw a golden ball here on the European Cricket Network, and uh, we came close to it several times during uh, action in Group A. And I'm um, uh, hoping to see, uh, hoping to see uh, a golden ball here in Group B action, and uh, this is a very, very competitive target, so maybe this could be the match where we finally see a golden ball. And it's going to be Rajiv. Coming in to bowl this over, of course, uh, he would have been a little bit disappointed with himself when he was batting. He struck a four off his very first ball, but then he just couldn't kick on after popping up a catch the very next ball. This one's gone up in the air. It's going to beat the fielder very easily. I think it's taken a bounce just before the boundary opened, gone for a four. So Ahmed looking very dangerous so far. Now look at this one. He just gets underneath the ball so well and a great swivel. And look at that one. Just one bounce over the boundary rope. And... Uh, this is, this is a good start by Mark Hoare. I like the way they're batting. This is some positive cricket. Gone up in the air. It looks like he will beat the fielder again. It's a good chase by Chamal Sadun. And I think it's landed just in front of the boundary rope. So it's another four. And he's just going a bit too short here, Rajiv. Allowing a powerful batsman like Ahmed to uh, get underneath it and smack it. So I really like this uh, batting by Markor. But Rajiv really shouldn't be bowling there. He needs to pitch it up a bit more. And I think his captain responds has just changed the fielding a little bit. He's brought long off in. And he's decided to put a fielder out at deep mid wicket. And of course there's a sweeper behind square on the offside as well. Looks like there might be a change of angle here for Rajith. That's a better ball. It might have been a lowish full toss, but the intent was much better. He was trying to get it full and straight at the stump, so response by Rajith and that's really the kind of area he should be aiming for. I think a lot of bowlers have unnecessarily gone around the wicket throughout this tournament. They've bowled perfectly fine when they've been going over the over the wicket but usually just one boundary has uh, made them change their mind and this is uh, well, just an appeal here. Let's just uh, wait to find out what's happened. Just take a look at what happened here. And that just comes off. Yeah, I believe that's just come off the body of Ahmed. There uh, wasn't any bat on that. This is much better. Since he's changed the angle, Rajith, he's uh, looked a lot better. Oh, that's a poor full toss, but he's going to get away with that one. Just slipped out of his hand. And the throw. Oh, dear. This is a no ball. So uh, Rajith uh, does bowl a very poor delivery in the end. Let's just take a look at this one. Ooh, this is a tight call. This is a very, very tight call. And it's a free hit here for the sh for uh, Markor and. Uh, Boy, this hasn't this uh, this over hasn't gone well for uh, Rajith. He managed to pull it back with a couple of good deliveries, but uh, holds a, a rankful toss and a no ball right after that one. So, chance for uh, Mark Hoare to increase the punishment. That one was straying down the leg side. It could have been left alone, but it's going to go for four. So, uh, just get some bat on that with fine leg inside the ring, and Rehman takes full advantage of it. So, a forgettable over so far for Rajith. And well, let's see how he tries to salvage it on, on this final ball. Not not the best bit of fielding there either by Samira Akalanka. Uh, you know, it's little overs like this that can really either uh, boost another side or really deflate the uh, side or on the wrong end of it. That's a 
Big swing and a miss for Raymond as uh, that over will come to an end. A rather expensive one for the Sri Lankan Lions. I think Rajith will probably be glad he escaped it with just 16 runs. I think got away with a couple of full tosses, but uh, Mark Hoare are going wrong very, very steadily at 28 for no loss. Yeah, see enough lovers. I, I agree with you. Uh, I, I'm not sure that's a no ball either for height. Um, that, that call didn't quite make sense to me either. But of course, uh, we do have to respect the umpire's decision. And uh, these umpires have done a terrific job throughout the tournament. I mean, they've had a lot of long days, five or six match days. Of course, we had 12 matches over the last couple of days. And uh, I really have to credit these umpires. Of course, uh, shout out to the umpires who are out there. Hamad Ahmed, along with Abdul Rahman, and of course, uh, Sachitra Thuranga is the third umpire. And it looks like we see Suresh Chanaka bowling this uh, second over. And the field setting for him is they've got a, a sweeper behind square on the offside and uh, a fielder at deep mid wicket. And this is a very wide ball to start off, so uh, <laughs> just stressing himself a little bit, Chanaka. Maybe he should have done that stretching before bowling that one. And that's certainly one thing I have to say about both these sides. They've not been as bad with the extras as some of the teams were in Group A. I mean, just the six runs of extras bowled by Mark Hoare and the Sri Lankan Lions have been not too bad with it so far. This one is struck very, very well. It's going to beat the fielder and it's going to race away from four. So they're really putting the pedal to the metal right here. Mark Hoare, this is a terrific batting. I think he knows with the fielding restrictions. He can play a lot of these lofted shots and get away with it. So uh, a forgettable start here so far for Janaka. He's uh, not quite got things right early. Yeah, this ball just moves back in quite a bit. So it's uh, really that which is uh, bamboozled Ahmed. Otherwise, though, that'll be a pretty risky bowl to bowl, of course, with the fine leg inside the ring. I'm not sure he would get away with it a second time if he bowled there again. Uh, Played slightly officially, and Chamal Sadud is normally a terrific fielder. Doesn't quite get a hold of it. And it's a very, very easy run out, though. And it really doesn't matter, as, of course, it terrible bit of miscommunication there by uh, between Ahmed and Rayman. Both of them were going along very, very well. So it's disappointing to see their partnership come to an end that way. Uh, it's just a complete, total lack of communication. And we'll take another look at that one. Of course, that partnership worth 33 runs. They've set up a good platform, but they could easily have kicked on. And boy, he's just not even paying attention to what his uh, non-striking partner is saying. Ahmed is just a uh, Completely blocked his ears. There's no idea what's going on. And that is a very, very simple run out for the Sri Lankan Lions. They will take that free wicket. And it's a, it's a very sad way for this uh, good opening partnership to end. As, of course, uh, you can see Ahmed out of the dugout. He's, uh, well, he seems to be very frustrated. But I have to say, I think he can only blame himself for that one. Although he's uh, getting a fair bit of encouragement from his teammates. Uh, good to see the positivity among Mark Court. Even at the end, though, when uh, things were getting away from them when they were bowling, they... Uh, Stay very positive as a side as a wicket comes in this over. That one is uh, way too wide as well. Oh, struck in the air. That is cleanly struck, and that's going to be a six. So a sweet, sweet bit of connection by the new batsman, the wicketkeeper, Nadim Kamar. Look at that one. He just gets a hold of it beautifully. And I love some of the clean striking I've seen from both these sides so far this morning. I think this group could be a much higher scoring group. And uh, we could be in some for very entertaining chases throughout this group. Uh, really looking forward to this as uh, the action so far has been truly scintillating. Played up fish league, should be a catching opportunity, but it's been completely misjudged by Samir Akalanka. We saw him just uh, slip, let one slip right through his grasp earlier, and he's uh, having a bit of a difficult time in the field. I suspect his captains almost tried to hide him in that position, but uh, the ball 
seems to be a bit of a magnet for him in this uh, initial stage of the game. Once again, it's popped up in the air, and this should go take one bounce and go for a four. So the batsman targeting that shorter boundary, and it's very sweetly struck. And a poor over by Janaka. I think he just uh, was a bit too short and wide throughout the over, and unfortunately, he's been punished for it. And he really hope he can improve in uh, future overs he bowls here in the ECS. As he goes for 18 in that over, and Markor going along very nicely at 46 for one, despite losing. Uh, very cheap wicket of Zishan Ahmed. I think they'll uh, really regret the manner in which they lost that, considering how well he was playing. But uh, Nadim Kumar seems to have come in, and he's going along just as well. So very different power plays for both sides. Uh, for keep in mind that the Sri Lankan Lions were, were really struggling during the power play. They were 26 for three, of course. Uh, it was that partnership they had uh, the Kamal Reyes, and of course, that terrific innings by Akila Kalugala that helped uh, really, really dig them out of a hole. But Markor so far, they've started very well, going at a well above the required run rate. That's a terrific ball by Chamal Sadun, and uh, not surprised, I'm a bit surprised he didn't bowl the third over. Of course, uh, you know uh, how good a bowler he is. He's had a very good ECS career. Seem to take a lot of wickets over the years, and uh, this one just looks to take a pace off the ball. It's a catching opportunity. It goes straight to Roshan City Wardana, who takes that wicket well. And Chamal Sadun continues to add to his ECS wicket tally. Smart bit of bowling. Uh, so this one by Rahman is sent straight to Roshan City Wardana, who takes a very, very good catch. So uh, that's an important wicket. The Sri Lankan Lions needed to get one just to peg back the mar this Mark Horse side. And he just hits it straight to the fielder. City Warzana doesn't have to move an inch, but he takes it at just about chest height, and he takes it very, very well. So uh, much needed wicket for the Sri Lankan Lions. And I just wonder who the new batsman is. Uh, is this going to be Wakas Akhtar? Surely we need to see him come in, of course. Uh, boy, we know what a run machine he's been throughout his ECS career. Uh, 753 runs. You know, for a very decorated ECS career, and uh, I believe this is indeed going to be him. So, uh, boy, this should be very entertaining. I mean, Chamal Sadun and Wakas Akhtar, two uh, experienced operators in ECS cricket. They both uh, face each other off in many important matches. I mean, how many times have we seen big matches between the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions? Of course, when Akhtar used to play for the Black Caps. And, uh, well... This should be another great matchup, another great chapter in the story between these two players as uh, this one's just played off the pads by Akhtar who gets off the mark. And uh, no, he doesn't. The umpire signals like buys. Played away, going to be a bit of a chase for the fielder. And a couple of runs here for Marco. Right over so far by Shamal Sadun. He's uh, bowled uh, sensationally well, just as he always does. And let's see if he can close out the over strongly, as of course, uh, Akhthurs just asked the square leg umpire to uh, tighten the straps on his uh, leg pads. And you can see that required. Just under 14 and over, so I think they're going along very, very nicely here, Mark Hoare. They're... Uh, current run rate is uh, pretty similar to that. And, you know, the Sri Lankan Lions desperately needed this quiet over just to just to peg Markor back a bit and uh, make this uh, exciting chase. I think uh, I think this game could really come down to the wire. We uh, could be in for another final over thriller here in Cyprus. We've had so many of them so far. 
No, no, just haven't quite been able to get to that golden ball. And I think now Waka is uh, going to be ready to face the final ball of this over. Was played away very nicely. And a good bit of fielding by Tarshana Olhamage. As the over comes to an end, it's just four runs off that over by Chamal Sudut. And Mark Hora, 51 for two at the four over mark. So well, let's just have a look at a chance to compare the run rate for both sides. Of course, the Sri Lankan Lions, if you can see, there's a steady uptick after the power play. Uh, we witnessed that, and it was a real joy to witness. But uh, that previous over, that uh, just went for five runs, brings uh, Mark Hor's run rate down a little. But that's typically what you would expect after the power play, just a little dip in the run rate as uh, Paul Reyes comes uh, back into the attack. He was... Uh, a little bit wayward in this first over, and I have to say he got away with a few bad deliveries, but normally we know what a terrific bowler he is. I mean, he's even taken a hat-trick in the European Cricket Series. This one's full and wide, and it's uh, going to be quite a chase for Roshan City World, and that's going to slide into the goal right to the right of the commentary box. Of course, uh, can't quite uh, catch the goal we have to our right, so uh, it's uh, a very, very good shot by Wakas Akhtar. And it's an intelligent bit of cricket, of course. No need to overhit that one. And it's uh, slightly overpitched by Kamal Reyes. And all he does is just puts, throws his bat at it and allows it to go away. And that's, that's caused a bit of a fielding change now. So there's now a regulation mid-off. And long-off has gone very wide in response. And that's a nice bit of work there by Olamage. Of course, the fielder at uh, wide long off is Roshan City Wardana. He just decided to move him a lot wider. He was uh, extremely, extremely straight, as uh, long off fielders tend to be in Cyprus, but not anymore. And I think that certainly makes sense with this uh, kind of angle Kamal raises bowling with. It's, uh, it's quite hard to hit him straight down the ground towards that uh, straight boundary when he bowls at this angle. So, going to really look to uh, protect the offside boundary. Oh, that's a poor delivery, very poor. It's uh, gone away for a full toss, but Kamal Reyes gets away with it. And of course, it's going to be a no ball for height. As it's another free hit here from Mark Hoar. It's the second free hit they've had so far this match. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, no question about that. That would, uh, <laughs> that might even be called a, a ball in baseball. That's how high it is. So, uh, so far, Kamal Reyes looking rather off color to start the tournament. As, uh, after not quite able to get a hold of this free hit. That was a good ball by Reyes, but oh, he desperately wants to get back on strike, doesn't he? <laughs> Akhtar, but uh, Kamar saying, nope, oh, I'll keep the strike, and uh, why not, considering the way Kamar is uh, striking the ball beautifully. I think he thought that was going to be wide, but that's a perfectly, a perfectly legal delivery by Kamal Reyes. Oh, and that was agonizingly close to the stumps and uh, hands on his heads for Kamal Reyes. How is that Mr. Stumps? That was so close, goodness me. Must have been a few millimeters from the leg stump and a very good end to Kamal Reyes' overs. He went for a few runs. But he, I think, recovered really well near the end. As we take a look at the top run getters so far, of course, this is uh, just uh, players we've seen so far in Group A. Sarah Ahmed leading the way with 401 runs. And we see Zishan Mahmood, who looked so good for the Nicosia Tigers, making 350 yes. runs. Chivan Lumsa with 258. He was instrumental to that massive winning streak for Everest. And then Pritaj Deol with 228. And then, of course, we saw Arjun Shahi making 207 runs in the 12 games Everest played. Of course, Shahi was largely playing a role as a closer, trying to uh, see out games in the second half of the innings for Everest. And boy, was he successful at that. And as of course, Roshan City Rodana comes across very well. And he'll just restrict that to a single. He was really quick off the mark. And I think uh, you can see he attacked the ball really well, which is uh, what made sure that there was uh, no chance for Marco to even consider a second run.
This one's uh, played away towards... Uh, oh, it's a slight fumble by Kamal Reyes, but uh, it's not going to cost the Sri Lankan Lions. But yeah, certainly going back to the point about um, Everest, uh, the, the formula for them seems very simple, isn't it? It's that Jeevan Lumsel needs to get them off to a good start and anchor the innings, and then Strahi needs to close it off for them at the end. And if uh, those two are on song, then they'll uh, get Everest some big runs. And you know, we've seen so far for Everest, they're, they're, they lack a bit of batting depth, and, and those two batsmen haven't quite clicked for them. They, they just don't make the big runs. This one's uh, struck away because, of course, uh, both of the lowest scores of the tournament so far involve Everest, but boy, they also have had some of the most sensational performances, really. So for them, it really comes down to those two batsmen you saw on that uh, graph. This one's to take an inside edge, and it's going to go away for four. So uh, a very fortuitous boundary here, and a bit of bad luck for Janaka, who's a uh, not really had much luck during these uh, couple of overs he's bowled. We saw him um, really get struck for a number of boundaries in his first over. And I think he's uh, come back a lot better in the second over. And uh, unfortunately, just a bit of misfortune for him there. So fuller delivery again. And it's... Uh, Going straight to the fielder. And the over comes to an end. Janaka gave up 25 runs over his two overs as Markor going along rather steadily at uh, just about 11 and a half and over. They're required. Looks a little high, but I think they've demonstrated they, they do have that slogging ability to really accelerate at the end. If they can have about 17 or 18 and over with uh, maybe two, three overs to go, I think they'll back themselves as we take a look at this scorecard. Of course, as Ishan Ahmed is going wrong very well. And then a bit of a kamikaze run out brought his innings to an end. And then, of course, a terrific catch by Roshan Siddhartha to dismiss Hamza Rahman off the bowling of Chamal Sadun. So as we see, Madhuranga being introduced into the attack. This one's uh, played very well straight down the ground. Wakas Akhtar targeting that short boundary, and he gets a maximum. So a good shot here. A little bit too short. And Akhtar just gets a chance to free his hands and uh, absolutely spelts it. That is a brilliant shot. Just a slight delay as, of course, uh, we recover the ball. But uh, taking a look at the figures so far for the Sri Lankan Lions, uh, Madhuranga, the fifth bowler they've used so far. So... I think this is probably a, probably a good chance they go with just these bowlers. This one is a bit too wide, and Wakas Akhtar really didn't need to throw his bat at it, but he's going to get a four anyway, because there's no fielder sweeping behind square. So a good start to the over for uh, Mark Hoare, of course. Uh, we did mention that required was just climbing slightly, but not at a point where it was out of control. And uh, a couple of boundaries here as Madurunga with a rather rough start. He hasn't really got things right here these first couple of balls just been a bit too short and wide and, uh, play down the ground it's gonna just take a skip and hop and uh, go straight to the fielder Srinath Rajith and yeah I just wonder if the captain is gonna go back to uh, Rajith because we saw how, how much he struggled in his first over. Went for 16 runs, and boy, I think he, he was rather fortunate to go for just 16 runs with some of the balls he bowled. He's gone up in the air. Should be a catching opportunity. Fielder getting underneath, and it's a very, very well-taken catch. Uh, the Sri Lankan Lions uh, with a bit of a knack of just picking up a wicket right when any Markor partnership starts to get a little bit too big, and this has been a very good game so far. It's been evenly contested. No sides really got away from the other so far, and... Uh, Boy, if this is what we're in for for the rest of this tournament, I am really, really excited to cover Group B as uh, that is a well-taken catch. Terrific bit of bowling here as, of course, uh, Markor lose their third wicket.
You want to look at this one. He just gets his uh, line and length a lot better here, doesn't he, Madhuranga? We saw him bowl a bit too short and wide, but this time he was just bowling in that channel, and he's been rewarded for it. So always good to see good bowling rewarded. Once again, a bit too short and wide, but he might have a, a wicket here. And oh, that was a terrific effort by City Rodhana, who uh, he's uh, really disappointed with himself. But boy, uh, I don't think he has much to complain about there. That was a sensational effort. And uh, top, top stuff there by Roshan City Rodhana. Look at how quickly he gets to the ball. Absolutely sprints at it. And honestly, he's just created a chance through his own effort. And uh, we know what high standards he sets for himself. So. He wants to gobble up anything that's uh, anywhere near him. This one's played down the ground, and it's going to go away for a four. So Markor and the over, well, a very eventful over. Uh, we saw some, we saw a wicket. We saw a terrific fielding effort, and we also saw a lot of boundaries. So uh, Markor are always just hanging in this game. As we, of course, uh, take a look at uh, the fantasy dashboard for the next match between the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions. Of course, uh, you can see Akila Kulagala with 133 points. Of course, no surprise he's leading the way, having made 85 runs. And then the Black Caps, well, Mangala Gunasekara is going to be such an important player for them. Of course, we remember in that very first ECS in Cyprus where he uh, had an average of 96 Struck straight to the fielder at mid-off, and that's uh, a good bit of fielding. And uh, you can see that the Sri Lankan Lions are just eight runs behind what uh, Mark Moore were at this stage. delivery just aims for that Yorker isn't it and that's Kamal Reyes out at cow corner so a quiet start for Chamal Sadun we've seen him bowl uh, very well so far in the eight deliveries he's bowled and he goes for that widest Yorker and he doesn't quite get it right does he Chamal Sadun and uh, but really, just at the stage of the match where every ball is going to matter. We can see that required just under 19 now for Markor. And that's a good response there by Chamal Sadun. Went for the slower ball. And it's uh, beaten the bat for Solari with a bit of a wry smile. He uh, looks back at Chamal Sadun. Once again, goes for the slower ball. This goes out to uh, the fielder, Kamal Reyes, at Cal Corner. And this has just been a terrific over so far. He's pulled so well under pressure, Chamal Sadun. He's uh, really put the brakes right now on Markor scoring. As you can see, that required just creeping up to 21. We said that if they could have it at about 18 with a couple of overs to go, they might back themselves to chase it. But 21, he feels a bit high. This has gone high up in the air. This is a catching opportunity. No, it isn't. It's cleared the fielder. And Waka Sokter hits a much-needed six. So it's the first time that Chamal Sadun has been hit for a boundary. And it's all the way on the 11th ball of the innings. He just just deviates from what's worked for him so well so far. A little too wide and short. And Waka Sokter, boy, the experienced operator, he uh, got underneath that one very well. And he hit a six. So one ball left in the over. Can, can Markor end this one in style and put us in for a very exciting last couple of overs? Akhtar goes big. Has he gone the distance? He certainly has, and that's a huge six there for Mark Hoare as they need 37 now of the last two overs. This is sensational stuff. As we see, Sadun just tries to correct his length, but Wakas Akhtar just watches that one beautifully, and he slugs it over long on, and now Mark Hoare, well, they're in with a shout. They're in with a chance of pulling off the biggest chase we've seen so far here in Cyprus. Just take a look at that. He watched it so closely. 
slams it over long on. That is a, well, he'd need to be Curtly Ambrose to try to get a chance to catch that one, of course. Uh, well, a bit of pressure now on the Sri Lankan Lions, and uh, this match, once again, anytime it feels like one side is just etching ahead, the other team pulls them right back as uh, we take a look at that graph and look at them. Both sides, they're even Stevens right now. Of course, their run rate is identical. And basically, Mark Horror just going to have to go one run better than what we saw from the Sri Lankan Lions at the end. They made 36 runs of their last two overs. This one's a played away by Sulari. And it's just going to be a single. And I don't mind this because uh, I think they need to see Waka Sakter here. Bowling. Big part batting. As many balls as possible. Of course, they've gone with Rajith. And this is arguably a bit of a gamble considering he went for 16 runs on his first over. We saw he really struggled with his line and length. And they say all it all happens in the ninth. Let's see if it happens in this one. As uh, Akhtar just managed to get it. They surely got to come back. And they don't. And um, that's largely because of terrific bit of fielding by Kamal Reyes. That was a good throw back to the wicket keeper. This one's taken an edge, and it's been very well taken in by the fielder in that fly slip esque position. And, uh, Sulari has to depart, but really the big concern here for Markhor isn't the wicket itself, it's the fact that it's a dot ball. And Akhtar, of course, will be stranded at the other end. And you can just sense Akhtar's frustration at the non-striker's end. This one is a very, very well taken catch. Takes a thickish edge and it goes straight to the fielder. Let's have a look at this. Very well watched and good stuff. That is a sensational bit of fielding and now this is a bit of a tough spot for Markor. there's a just about three balls left in the over they're going to need to see at least two of these disappear for a six most probably and can Bakar Siddiqui do it here or is he just going to look to get a single and maybe try to get see if Wakas Akhtar can hit the big ones goes for the big shot this one's gone to Cal Corner and uh, they're going to settle for a single here of course now two balls left for Akhtar facing Rajith and uh, boy these ones are going to need to disappear. They really need to disappear for Marco right now. 34 needed of the last eight. It's been a very good batting performance you have to say by Marco but are these just too many runs that uh, have been made by the Sri Lankan Lions and uh, oh he goes for the wider one and that takes an edge and is taken by the same fielder that's Akila Kulagala. And we saw him bat sensationally well in the first innings. And this one, this time, he might just have iced the game as Waka Sakhtar has to depart. And you just feel with his dismissal, that's Markhor's hopes that have probably faded. Once again, it's a very similar form of dismissal. Takes the thick outside edge. Goes to the fielder, who's uh, in that very sort of, I would say, short third man position. And uh, top, top stuff. That is an excellent catch. Uh, that he deserves to smile. Lucky Luck Alugala. This has been uh, an almost perfect day for him. He's taken three catches and he made 85 runs. Surely he deserves the man of the match for this game. And I think the Sri Lankan Lions can now just sense that victory. So it's been a really good comeback by Srinath Rajith this over, of course. We wondered if he would be given a second over after going for 16. But uh, he certainly earned his captain's trust. As he gets two crucial wickets here, and he hasn't given up too many runs either. Uh, this time he tries to aim for that leg stump. Yorker goes out to Kamal Reyes, and the over comes to an end, and it's a terrific one. Well, we do say a uh, and of course this has been really, really good stuff by the Sri Lankan Lions so far. I mean, you have to be impressed by the way they've. Uh, bold in some tight spots and of course this has really been a game of fine margins I mean so far we've seen the Sri Lankan Lions they've managed to get wickets at just key intervals they've always pegged uh, Mark Hor back whenever they've uh, just looked like they're getting a partnership so top top stuff by the Sri Lankan Lions who are uh, nearing their uh, first victory of this tournament as MS Catherine Long says every time you say the name I think you're talking about Mark Wall well I believe Mark Hor are a uh, Pakistani origin team. They've got the Pakistan flag on the side of their jersey. 
And we're going to see two new batsmen uh, try to pull off a miracle here for Markor, of course. Uh, they're going to need, well, they're going to need either five sixes and a four or six sixes. So let's see if uh, Tassimur Hussein is going to be the one to pull off something truly memorable. But they're going to go for Roshan City Wardana to bowl this final over. And they're just going to run over here. They're, they just have to sprint. But it's going to be a very easy run out as uh, Roshan City Wardana takes his time and uh, runs out Hussein, who has a very short stay. And uh, yeah, at this stage, the game really is over for Mark Hor. As all the Sri Lankan Lions have to do is uh, just see out these next five bowls, both five legal deliveries, and they will pick up their first win of the tournament. So a side who, um, you know, we've often said have uh, not been able to make it to the final. They keep falling short and finding themselves in third place this time around. Well, maybe they should, they've just found that little X factor that they need to uh, go all the way. I mean, this innings, you have to say, by Akila Kulugala, I mean, the way Akila batted, I have to say, Saron Ahmed better be very careful because he might have someone coming for his uh, run tally, of course. Uh, Saron Ahmed currently sitting right at the top of the table. And, uh, well, if Akila keeps batting the way he does, I think Saron Ahmed will be watching this uh, Group B phase of action very, very nervously. This one's uh, popped up and... Uh, it's a very tame shot. Uh, of course, you just feel that now uh, Mark Ward have really just run out of batting options, but it's just been, you have to, you have to congratulate the Sri Lankan Lions. They've, uh, they've held their nerve throughout what's been a, a very tightly contested game. And this one's a very sweetly struck. It's going to go the distance. And it's a very well hit shot by Bakar Siddiqui, who will certainly enjoy adding six more runs to his ECS tally. But of course, uh, not much rest for the Sri Lankan Lions. They'll be back in 25 minutes' time, taking on the defending ECS champion, the Black Caps. But I'm sure the Black Caps saw this game and are a little bit nervous looking at how strong the Sri Lankan Lions side have looked so far. This one's popped up in the air, and it's going to be very well taken by Chemal Sadun, who is an absolutely excellent fielder. As, uh, well, another wicket departs. Uh, Bakar Siddiqui hit a nice six, but then he follows it up by uh, popping one up. That was taken comfortably by Chamal Sadun. So wickets continue to tumble. Of course, uh, Mark Hoare have uh, a bit more cricket to play here as well. Of course, uh, the match after this, as I just mentioned, will be between the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions. But then Mark Hoare will be back to face the Nicosia Fighters. They've uh, got a couple of matches today, Mark Hoare. This is, of course, the first of them. Busy day, though, for the Sri Lankan Lions. They've got three games. They're going to be facing the Black Caps twice after this, so those are going to be two really, really big heavyweight matchups, aren't they? I mean, uh, the defending champions against the Sri Lankan Lions. I'm really looking forward to watch some of that cricket. So a couple more balls left before uh, matters are concluded in this first match of Group B, as this is uh, struck away very well, and that's going to go for a boundary. So uh, Mark Horn getting a few runs in this over, but it's uh, all a little too... It's all too little, too late for Mark Hoare. That was uh, very well struck by Umar Farouk. We saw how well Umar Farouk bowled in the first innings, but now he's trying to show us some of his talent with the bat in hand as well. This one's gone up in the air. It's going to fall short of the fielder. And uh, interestingly enough, Mark Hoare decides to uh, not even run. I mean, uh, Farouk could have added another run to his tally, but uh, Mark Hoare will uh, succumb to a defeat as the Sri Lankan Lions will take this one by 22 runs. A very solid performance by them. You can see the skipper right there, Nalin Pathirana. He'll be absolutely delighted with the way his team played as uh, they secure a very good victory against a strong Mark Horse side. And they were led terrifically well by Akila Kalugala. He made 85 runs and took some good catches when he was out in the field as well. Three catches for him. As uh, le Well, let's have a look at the highlights of this Sri Lankan Lions win. And this one was just a bit of a top edge. It uh, went over the fine leg, of course. Uh, we saw Hamza Rahman strike a couple of boundaries early. Zishan Ahmed looked really, really good, didn't he? He was uh, hitting it sweetly right at the start of the inning. He made 21 runs of 12 balls. And they had a very solid opening partnership, a good opening stand. They made 33 runs of 2.3 overs. We see a bit of a chase in vain there for uh, Darsana Omilange. 
And then this was an absolutely comical run out. And you just wonder whether this was a, a very, very big moment in the match. I mean, Zishan Ahmed, he was going along nicely. And then a uh, bit of a kamikaze moment for him. He keeps through his wicket away. And that's really what the Sri Lankan Lions did so well, as we see that catch by Roshan Siddhartha of Hamza Rahman. They kept getting wickets at regular intervals. Anytime it seemed like Markhor would start to get away from them, they would just peg it back. I mean, the largest uh, partnership was that 33-run partnership for the opening stand. I mean, they, would, they were going along at a good run rate for most of the innings, Markhor, but they just kept losing wickets at regular intervals until they just ran out of good batsmen. And uh, you, have to, you have to commend the approach of Markhor, and I'm sure this approach will uh, help them win future matches because uh, I think they showed a lot of encouraging signs. I mean, uh, you wouldn't be overly worried if I'm Markhor, but uh, the Sri Lankan Lions... Boy, they were really good, and their catching was terrific. Very impressed by their ground fielding. That was a good catch by Kalugala, who really owned that position throughout the day, taking some sharp catches. And of course, uh, this ninth over by Srinath Raji pretty much iced the game for the Sri Lankan Lions. And then Roshan City Rodana got that little run out there at the end, a bit of a kiss towards the stumps. And then, of course, we see Abu Bakr in a six. But uh, shortly after that, he would pop one up. That would be taken very well by Chabal Sadud, a very solid fielder. And then we see this boundary struck very cleanly by Umar Farouk. And uh, by that stage, it was all a little, too little too late as the Sri Lankan Lions took this one by 22 runs. Well, the Sri Lankan Lions will be back in 20 minutes' time, and so will we. As the Sri Lankan Lions will face the defending champion, Black Caps. See you in 20 minutes.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Well, we just saw the Sri Lankan Lions pick up their first victory of the tournament by 22 runs, but they'll be right back out there uh, facing the defending champion Black Caps. Anyway, let's head over to the coin toss as both the captains are joined by match referee Stefan Gooch. Okay, good luck guys, all the best. So the Sri Lanka Lions have won the toss, they're having a bat back over to you in the commentary box, Nish. Thank you very much, Stefan, and of course, uh, in, and indeed the Sri Lankan Lions uh, will go out there and once again look to post a total. We saw how well they did batting first in the uh, previous match against uh, Mark Hoare. They were very, very solid and really it was uh, largely thanks to Akila's wonderful innings. As you can see, he leads the way so far in the fantasy just uh, one game in for the Sri Lankan Lions and of course the Black Caps well for me the biggest player to watch out for is Mangala Gunasekara boy he's an enormous star and uh, we know he struggled for a form a bit in the ECS night series back in 2021 but in 2020 he averaged 96 with the bat he was just unstoppable smashing it left right and center and uh, if we see a bit more of that from the Black Caps I think this Black Caps team could be absolutely unstoppable. Of course, they're once again skippered by Rajwinder Brar, a very smart captain. And, uh, well, it's going to be a very good clash here. Of course, uh, both these sides have played each other a number of times in the past. But a few changes, certainly, for the Black Caps. Uh, I think their team looks uh, a lot more menacing now. I think they've uh, probably got a lot more firepower in terms of their attack. They've got a lot more pace. And that should play a big role for them. So it's a, it's, it's a team we've seen before, but a team with a very different set of players. So Rajwinder Brar has put together a new unit. And let's see if this unit will help him defend his crown. It's uh, Singh, Tejwinder Singh, who's going to bowl this uh, first over to Rajiv. We saw him in the last match. He hit a, a boundary off the very first ball and then popped one up. He'll be a little bit disappointed with that batting effort. And he'll hope to improve. Let's see. On the Black Caps, title defense goes as this one is struck away by Rajith. Is this going to go away for a boundary? It certainly will. And it heads into the goal as we get our first goal of the day. Beautiful shot right there towards that third man region again. And Rajith starting this match off in the same manner he started off the previous one. A little bit too uh, short and wide there, Tej Vinder Singh. I think he'll uh, look to correct that on this ball. This time he goes fuller, it might be, and it's gone straight to the captain, Rajwinder Brar. Well, just lost track of that ball for a second, but uh, what a sensational catch by the captain. And it's pretty much an identical innings for Rajiv. It's a carbon copy of the innings we saw against Mark Hoare. He hits a boundary, and then he gets out the very next ball. And, uh, well, lightning has struck twice here in Ipsonas. That's a good catch by Rajwinder Brar. You see how much that means for the Black Caps. Great team spirit. This team absolutely determined to have a successful title defense. We know Rajwinder Brar, he he's absolutely locked down that position, fielding at cover. We always see him fielding there. And he does a good job tracking that ball and taking the catch. So uh, once again, the Sri Lankan Lions are four for one during the second ball of the innings. And uh, well, a slight change in the order. They sent Chamal Sadun in at number three. And I like this move considering he made a 14 of 4. We saw him uh, slog Waka Sakhtar at the end of the last innings. The Sri Lankan Lions batted, batted in, of course. Chamal Sadun, very accomplished ECS batsman, has over 1,000 runs in his uh, European cricket career. He added 14 runs to it this morning, and he'll be looking to add a lot more alongside uh, the dangerous Kalugala, who is at the non-striker's end. We saw his uh, terrific 85, and he was... Very unlucky not to have a century, but he probably only has himself to blame for some lazy running at the end. Uh, but oh well, let's see how Sadoon fares. And he just watches that one go past him. It's a nice looking lead, very lovely looking lead. And of course, a very good morning to Keanu Reviews. Unfortunately, Scott Austin will not be playing during this series, uh, Keanu. I believe he's uh, moved out of the country. So, of course, uh, very good luck to uh, Scott Austin in his new chapter in life. But 
Nope, we won't be seeing him take part in this series. That is a fantastic leg stump. Yorker for force. Those of you who did not see our uh, night series back in 2021, you might be wondering who Scott Austin is. Of course, a terrific Zimbabwean cricketer. He was an absolute joy to watch. Uh, we you know, gave him some nicknames like Stone Cold, Scott Austin. He was sensational in the field, very entertaining to watch, and uh, he'll be uh, desperately missed by the Cypress Mufflons, who we will see in action tomorrow. For that fuller, wider delivery, and uh, just inside the line, Jamal Sadoon has a look at the umpire, but the umpire remains firm, and uh, it's been a very good response by Singh after getting hit for a four. This is more like him. And, ooh. Well, you, you're free to make up your mind about that call. And once again, he tries to aim for that leg stump Yorker, and uh, Sadoon will get off the mark. And uh, that's going to cool Winder Singh. Can't wait to see him bowl later this innings as the over comes to an end. A very good one for the Black Caps who start their title defense off with a very tight over. So the Sri Lankan Lions are five for one at the end of the first over. See Love Deep Singh come in here to bowl. It's a fuller delivery. It's struck very, very well by Chamal Sadoon. And it goes the distance. A brilliant six by Sadoon. Well, he was a little slow out of the gates this time around. Made just one run of his first four deliveries. But this time he gets a sweet connection. It was right in the slot for Sadoon. And that is slogged away. Terrific bit of hitting. And uh, that's more like what we saw in the previous game for Chamal Sadoon. And of course, if these two can get going, I think uh, the Black Caps might be in a bit of trouble. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, well, you're free to make your mind up about uh, Mankhali. I think I've certainly uh, expressed my opinion earlier this week. But uh, he had his bat grounded, Kalugala, so full credit to him. And once again, going for that wide Yorker, he gets the decision again. And, uh, well, look at that look by Chamal Sadoon. He's uh, throwing daggers at the umpire right now. He's had a couple of tough calls. And mm, he might just have got this one right, the umpire, but two tight calls going uh, against Sadoon. One struck away, and this gonna looks like it's going to beat the fielder, Mangala Gunasekra. He'll uh, just rush back. And it will be a couple of runs. Of course, uh, Mangala Gunasekra of uh, Sri Lankan Heritage himself, he plays for the Sri Lankan Cricket Club, which is... Uh, Based in Nicosia, the Sri Lankan Lions Limassol are based in the uh, port city of Limassol. We've, uh, we've seen Mangala deputize for the Sri Lankan Lions during that uh, ECS night series. It didn't quite work out for him. And I think he's had a change of team now playing for the Black Caps. This one's uh, struck uh, well by Chamal Sadoon. And it's going to take a few bounces before going away for a four. So Sadoon's now finding his groove in this over. Some uh, slightly wavered bowling by Love Deep Singh helping him, but... Really, I have to say, this is uh, more to do with the batsman. Very, very good shot. That is a quality bit of cricket. Yeah, we just see a bit of a conversation here, and I, I really like this by the Black Caps. Uh, we've seen a few teams so far this tournament. If a bowler's struggling, no one goes to have a word with him, but I like the fact that Tejwinder's uh, gone over. He's just had a chat with Lovedeep Singh. And this is good, good cricket by Lovedeep Singh. He just saw... Chamal Sadud advancing down the crease, so he pushed it wide. Very, very smart. Oh 
This one struck away by Saduda. Again, he's straying onto his pads. Not very wise bowling considering there is absolutely no protection on the leg side boundary. Sadoon just, uh, well, gets underneath that ball beautifully well. And he uh, hits one straight to his dugout. I'm sure they'll be glad to take uh, plenty of catches on that side. So a slightly expensive over for Lovedeep Singh. It went for 18 runs and a good response by the Sri Lankan Lions after a quiet first over as we, of course, uh, take a look at the standings. Just the one game so far in this uh, new group. The Sri Lankan Lions are notching a victory against Mark War, but just look at some of the sides involved in this group. You've got the defending champion, Black Caps, the three times finalist, the Muflons. you got the Nicosia Fighters, of course, a very good underdog side, the Limassol Zalmi, who certainly made a very good impression last time they were here on the European Cricket Network. And I like this move by the captain. He goes straight back to Tej Vinder Singh. He has him bowling his second over. We saw Mark War were a little bit different. They Their strategy was more to... Uh, Give one over to all their bowlers in the first half of the innings and then the second over in the second half of the innings. And it could just be a rare defensive shot by Kolokola so far today. I mean, we saw how he was belting it earlier, going at a strike rate of uh, just under 250. He had six fours and eight sixes, so it's uh, rather odd to see him just uh, hit a defensive shot. That's probably the first defensive shot he's played all day. But uh, I think he's got his eye in now. This one's probably going to go big and uh, well it's another uh, blocked shot of course it was a pretty good ball but it's a no ball unfortunately for Tej Winder Singh yeah you can see just uh, overstepping the mark and uh, it's going to be a free hit for the man in form Kalugala and I totally agree with you CNF lovers the Lunkin Lions are looking extremely extremely powerful This one struck well, and goodness me, well, uh, you can't be giving free hits as we said to Kalugala. He's been sensational so far, and he gets off the mark in style. Just take a look at this one. Back of a length, he rocks back, he slogs it away for a six. Terrific shot by the left-handed batsman. Well, that is a terrible, terrible ball. That is a disgusting ball. Slips out of his hand. And I think the umpire will have a word with him for that. Of course, it's going to be a no ball. Goes without saying. And oh, look at that. Well over head height. And you have to say, Kalugala has done extremely well to get some bat onto that and hit it away for a four. Some, uh, some smart thinking. And Tejvinder Singh, who looked so good in that first over, just losing his head here a little bit. And I think he certainly will get a word from the umpires. Another one of those. And he'll... Uh, won't be allowed to take any further part with the ball in hand. That is extremely wide. A terrible delivery as we see the first minimo of this match. And we're just seeing Tejvinder Singh crumble under the pressure. Well, he looks like a completely different bowler to the one we saw in the first over, but that's just the way cricket works. You know, we see swings in momentum throughout the match. And of course, it's uh, the free hit is still active. So Kalukala, second chance here for him. This one struck hard. It struck high, and it's been deposited into the Olive Grove. Sweet, sweet strike by Kalukala, who's once again off to a flyer. 16 of 5 for him. And look at, look at Tejwinder Singh. He's just... You really have to feel for him. I mean, he's a quality bowler. He's just having a tough time out there. I mean, this could happen to anyone as, of course, uh, we have a slight delay in the game as we uh, fetch the ball. And, you know, we saw him in that first over bowling those beautiful lines and lengths. He's got a, quite a bit of pace as well. Gets some nice bounce. Gets the ball to move enough as well. But, yeah, he's just losing his head here a little bit. And, of course, I uh, have to comment on his hair. Uh, beautifully uh, dyed hair. That is a much better opportunity, and that was a catching opportunity. It's been put down by the wicket keeper, Bhupinder Singh, and well, it's just all going wrong for Tej Winder right now. Man, this is a draw on edge. It's a good ball, and well, we saw Akila Kalugala put down in the previous match as well by Mark Hor, and he made them pay for that, and boy, you hope he doesn't do the same to the Black Caps if you're uh, one of their faithful. 
Oh, that one's uh, taken. wonder if it's taken a bit of an inside edge and been chopped onto the stumps, but he's been clean bold here, Kalugala. Done a lot of damage early this stage, Vinder Singh, and you can see not much of a celebration because this one, this over, probably feels like a bit of a nightmare to him. But he does get rid of the danger man, Kalugala, who got a start, couldn't quite kick on, and couldn't quite take advantage of that dropped catch either. As the Sri Lankan Lions are 46 for two, and we're going to see Roshan City Vardana coming out to bat, and I really like the togetherness the, uh, by this team, as you can see, just a little inside edge, which uh, means the ball crashes onto the off stump. So uh, big wicket by Tejvinder Singh, but that over, uh, obviously this over has gone for plenty of runs, and uh, a bit difficult for him. Of course, we see Roshan City Vardana now coming out at four. We saw him batting at number three in the previous match. Two very experienced players, both Siri Vardhan and Sadun. They've uh, batted plenty of times in the European Cricket Series. Just over 300 runs to Siri Vardhan's name in the ECS Cricket. One ball left in the over, and of course, uh, we know it's been a bit of a miserable over for Tej Minder Singh, but if he can get another wicket here, this crucial wicket of Siri Vardhan, he might just be able to salvage this over. And let's see, of course, uh, two fielders protecting the boundary are at long off and long on. That's a wide delivery. A bit wayward there from uh, Tej Minder Singh. Of course, he's bowled uh, plenty of extras so far this over. His uh, third wide so far. And, of course, he bowled a couple of no balls as well. Well struck by Roshan Sivardana, but struck straight to the fielder, and he gets another wicket. We did say if Tej Winder Singh got another wicket, it would significantly improve his over, and that's exactly what he's done. Well, he's just showing us why he's the danger man here. Roshan Sivardana has to depart for a golden duck, and it's back-to-back -back wickets here for the Black Caps. Of course, they've been split by wide, and look at this. I really love this spurt by the Black Caps. Every time they get a wicket, they have a nice team huddle. We've certainly seen some teams where, you know, you only get a couple of high fives after a wicket, but not the case with the Black Caps. And such a good catch. That is good stuff. And, of course, uh, gets the old wings out. Really, really terrific stuff. Rajvinder Bra giving him a high five. He's uh, proud of him, man. Wow. Look at it. Take a look at that. What team spirit. And uh, that's exactly what we want to see from a side involved in the title defense. So a disappointing innings for Roshan City of Arden, who departs for a golden duck. And that just puts a little dent on this power play for the Sri Lankan Lions, which was uh, going terrifically, but losing those two key wickets right at the end, Akila and Roshan, might really hurt them. And I think we're going to see the captain, Rajvinder Brar, bowl the first over after the power play. Of course, we have a question of Keanu Reeves. Are all teams involved, either from Nicosia or Limassol, are they the two main cities in Cyprus? Well, they are the two largest cities in the country, but uh, if you're referring to Group A, we did have the Napa Royal Kings, who are from Agia Napa. There are some other teams, which are more ethnically based teams, sort of uh, based along uh, sort of national lines. For example, teams like Everest, which are more based on the uh, Nepali expat community rather than uh, which city people are based in. So this one's uh, a bit too full by Rajvinder Braun. It's going to be hit away by Chamal Sadun, who's been going along very well. Having made now 23 of 11, of course. Uh, keep in mind, Keanu, Cyprus is a quite a small country. I mean, I think about the biggest distance you might be able to travel, the longest drive might be two to two and a half hours. You know, if you live between major cities, I would say, if you're going from Nicosia to Paphos. But uh, so you really, you really can have a, a team with uh, people based in different cities. Uh, that, that works out fine in Cyprus just because of how small the country is. And that one is uh, fuller wide delivery. Of course, keep in mind as well in the domestic league in this country. Uh, really, it, it, it not, it's not based on cities. There are no city leagues. There's just a national league. And often teams from around the country will come here to Ipsanas or, of course, the Happy Valley ground in Akra Theory to play matches. This one struck very well by Chamal Sudun. It's just not going to go over the fielder's head. Paige Vinder Singh comes across to cut it out. And he gets a... A little bit of applause from his captain. That's a good bit of fielding. And they'll make sure it's just a single, of course. Uh, we're going to see some captain-on-captain -captain action here. 
It's uh, Nolan Bathirana. The Sri Lankan Lions captain and wicket keeper. He's going to be facing Rajvinder Bra. We know Bra, very smart operator. So let's see how this uh, battle goes. He's just nudged down the ground towards long on. Of course, we can see that's Kulvinder Singh who's collecting it. It's a little surprised he didn't bowl in the power play. And uh, I certainly hope we do get to see him bowl maybe in the death overs or later in this innings. He's a very, very rapid bowler, very exciting cricketer. Jamal Sadoon hits it uppishly. Is this going to beat the fielders? It certainly will. I think it's taken just one bounce in front of the boundary rope. Uh, it's managed to split both the two big fast bowlers, uh, Kulwinder Singh and Tej Winder Singh. We're still waiting for the umpire's call. But again, we can see Chamal Sadoon just targeting that uh, straight boundary. Uh, from my vantage point, just having, just looking at it with my eyes, I think it's uh, landed in front of the boundary rope. Still waiting for the umpire's decision. Of course, he's uh, looking for uh, final confirmation, and that is given a four and the right decision. Big swing and a miss there by uh, Chamal Sudun as the over comes to win. Fairly solid over. It's just slightly spoiled by that boundary, but I think they'll take a 10 run over here in the Black Caps. As a good job here by the captain, Rajvinder Brar, as soon as he brings himself into the attack. No, certainly uh, have to agree with you, Keanu. I'll uh, add to that point right after uh, you take a look at this graph. Of course, uh, as we can see for the Sri Lankan Lions, that run rate continues to shoot up. And really, that was the case for them in the previous match as well. We saw them in that match. They were a little slow out of the gates. Made just, uh, we just saw about 30 runs in the, in the power play. But then they really accelerated as the game progressed. And I think uh, that's been the most impressive part of the Sri Lankan Lions batting in these uh, first 14 overs. We've seen them bat in this tournament. They've uh, always just managed to accelerate as the innings progressed. But certainly it's been very good to see how the game has progressed here in Cyprus. I mean, it was not too long ago. There weren't many teams on the island. And certainly later in this broadcast, we'll talk a little bit about the history of cricket here in Cyprus. This one's uh, played away by Nolan Pathirana. There's, there's no fielder out there. That fine leg. And he's actually uh, quite a chase for uh, deep square leg to uh, run across and try to get to that one. And that's, uh, you can see what Sharma is trying to do there. He's aiming for that leg stump. Yorker in a big, yeah, as he went to bowl that one. Uh, certainly, he's not going to beat Iftikhar Juman, who we've seen so far this tournament. Boy, he was one of the biggest grunters. I mean, it was uh, grunting on part with uh, Rafa Nadal, Maria Sharapova, or uh, any, any of the famous grunters in uh, sports. Oh, it's going to be a catching opportunity, but it just goes past Mangala Gunasekara, and it's going to go away for a four. So rather fortuitous boundary here for Nalin Pathirana. Takes a thick outside edge, and it goes past Mangala Gunasekara, of course, a very big and tall athletic fielder. Of course, uh, Mangala Gunasekara, he's not just a good cricketer, he's a very good volleyball player as well. I believe volleyball is actually his main sport, not cricket. Oh, that's a terrific ball by Sharma. Great response. I think he's bowled quite well so far this over. Obviously very unlucky with the uh, edge that went for a boundary. Struck uppishly by Stoon, but it's going to go to uh, 
stage Vinder Singh at long on, so it's uh, just a single. Beautiful chirping of birds here on this Easter Sunday in Cyprus. Uh, this one's just uh, played away. It's a good bit of fielding by Kulvin to sing out of the deep. And they're going to come for a second run. This is nice running by the Sri Lankan Lions. And unfortunately for the Black Caps, the throws just struck the uh, captain on Pathirata. I think he's going to be a little bit sore, but he's certainly toughing it out and uh, not showing any pain. Oh, has that just hit him on the bottom of the foot? That has to be a bit painful. I think he's taken it very, very well. And uh, of course, uh, again, a couple of a couple of solid overs. I would say very uh, decent overs. Uh, two overs of ten runs, as uh, twenty runs up these last two overs. So, Black Caps doing quite well just to contain the run rate after the power play. But Sri Lankan Lions won't mind this too much. I think this game is going along very evenly, with a similar pattern to what we saw in the previous match. So we can see that all these sides in this group are incredibly evenly matched, and I think we're going to see a great standard of cricket over these next seven days. Yeah, this starts off with a wide here, so we finally do see Kulvinder Singh. Of course, interesting that he shortened his run-up, bowling a little bit slower. Of course, we do remember in the very first ECS we saw him, the wicketkeeper, I kid you not, would have to stand just a few paces in front of the boundary because his run-up was so long. And uh, this one is up in the air. And it's a catching opportunity for Tej Winder Singh, who's put one down, and that's a... Uh, that's I uh, wonder if that's going to be a fairly costly drop. I mean, Tej Winder Singh to his credit, covered a lot of ground to get to that one. And then he's done the hard bit, but he just it just falls a bit too low for him to catch. So uh, an opportunity slips by there. And the uh, Sri Lankan Lions survive. But just going back to the point, Kulwinder Singh, he used to have an incredibly long run-up. He used to bowl at an insanely brisk pace. I mean, the keeper would have to stand just in front of the boundary rope back then. And this one's, uh, again, it's popped up in the air. Is this a catching opportunity? Oh, it's a sensational catch. That is so well taken. And uh, we just saw a chance go down earlier. And this one is by Tajinder Kumar. He's done terrifically well. I mean, he's run to his right. And he's somehow come down with it. That is top, top stuff. And boy, he, de he deserves all the plaudits he will get. And you can see a big round of applause there for Rajwinder Brar. The captain, he's out there clapping him. And then just take a look at this. What a great dive, and he's timed that one to perfection. It's really hard to take those catches in. Well-deserved pat on the back, and uh, an important wicket, too, here for the Black Caps. Kamal Reyes is the new batsman. And I really think his main aim needs to be to try to try to aid Reyes in a very similar way. He uh, aided Kalugala in the previous match. That's a full toss and it's going to be played away and surely it should go away to the boundary. So a uh, smart cricket by Reyes. That was a very poor delivery by Kulvinder Singh. Uh, a bad full toss. And he just tucks that one away for a four. As of course, uh, no, no worries about that, about the height on that one. That was not a no ball. Just a poor full toss. And with fine leg inside the ring, all Reyes has to do is just help it along. And a couple more balls left in this over. Six runs off it so far. And Reyes will just get a quick single over here. Nice cricket by Reyes. Gets the boundary, follows it up with a single. And we, you know, we saw what a good partner Reyes was to Kalukala in the uh, previous game. He made 21 runs of 14 deliveries. You know, when a strike rate of 150 is very healthy. And then he just let Kalukala accelerate at the other end and smash it all over the park. And we, we can see the way Sadun is going here. So if Reyes just provides, is a good partner to him, really see the Sri Lankan Lions get to a big total similar to the one they achieved in the uh, first match. As this over comes to an end, a very good over by Kulvinder Singh. 
And you can see the fact that, you know, even though he's uh, maybe reduced his pace, he's still got that accuracy. And uh, this is, I, I think it's pretty smart cricket by Colvinder Singh. You know, we've often seen that uh, a bit too much pace is often to the detriment of the bowler in this format, especially with these very short boundaries. As we take a look at the scorecard, of course, uh, Akila Kaluvala got off to a good start here as well, made 16 of 7, largely on that stage, Winder Singh over, but uh, he was dismissed. By uh, with a little inside edge, he chopped it onto his stumps. But since then, Chamal Sudun has held fort very well. He's batted terrifically to make uh, 30 runs so far. As uh, yeah, he just swipes across the right line there, Kamal Reyes. His rehearsal, though, mind you, doesn't really fill you with confidence that he's going to strike it uh, better if he tries that shot again. Oh, he takes an edge, and that was a. Uh, Tough chance for the keeper, Upinder Singh. I know Chamal Sadun is a little bit frustrated, but goodness me, what has happened here? This is a real comedy of errors. Well, everyone's annoyed with one another. The Sri Lankan Lions, the Black Caps. So we see a chance put down, first of all, to start off proceedings. Upinder Singh really should have taken that one. Mangala Gunasekra looks to throw it back, an absolutely wayward throw. This should be backed up fairly easily, but oh, that is a disappointing bit of fielding by Chetan Sharma. He won't be proud of himself, and uh, he won't want to look at that again. This is struck cleanly by Chamal Sadun, and it goes the distance. It's his third six of the innings. That is a terrific shot. We know he's so strong straight down the ground, and you really can't be bowling to him there. And he's punishing the Black Caps for their errors. What a sweet, sweet strike by Jamal Sadoon. This one's go gone up in the air. Can we locate it? The fielder's trying to locate it. And it, once again, boy, Chetan Sharma having a very difficult time in the field. You have to feel for him because he's just made a major misfield and he completely just misses the trajectory of this ball. He's trying to locate it. You can see he's squinting. You know, of course, it's a rather sunny day. He just can't quite get the ball, and he never got near it. And boy, you can't be giving opportunities to Chamal Sadoon. He's a quality cricketer. And this is a good ball by Rajwinder Brar, directed at Sadoon. And uh, the over is uh, not quite going the way Rajwinder Brar would have wanted. You know, a lot of opportunities have gone down here. It could have been a much tighter over. And you can just sense a bit of frustration now amongst the Black Caps. I mean, we saw the nice spirit they started off with, the good team huddles, but now there's a little bit of finger pointing going around. And oh, that's a poor ball by Rajwinder Brar. He's done so well for most of this game, but that's an error he will really regret. Just strays onto the pads, and Kamal Reyes for the second time this innings will just help it along towards that fine leg boundary. And the over. Ends with a four, a rather expensive over for Rajwinder Brar. That one going for 18 as the Sri Lankan Lions going along at a very healthy run rate above 13. So it's going to be Chetan Sharma bowling this over. Of course, we saw a couple of difficult moments he had in the field, and now's a chance for him to make amends. Oh, what an inventive scoop shot by Chamal Sadoon. That's gone for six. Well, this is a bit of trickery. We've seen a number of sides in Group A attempt this scoop shot, but Sadoon, well, he's the first one to execute it perfectly. That is absolutely perfect. He's premeditated it, and he's been given a nice full toss as well by Chetan Sharma. Good gift. And Sadoon hits that one away with style as you just take a look around at this field for the Black Caps. So many players with a look of anguish. There's double teapots all over the place. And, uh, well, is this game slipping away from them? Played away by Sadoon. Not entirely sure he knew where that one was going, but now moves on to 46. He's just 1-4 uh, away from a half century, and uh, he'd certainly deserve one because of how well he's played. He's just going to go over to have a quick word with Kamal Reyes. I wonder if he's just telling him, look, play the ball on its merit. If it's a good ball, give me the strike. I'm seeing the ball like a football right now. So uh, 
I'd like to swing, but then again, Kamal Ray is going along pretty nicely himself. Yeah, it's a swing and a whist. Chetan Sharma going uh, a bit wide. We just, we just have a nice cool breeze now going across the ground. That will certainly help the fielders. And this one takes a thickish outside edge, but it goes straight to Mangala Gunasekara. He's uh, well over six feet, so that's going to be a comfortable catch for him. And uh, that's exactly why he's been positioned there. I mean, not much is going to fly over his head at that height. And uh, again, you don't see much of a celebration now by the Black Caps once they get a wicket. They've uh, been a little bit demoralized these last couple of overs after uh, they've gone for a few runs. And well taken there by Mangala Gunasekara. As uh, you have to appreciate what uh, Kamal Reyes was trying to do there. But uh, more importantly, it's a couple of dot balls as uh, Chamal Sudun is at the other end. And uh, he has a quick word with Nalin Gamagi. I wonder if he was just telling him, look, uh, I'm seeing the ball well, you know. Let's make sure I face as many balls as possible from here on out. Still 14 deliveries left in this innings. You know, the Sri Lankan Lions, once again, they can aim for that 130-plus score. Oh, and this is uh, a dot ball. So this over started off quite well for the Sri Lankan Lions, but Chaitan Sharma has done well to uh, get three dot balls in. Can he make it a fourth one? I mean, certainly there's no way that Nalan Gamage should get a single on the last ball and keep strike. I think Chamal Sudu needs to be facing the uh, first ball the next over. Yeah, this is a well-directed ball by Chetan Sharma. Just followed the batsman. And four dot balls to end the over. So terrific bowling by Chetan Sharma. He really salvaged that over at the end. As the Sri Lankan Lions are just one short of a team century at the eight-over mark. Uh, Love Deep Singh coming back into the attack. So uh, Sudun, yeah, I can see a bit of a smile there by uh, Chamal Sudun, and he has good reason to smile considering the way he's been batting. This one's uh, still he played off his pads, and they're certainly going to have to push for a second run, but they don't because that's a terrific throw. Sudun was very, very keen for that second run. He wants to be back on strike, but a good cricket here by the Black Caps. They basically. Uh, put in a lot of dot balls. They've snuck in a lot of dot balls here and they've also done well to keep Chamal Sudun off strike. So they're closing this innings out well, the Black Caps, after maybe just losing the hang of things a little bit during that middle over phase. Gamage strikes this straight to uh, Tajinder Kumar and will allow Chamal Sudun to come back on strike. And uh, just a few appeals of out, but uh, it says a lot when the only appeal is coming from the fielder out at deep point and deep cover. So, of course, uh, yeah, this one, the impact is uh, well outside the off stump. That was uh, never going to be LPW. Oh, and a big swing and a miss there for Nolan Gamage. And the big concern here, he's seen out three dot balls. I mean, Top balls are really, really precious at this stage of the innings and can't afford to give these up. I mean, the Sri Lankan Lions closed that previous innings match so out well, but not the case here so far. The Sri Lankan Lions just kind of lost their way near the end. And it's just going to be the one run, so not the ideal way to end the over for the Sri Lankan Lions because this means Nalin Gamage is going to be on strike to start the final over. I think the Black Caps 
will be delighted with the way they have concluded things. Yeah, I mean, we saw that phase over there where Rajminder Brar had an 18-run seventh over, but since then, just 11 runs off the last two overs. That is a terrific stuff. Now, of course, we take a look at this bowling card. I mean, the pick of the bowlers has to be Chetan Sharma. He uh, had always had a few mishaps in the field, but he's more than made up for it with his bowling. And then Kulvinder Singh, who's going to bowl this final over, gave up just seven in his first. And uh, this one's uh, tucked away by Gamage. And uh, I think now Sudun is just going to... Basically, he's going to have to try to stay there for all five of these balls. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if he just refuses to give strike to Gamage at this stage. Of course, he's just uh, three runs away from a personal milestone. This is struck very, very well. It's going to take one bounce and go away for a four. So that brings up the half century for Chamo Sudun. He's batted terrifically well, and it's a well-deserved half century. So a couple of half centuries for the Sri Lankan Lions team to start off the tournament, the first one. Went to Chamal Sadoon's uh, teammate, Akila Kalugala. And uh, Sadoon now brings up his own half century. He's uh, of batted so well so far today. He made 14 of 4 undefeated in the previous game and going along very well here. This one's uh, gone high up in the air. It's going to be a tough catch, but it's a very well taken catch as uh, Chamal Sadoon departs right after he's made a half century. So a good ball here by Kulvinder Singh. And uh, well, it's not just, it's, this is a pretty important wicket now. I mean, uh, it's not just a golf ball, but the fact that probably the, one of the only hitters left now for the Sri Lankan Lions has had to depart, so a chance to really put the squeeze on here by the Black Caps. And it's well judged, but goodness me, that is not good catching technique. I mean, he's almost got the crocodile hands out there when he's trying to catch that. I mean, he might put a few down if he uh, uses that catching technique again, but it works on this occasion. And uh, that current run rate, as we can see, beginning to dip a little for the Sri Lankan Lions. They were looking set to uh, get to uh, 125, 135. So they'll be a little disappointed, the Sri Lankan Lions. But they've got three balls left. I mean, of course, uh, Buddhika Mahesh, he's uh, not a recognized batsman for the Sri Lankan Lions, but he'll try to have a swing as, uh, boy, he's managed to connect to this one. This is a bit of a surprise. I mean, Buddhika Mahesh, Typically batting lower down the order, and uh, well, as we can often see T10 cricket, if you can just get a nice connection, you can slog it away. And this one is a uh, well, very good catch taken there by uh, the substitute fielder for the Black Caps. And you can see a bit of a smile by Kulwinder Singh. I don't think he expected Buddhika Mahesh to hit that either. As this drill down the ground comes off Kulwinder Singh's foot, and they have to come back for a second run here. And oh, the wicket keepers missed that one. Wasn't the best throw either. And now it's going to be a third run. That was really lazy by Mangala Gunasekra. And this is an appalling bit of fielding as fingers are being pointed all over the place now. And uh, you really don't want to see this in the Black Caps. They've done a good job to tighten the screws these last few overs. And it wasn't the best throw. The wicket keeper, I don't know why he's taking his gloves off there. No need for that. And then, of course, you don't quite see that on the replay. But Mangala Gunasekra was very lazy with his fielding. And he honestly just very casually allowed the Sri Lankan Lions to come back for a third run. A bit disappointing for a player who is a terrific, terrific athlete. And the Lions get a second run and they're contemplating one more three, but uh, not to be as the Sri Lankan Lions end up with 119. A good bit of running there at the end, but they'll uh, feel a bit disappointed that they haven't quite reached the 130-plus uh, mark. But nonetheless, this is a very good total. So terrific stuff by the Sri Lankan Lions. Let's take a look at the highlights of their innings. So it was uh, Tej Bindu Singh bowling that first over and uh, Srinath Rajith, he pretty much had a carbon copy of an innings. He hit a four on the first ball and then he got dismissed on the very next ball. Good catch there by the captain of the Black Caps, Raj Winder Brar. And uh, he did the old uh, Punjabi celebration. That was a uh, nice bit of shot making by Chamal Sadoon, who was the star of this innings, making a terrific 51 of 28. He hit four boundaries and four sixes. We saw some big power hitting by Akila Kalugala as well. He hit two sixes, one four, and then uh, Tej Binder Singh just slightly lost his head in that third over. Bowled uh, two wides, two no balls, but uh, he actually ended that over in fine fashion. He managed to get a couple of wickets right there near the end, including that one of Akila Kalugala, a little inside edge to hit the uh, off stump, and then he would get Roshan Sidivardhan as well. Roshan Sidivardhan departing for a golden duck 
Really well taken catch there by Love Deep Singh. But uh, Black Caps, well, it looks very happy at the start, but then Chamo Sujun would help the Sri Lankan Lions would really dominate that middle over phase of the game. That was a good effort by Tejvinder Singh. He covered a lot of ground to even get to that point. Well, what a sensational catch here by Tahinder Kumar. That was so well taken. That would be the end of the Lions skipper, Nolan Bathirana. And ooh, that was a, a missed opportunity there. And we saw some, uh, some wayward fielding. And we know Chetan Sharma, he had a couple of errors in the field. He dropped the catch. But uh, he have to say, he did a very good job with the ball in the hand. He made up for some of his errors, his figures. Were one for 17 with two overs he bowled. And boy, that was the shot of the day. I mean, that is such a good shot by Chamos to do. What innovation. What terrific bit of cricket. And a nice catch taken there by Mangala Gunaseka. He's a very tall fielder, so trying to get it over his head is always going to be a challenge. Of course, Sadu would continue to strike until he was dismissed. A little bit of a crocodile hands over there, but it wouldn't matter as, uh, well, Buntika Mahesh surprised everyone with that six. I don't think too many people expected it. Then a good bit of running at the end by the Sri Lankan Lions, which allowed them to get five runs of the last two deliveries. And in the end, that would mean they would reach a score of 119, a very solid score. And of course, the Black Caps will have to get a target of 120 to make sure their title of defense gets off to a good start. We'll leave you with the scorecard and join you after a few moments.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to Ipsanas for the second innings of our second game of the day. As the Sri Lankan Lions hope to make it two opening wins to start off this tournament while the Black Caps are 120 runs away from starting their title defense in style with a win. It's uh, going to be Pavandeep along with Kulvinder Singh at the non-striker's end. And of course, uh, we know Kulvinder Singh. He's a real power hitter. Loves to uh, target those uh, straight boundaries. Let's see the opening bowlers. I believe it's going to be Buddhika Mahesh. So we saw him in a nice six at the end of the inning. Let's see if he can follow up that positivity. And it's a wide one to start off, as, uh, as you can see. Just a quick apology by Buddhika Mahesh to his teammates. Oh, that's a much better ball by Buddhika Mahesh, and that's really where a left arm seamer needs to be in T10 cricket. We've seen left arm seamers have a good time so far in Cyprus. Of course, we saw Mohammed Mohsin, Mohammed Hussein in Group A have a major impact, and it really is a big innovation now in uh, limited overs cricket, a left arm seamer. And such an important weapon to have on your side. And oh, that is a terrific ball. That was agonizingly close to the stumps. And boy, Sri Lankan Lions must be wondering how they haven't picked up their first wicket. Look at this. He's getting it back in beautifully. And oh, that's ever so close to that leg stump. And a good start by Budika Mahesh after that wide. He's followed it up with two terrific deliveries. Just needs to keep bowling right there, doesn't he? Oh, and a little bit too wide here. And an immediate apology by Buddhika Mahesh. But it's, uh, we've seen that when he gets it right, he really can get it right. It's just, uh, I think he's going to be a very important bowler as this tournament progresses because you know, having that variety in your attack has so far proven to be a very important weapon in this tournament. Some teams all continue on that point after this ball. This one's just aimed at the pads. It's just a little too leg side there by Budika Mahesh. And uh, that's gone the distance. So it's a big six for Pavandeep, who, uh, well, he was beaten by a couple. But this time around, he says, nah, I'm slapping you away. That is a very, very good six. As uh, so Pavandeep Singh just flexing his muscles on that one. But going to that point, I mean, you know, we've seen certain attacks so far this tournament, such as the Napa one early, where, you know, they pretty much just had a lot of very good uh, right armed quick bowlers, but really it was when they added Karanvir Singh to their attack, the uh, left arm spinner, that their bowling really improved. So having all those different weapons is so important as uh, Buddhika Mahesh after going a bit too far down the leg side. This time he goes uh, a lot wider. Doesn't quite overcompensate though. I think the umpires got that one right. Of course, the umpires for this game are Abdul Rahman, Hamad Ahmed, and the third umpire is Sujith Kumar. That's a full toss. He gets away with it, Buddhika Mahesh, because it's just going to be a single. And you can see uh, Pavandeep, just by his reaction, he's a little bit annoyed. He hasn't managed to hit that one away from the boundary. And just a slap of his pads. That's a sign of a rather frustrated batter. One's a beautifully struck by Kulvinder Singh. Well, take a look at that one. What a powerful shot. I mean, just look at the brute strength on this. There's not too many cricketers who can play this shot and clear the boundary that easily. Gorgeous techniques, just stands and delivers. Terrific hit, and we did say if Kulvinder Singh gets going, boy, it's going to be very hard to stop him. I mean, we know those straight boundaries, he targets them all day long as we take a look at the amount of matches we've had since the Golden Ball is currently sitting at 129, of course, we've come so close to breaking it on numerous occasions. 
Yeah, so far this first week here at Cyprus. We haven't quite snapped it yet. Maybe this is the match we see that. As we see two quality sides uh, facing each other off. Uh, this should be a very, very evenly contested game with a good back and forth. I expect this innings to go quite similar to the Sri Lankan Lions. One expects the Lions will always get wickets at key intervals and just uh, peg back the Black Caps. Uh, that's what we saw them do in the first match against Markor. And it's going to be Rajith. He bowled that uh, sensational penultimate over to secure a win for uh, the Sri Lankan Lions against Markor. And we know he struggled in his first over in the power play in that match. And he'll be hoping for something better here. This one's uh, come off the toe end. And it's going to land right between two fielders. Uh, riding his luck. Pavandeep. Uh, boy, what were the odds of that? I mean, it's just perfectly landed between the two fielders. And of course, I think Pavandeep would have had his heart in his mouth. Well, no, that was going to Roche to see Ortona. And he, uh, that's a wider delivery by Rajiv. Yeah, you have to be careful when you're bowling to cool They're saying we see a lot of bowlers do everything just to keep it out of his arc. thing with him is he's one of those cricketers. He's got that great forehand, doesn't he? That forehand slap. And you can see the strategy here by Rajith. It's a good tactic, isn't it? He's bowling full and wide. You know, he, does, he doesn't want Kulwinder to get a chance to just get underneath one and uh, slap it away. But I think I'd like to see a little bit of protection, though, on the offside as well, considering the, the tactic Rajith is employing. Time he trades onto the pads, and it's just going to be a single. Of course, so the only fielder on the offside is a, I'd say, a deep extra cover. I think he could be moved to uh, just behind point if, uh, if he's going to continue to go full and wide, Rajiv. Runs up, played away, and it's going to go for a four. So he goes a bit too leg side there. Rajith and Pavandeep will very easily target that vacant boundary. He's uh, struck this one very, very well. And uh, well, with the only protection that Rajith has on the boundary is that log on and deep extra cover. He can't really be affording to bowl there. But uh, we're seeing the Black Caps go along at a very healthy run rate, uh, exactly what they need to go at. One's played slightly uppishly. It's going to be a big chase for Roshan City Rather than Boy, he is so athletic. I've got a perfect vantage point considering he's fielding right in front of me. And that is a terrific throwback as well. I think he's going to be an electric fielder for the Sri Lankan Lions. And uh, I think the Black Caps have done very well as well. This is just good cricket all around. And of course, Roshan City Rather than manages to get there before his teammate, Janaka. Managed to play that one away, doesn't he? Just uh, chokes him for room, Rajiv. And I think that's a good end to the over. It goes for just uh, nine runs as the Black Caps are 24 for no loss at the end of two overs, going at exactly their required run rate. Of course, uh, we see the standings. The Sri Lankan Lions won the opening match against Markor. But really, looking at some of these teams, very exciting teams there. Of course, we do know the Black Caps are the defending champs. You've got the Muplons who are the three-time consecutive finalists. And then Limassol, Zalmi, they were very impressive in their last ECS appearance. And well, we know about the Nicosia Fighters. They're uh, a good underdog side. They're one of those uh, dark horses in this group who could probably knock off one of these major teams or upset their chances of making it to the quarterfinals. This one's uh, played away towards City Rathana again as Chamal Sadoun is inserted into the attack, the half-centurion. And really, you do feel this is a group of death. I mean, we're going to see one of these quality sides miss out on a chance to go to the quarterfinals. So every game is going to be very hotly contested, and it's going to come down to the final day, just like with Group A as uh, Sudun pulls this one a bit too wide.
As he takes an edge, is this a catching opportunity? Oh, I think he's taken an absolutely sensational catch. And we've seen the Sri Lankan Lions show a really good bit of fielding as, uh, boy, I believe this is Akila Kalugula. We haven't quite been able to see this one cleanly on the live feed. We're gonna have a better chance to have a look now on the replay as uh, takes an edge and boy, what a terrific catch by Akila Kalugula. That's his fourth catch of the day in that position. We saw him take three against Markor and he's really, really just dominating that position, isn't he? He's a very safe pair of hands and it has to be a joyous feeling for the captain knowing that if anything goes past him, it's going to be taken by Akila Kalugala. And a good, good start here for Akila. He's just having a great day, isn't he, so far? I mean, good with his catching, making runs for fun. As the Sri Lankan Lions pick up their first wicket, that's the end of Pavan Deep's inning. As we're going to see Bhupinder Singh come into bat. Works this away very nicely, Bhupinder Singh. I like that. That is a terrific shot. I mean, we've seen some good bludgeoning so far by the Black Cavs, particularly Kulwinder Singh. And now you just see the deft touch, the, de the beautiful stroke as a Mr. Triple Six will uh, just hit that away for a four. Nice shot. You really like that. I mean, with third man inside the ring, it's a very intelligent cricket. You just open the face of the bat and run that down to third man. Uh, this is a good defensive shot there by Singh. Of course, Bupinder Singh is also the wicket keeper of this black cap side. So I haven't seen Mangala Gunasekra come out to bat yet. Uh, this time he'll just uh, smack it down towards long on for a single. Big swing and a miss there for Kulwinder Singh as uh, the over comes to an end. It's a very good one by Chamal Sadun. Other than that one boundary, it's been really solid. He, of course, got an all-important wicket of Pavan Deep Singh. That is a terrific line and length there by Chamal Sadun as we, of course, see where the Sri Lankan lines were at this stage. They got off to a great start, didn't they, in terms of their run rate. 47 for three. Maybe the slight disappointment for them will be that they petered out a bit towards the end, that uh, eighth and ninth over. Didn't go for enough runs, but Sri Lankan Lions have still posted a very, very healthy target here of 120. Of course, the power play comes to an end. Let's just take this opportunity to tell you where uh, the fielders are positioned. There is a long on, deep square leg, deep extra cover. Fielder at deep point. And the Sri Lankan Lions just taking their time to adjust the field. I think they want their best fielders at the boundary, so Skipper is just making sure that he gets the right personnel in the right positions. And yeah, now they just sent a fielder back to Cal Corner as well. And yeah, you can just see Buddhika Mahesh counting and making sure that uh, there is a, a legal amount of fielders outside the ring. This is hit straight and hit for a four. So uh, a nice shot here by Bhupinder Singh. I really liked the kind of cricket he's played, he's uh, not looked to overhit anything. This is a nice shot, full face of the bat, proper cricketing shot, and he picks out the vacant boundary, so some very fine innings by Bhupinder Singh. He's just played intelligent cricket, and you got to love that, uh, uh, that look. Of course, we saw Rob Thompson earlier saying he's supporting the Black Caps because he's a New Zealander. I mean, like, take a look at that. That's a retro New Zealand jersey. You really have to love it. Great, great ball response by Buddhika Mahesh. Nailed that one. Good Yorker left delivery. And uh, of course, they're not the only side to have a, a New Zealand-inspired jersey. We uh, we saw the uh, Napa Royal Kings uh, also use a New Zealand-inspired jersey. Of course, theirs was a more modern uh, New, New Zealand uh, limited overs jersey, whereas uh, Black Caps going for the retro look and uh, swing across the line by Bhupinder Singh. We've so far, seen him just play uh, more straight batted shots, so uh, that's rather unlike him. And you can see 
He's uh, just rehearsing the shot off in the distance, and he's actually uh, trying to practice a, a more orthodox shot, but there's this massive gap now towards cover. There's nobody inside the ring or outside the ring to protect him, but of course, uh, that's the right uh, tactics to this kind of line and length. Uh, with Dika Mahesh, bowls are wide over there. He has that brush, I mean, that may have just brushed a bit of the pad. I mean, of course, uh, we'll leave it to you at home to decide, but has the bowler just been done here? This one's a hit down the ground, and is he going to split the fielders? Oh, that is uh, really, really disappointing. It was a good fielding effort there. Uh, you have to say Chamal Sudun was going at that, along with his teammate Srinath Rajith. And Rajith, look at that. You can just see he starts to get a hold of the ball, but then he just begins to juggle it. And he isn't quite able to grasp the ball and unfortunately goes away for a four. I mean, you could see Sadoon was just trying to pluck it away from him. But that's four runs for the Black Caps. And you see Singh just moving across. And it's going for a wide, so he's had a few issues with wide so far, Mahesh. Really needs to clean that up. The third wide he's bowled already. I have to say, though, most teams so far have been doing better than the teams in Group A in terms of extras. This one's a fuller, wider delivery, and again, it goes towards Roshan City. Oh, that is incredibly unfortunate. You really have to feel for Roshan. He's a terrific fielder, but that's, uh, that's one of those Tortuga bounces, as they'd say. Take a look at this, it's going along very evenly to him, and then suddenly, look at that, that is a terrible bounce. And oh boy, it's just hit a, hit a tortoise's shell, and uh, fortunate boundary there for the Black Caps. As uh, they move on to 44, going at uh, just about 11 and over. This is uh, a decent required rate to go at, I think, if they can be in a situation where in the last three overs it's at about 15 required, they'll be, they'll be pretty pleased with themselves. We're going to see uh, Suresh Janaka bowling for the first time this game. We saw he kind of struggled to get into his bowling in the last match. Let's see if he starts off better here. And uh, it doesn't seem like he will. It's going to go the distance. That is a beautiful six. Standard deliver by Kulvinder Singh. Look at this one. Once again, it's the same. It's almost identical to the shot he hit for his first six. And, you know, if you bowl at that line and length to him, it's just in his arc, and he's going to smash it away. I mean, you can see what a big, tall, powerful cricketer he is. And a completely nonchalant, I mean, if he gets a hold of it, it's going to stay hit. This one's just going to take a bit of an inside edge, and it's going to go to the fielder. Out in the deep, that's a solid bit of fielding by Kamal Reyes. Interestingly enough, we haven't seen Kamal Reyes bowl uh, so far this innings. Typically, he's up there, he's opening the bowling for the Sri Lankan Lions, but that's not the case so far this innings. Uh, the shorter, wider delivery that I have to say, Janaka has managed to get away with. Yes, just underneath the shoulder. That's a bit too wide, isn't it? But uh, Jonica is really bowling a very dangerous uh, line and length here. I'm not sure he's going to get away with it again. Uh, against, especially against batsmen of this caliber. This time he goes a lot fuller and straighter. And guess what? He's presented a great catching opportunity to his teammate out there. That's Srinath Rajith. And that's exactly why the Sri Lankan Lions have a lot of protection for the straight hit. And he went fuller and straight, and he got the reward as a, a nice little innings here for the wicket keeper of the Black Caps, Bhupinder Singh. Comes to an end, he hits some nice looking shots, but this time around he found the fielder. And a well taken catch there. Really well taken catch by Srinath Rajith. And uh, 
pick up an important wicket here. The Sri Lankan Lions. And interestingly, we're still not seeing Mangala Gunasekar. Of course, Gunasekar, a very hyped player. We, we have seen how he's done in previous European cricket series. But it's going to be Tejvinder Singh. And boy, he's a big hitter as well. I mean, with Kulwinder and Tejvinder out there, I mean, uh, really, if you're the ball boy, you're going to have to earn your money's worth today because they're going to send everything into the olive groves. And this one is struck high. It's struck hard. And it's uh, a chase in vain for the fielder because it's landed well over his head. As you see, Tej Vinder Singh having a bit of a laugh. Why not? He's enjoying himself. And just have a look at that. A little bit of a swivel on the spot. He wasn't perfectly in balance, but he doesn't need to be because he's such a powerful hitter. And uh, starting, starting off his innings with a six, just like Kulwinder Singh. And boy, it's, uh, if they get going, it's going to be... Uh, very, very tough time for the Sri Lankan Lions. That's a full toss. And Janaka won't get away with that. That one's uh, raced away like a tracer bullet. As Tej Winder Singh with a great start to his innings. Just look at the power on that stroke. There's no way the fielder Kamal Reyes is ever going to get to that one. It's raced past him. So a poor end to Janaka's over 10 runs of the last couple of balls. 18 going off it. And a good over for the Black Caps despite the wicket. If you take a look at the leading wicket takers so far in this tournament, of course, we saw Group A conclude yesterday. So it's going to be led by players in Group A. We saw Gaurav Sagwan for MDOX leading away with 11 wickets. Bhuvan Country with 11 wickets for Everest. Navid Akhtar with 11 for the Kalunders. And then the skipper of the Napa Royal Kings, Hardeep Singh with 10. And the Nixia Tigers, Roman Mosendor with 10. So we see equal representation for every side. I mean, they all have a star bowler they can turn to. This one struck absolutely cleanly, clean as a whistle. And forget about locating that ball in that clear blue sky. It's just gone so far away. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful slogging here by Kulwinder Singh. And uh, alarm bells will be ringing now for the Sri Lankan Lions. They're going to have to find a way to somehow stop the bleeding. One's uh, struck down the ground. And, oh, it's gone towards Chamal Sadoon, and that really needed to be taken. And I think Sadoon's just spent a little bit of time groaning the fact that he's missed out on the opportunity, and he's just let the Black Caps steal an extra single. And yep, hands on heads for the Sri Lankan Lions. I mean, when Kulwinder Singh presents you an opportunity like that, you just have to take it. I know it's racing at him, but boy, it's such an important wicket. It's also gone to one of the better fielders in this line side and uh, well blocked out by Singh he uh, gives that ball its uh, due respect oh, takes an inside edge it's going to be a little bit of good fortune it's the old French cut but it's come across well there that's a good bit of fielding and the fielder out there at fine leg, you've not quite seen it, but he's raced along really quickly, Nalin Gamage. Very good running, and he's uh, just managed to cut that one out and ensure it's just a single. I think Roshan Sayurudana will just be breathing a sigh of relief. I know, it's a low full toss, and it's going to take a bit of fielding out in the deep. And nice work there by Kavindu Maduranga. And he's recovered well here. City Wardana after being uh, clubbed for some big ones. How does he end the over? Oh, it's a really wide delivery. And boy, you, you can't be giving an extra ball to uh, Kulwinder Singh. You just, you just wonder if this uh, extra delivery is going to work in favor of the Black Caps. Oh, and that's another wide one. And I think this is just the intimidation factor here. I mean, we've seen how well Kulwinder Singh has batted so far. And, you know, the bowler's really wary of uh, making sure it isn't in his arc. Oh, is there something there? Was that bat? Was that pat? It was bat! And uh, that's the end of uh, Kulwinder Singh's inning. Well, we saw him put down earlier this over by Chamal Sadoon, but uh, no issues there. It's uh, taken an inside edge, and it's uh, really well taken by the skipper, Nali Pathirana. 
And that's the end of Kulwinder Singh's innings. It was a really, really good one, a joy to watch. He made 24 of the 12 deliveries. He faced club three big sixes, but Roshan City Vardana has the last laugh, and he's recovered really well after uh, going for a big six at the start of the over. Bowled a couple of wides, but that was a sharp catch down low by the Sri Lankan Lions captain. You can just see that little thin edge through, and uh, boy, City Vardana, he knew it. He knew it was out. He raised the finger. And uh, a good end to the over as, uh, well, this one keeps swinging back and forth, doesn't it, between the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions. It's going the way the first match did. And some entertaining cricket to start off Group B. So we do see them, Danger Man Mangala Gunasekar. We've been talking about him quite a bit. Seems to have, of course, uh, gained a little bit of weight since we last saw him on uh, the European Cricket Network, but I think he's still got that power, doesn't he? And boy, boy, it would really hurt the uh, Sri Lankan Lions if a fellow Sri Lankan compatriot was the one who uh, won it for the opposition. He's gone high up in the air, and it's absolutely clubbed. Goodness me, you better watch out there, Valentine, up in the camera tower. We might need to get you a helmet. That is a sweet strike by Tej Binder Singh. It's slightly over pitched by Chamal Sadun, and he just hits it straight down the ground. And again, a lot of these players for the Black Caps, they're part of that Punjab Lions winning team in the first ever ECS in Cyprus. And you can see they've brought a lot of the Lions' firepower. This one's up, played away. It's a bottom handed stroke. It's going to be quite a race for City Wardana, and another one slips past him. For the second time this innings, that's very, very rare for by him. And look at how hard he's hitting these. I mean, this is traveling across really quickly. And it's a tough to field against such power hitting. And a rough start to the over, Chamal Sadun. His first one went for seven, but this one has already gone for ten of just two balls. And it's a wide. I mean, you can just, you can just sense they're a little bit intimidated by some of this uh, big hitting. Look at that required. Boy, it's uh, just over nine and a half now. And uh, you just have to feel that now this game has uh, just gone in favor of the Black Caps. They're in front right now. Uh, this one's high up in the air. Is this going to be a catching opportunity? No, it won't. As more salt is rubbed onto the Sri Lankan Lion wounds. This one goes away for a four. Didn't really know where that one was, uh, Tej Rinder Singh, but he gets the slice of luck. And it just seems, seems to be falling apart now for the Sri Lankan Lions. Things are not going in their favor. I mean, we know Tej Winder Singh. He'll throw the kitchen sink at everything, and he gets that slice of luck. So Chamal Sadun, how is he going to try to recover these next three balls? Gets a dot ball first up, a much-needed dot ball. Much, much-needed dot ball. One's uh, played away towards long on, and boy, that's a good fielding effort by Srinath Rajit. He's done a pretty good job fielding out in the deep. We saw him take a nice catch earlier of Bupinder Singh, and he got behind that one well. And as we come to the end of the over, so the Black Caps will need just 29. Uh, well, I beg your pardon. No, there's still one ball left in the over. So, yep, there's going to be one more ball in the over. So 30 needed of 19. We're going to see... Uh, Mangala Gunasekra go up against his uh, fellow Sri Lankan compatriots. And he plays this one uh, straight to the fielder at third man. And it is finally going to be the end of the over. So it is a dot ball in the end of the over. And uh, the Black Caps need to go at exactly 10 and over from here on out. As a uh, Take a look at this one, of course, from Markor Ave Sulari, leading the way with 95 points. As, of course, uh, Markor will face the Nicosia Fighters at a 9.30 GMT. That game coming in just about 37 minutes. We're really looking forward to that one, of course. Uh, Markor, despite the loss, they were pretty impressive. We saw a lot of positive signs from them. And, of course, we know about the Nicosia Fighters. Boy, they are a very, very interesting underdog team. And that man at the top, Abdullah Al-Tazman, watch out for him. He is one of the best cricketers in this country. 
played youth cricket in Bangladesh and uh, he is so exciting. I mean, brilliant left arm seamer, excellent batsman, terrific fielder as well. And uh, I think with the Nicosia fighters, he's one of those players who's a real talisman. They go as far as he can take them. This is a very nice stroke, but it's gonna go straight to Roshan City Vardana. And we saw a couple go past him earlier, but this time he makes no mistake. He raises his arm and says, you're out to Tejwinder Singh, but you feel Tejwinder has done the damage as he's put the uh, Black Caps in a very, very good position. That was a well-taken catch by Roshan City where then it was hit quite firmly. And as you just see straight batted stroke and City Wardena right at the boundary rope. He had to take that one and yep, raises the finger, you're out. But a good innings by Tejwinder Singh. He went at a strike rate of just under 300. And of course, uh, I have to say, I completely agree with you, Syed Ertazai, in the chat. I mean, the Black Caps, they have a lot of power hitting, and I think that uh, really suits them. I mean, they're not the defending champs for nothing. I mean, uh, I know some people will debate how they won that uh, championship. I mean, uh, we do know the final was rained off, and they won by virtue of the fact that they were top of the group against the Mukhlans, but we'll continue on that point later, as uh, this one's uh, played away by Lovedeep Singh. We'll get off the mark, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, say what you like. I mean, they've been to a couple of finals, haven't they? I mean, at the bare minimum, even if you're uh, questioning their uh, last championship. I mean, this is a quality side, and you add to that the fact that they've made some changes, brought in some very exciting players. A lot of players from that uh, famous Punjab Lions winning side. So uh, I think the Black Caps, uh, they're in a very good position to uh, defend their title. And this man, he's going to have to play a big role in it, isn't he? Mangala Gunasekra. That's a dot ball. Bowler running in. And the Sacred gets this one away. And once again, a bit of fielding for Roshan City Rogan, but unfortunately, it slips past him. For the third time this innings, we know what a good fielder he is, and you can tell he's absolutely gutted. Well, he took a terrific catch earlier, but this one slips past him. That's uh, uh, most unfortunate as uh, Mangala Gunasekra gets his uh, first runs. It's a well-struck four, but oh, he's just misjudged that one. He's maybe even slightly overrun it. It's a good ball, just uh, suffocating Mangala Gunasekra. Just made uh, four runs off the four deliveries he's faced so far, and that was obviously aided by the uh, slight misfield. So nice over here by Rajiv. Let's see if he can close it strongly. I mean, just the five runs so far. And he's going to need a dot ball here just to, just to put us in for an exciting finish. Up in the air, where is this going to land? It's going to land somewhere way beyond the boundary rope. And uh, Ravi, I'm not sure we're going to quite get to that one. Of course, you see ECN's very own Ravi Punchal there. And boy, that was hit very high in the sky. You can see all the Sri Lankan Lions trying to get a look at that. I don't know if that's uh, touched the satellite on the way down. And it's a big six and a humongous blow to the Sri Lankan Lions prospects. I mean, they really need it a good end to that over and now the black caps just 19 runs away from a win it's uh, you really feel this game has uh, swung in their favor and as of course we take a look at that graph i mean uh let's say the black caps are just slightly ahead at this stage the sri lankan lions were 99 for five at this point in the innings but sri lankan lions obviously had a that very slow ninth over they gave up they, gave, they, they scored, beg your pardon, just four runs of uh, Lovedeep Singh's ninth over. I don't think the Black Caps are going to make the same mistake here. I think they're going to try to play smart cricket and uh, see this one out and start their title defense in style. Big swing and a miss there, so uh, certainly Lovedeep Singh hasn't gotten that memo. Yeah, this CNF lover says that was a massive six right at the end, uh, not just in terms of the distance, also in uh, in terms of determining the result of this match. Hello. 
Ravdeep Singh gets some contact. He's going to Roshan City Rodhana. We've said his name a few times today. And he's taken a terrific catch this time. So a good bit of work. We know City Rodhana. Very safe pair of hands. And that's an important wicket for the Sri Lankan Lions. But more importantly, it's a dot ball. And they keep Mangala Gunasekra at the non-striker's end. So they're going to have to try to play this one smart, the Sri Lankan Lions. Of course, we saw the Black Caps do the same thing to them in the previous inning. If we take a look at this catch again, very well tracked by uh, Roshan Sayyawardana. He took that one and, you know, we saw right at the end for uh, the Sri Lankan Lions. You know, they lost, a, they lost some wickets in the last three overs and that just meant that uh, Chamal Sadun didn't have enough of the strike near the end and that allowed Black Caps to just tighten the screws on the Sri Lankan Lions. They'll be hoping to do the same here. The Lions, of course, uh, I think Mangala Gunasekar might have just told uh, the new batsman, look, uh, I'm seeing the ball well. I'm the recognized batsman here. Just uh, try to get me on strike ASAP, but I don't think that uh, memo was received by Kumar. is a play to waste, gonna go to the fielder. Out at deep cover, so it's just a single. But more importantly, Mangala Gunasekra is on strike. Two balls for him to face, and yeah, these are gonna be two very, very important balls. I mean, first of all, I think Gunasekra is definitely gonna try to hit a big one here, and then maybe take a single on the last ball, so. A lot of strategizing going on. You can see the Sri Lankan Lions are just trying to get their field spot on. You know, they have enough time, of course. Uh, just under four minutes left for them to get these last two balls. Or the sacred goes big. Is this a catching chance? No, it isn't. It's sailed way over the fielder's head. I mean, we're just losing track of some of these balls, but just to tell you where it is, it's gone well over the uh, cow corner boundary. And Mangala Gunasekar, boy, he's been in fine touch to start off. Of course, we know some of the struggles he had with his form in the uh, night series we had in Cyprus, but looks like he's back to his best. And this one's played away and it's gonna be a single, so it's exactly what the uh, Black Caps would have wanted. They get that six, and then they get the single to keep Mangala Gunasekra on strike. So boy, we're in for a dramatic one heading into this final over. The Black Caps need 11 to win. Of course, uh, well, we're uh, waiting for a golden ball here in Cyprus. We haven't had one yet. We've had six so far this calendar here, here on the European Cricket Network. And you can see the rules right there. The batting side needs two or more runs to win. Otherwise, the fielding team wins. Of course, the batting side can use any batsman who hasn't been dismissed. And the bowling side can use any bowler in their lineup. So, well, are we in the golden ball territory here? I mean, uh, they need 11 runs to win. You'd feel that slightly favors the batting side. And it's, it's, it's Roshan City World that I was going to bowl this final over, so they've gone with experience here in the final over. This is a wise move, very wise move. And let's see what City World that does here. Just trying to get the field absolutely spot on. Well, it's a very dramatic moment in this game. Black Caps need 11 of 6. They brought fine leg back into the ring. There's a cow corner, a long on, deep square leg, deep extra cover, and long off. And this is a good ball by Roshan City Wardana to start off in Mangala, making it very clear to Kumar, stay right where you are. And indeed, this is going to be a nail-biting finish. So 11 needed a five now for the Black Caps. Siri Wardana with a good start. And oh, that's a poor one. You can see what he's trying to do. Aiming for that leg stump, Yorker. We know a lot of sides do that with Mangala, but he gets that one slightly wrong. Roshan City Wardana, so the equations now 10 needed a five. And oh, that's a dot ball, so he sneaks in a dot ball here, Roshan City Wardana. Terrific stuff. 10 needed a four. This is a good start to the over, but we know Mangala, he's just looking at this and thinking, I need a six, I need a four. And it's another swing and a miss. So Roshan City Wardana, just one run of these first three balls. And uh, 
Well, they're going to start sweating now in the Black Caps dugout. I mean, they thought this was set up well heading into the final over. 10 needed of three. And uh, Roshan Siri Warlana just keeping Kumar right where he needs to be. I think he sensed Kumar was uh, getting out of his crease. And he's like, stay right where you are. I like this by Roshan Siri Warlana. Goes to the big E. Good to Sakura. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't have enough legs to go the distance. No, it doesn't. He's actually put down the catch. Oh no, that's Janaka who's put that one down, but the important thing is, it's only one run. I mean, the catch really should have been taken and that might have just iced the game, but oh my goodness, Janaka. Boy, he should be taking that one. But all that matters here is uh, the fact that only two runs have gone off the first four balls, and this is really disappointing for the Black Caps. I mean, are we about to see a burglary? by the Sri Lankan Lions. This is going to be tough for young Kumar. Loads of pressure on his shoulders. He basically needs a six and a four to win it here. This one has to go to a boundary. The Sri Lankan Lions trying to get this absolutely spot on. Needs to absolutely whack belt this one. Looks to make some room. And it's not struck cleanly and it's going to go to the fielder out at Cal Corner and you just wonder why they haven't just tried to go for a crazy second run, maybe force an error because even if they hit a six on this one, the Black Caps, it's, uh, it's still going to be a one run loss. So boy, what a, what a deflating end to this innings. We thought we'd see some fireworks, but Roshan Siri Wardana has delivered an absolutely stellar over. And all he needs to do is bowl a legal ball this one is uh, struck very well by Mangala Gunasekere. It goes for a six, but it doesn't matter because the Sri Lankan Lions hang on by one run and they've held their nerve at the end. And you just have to say the Black Caps, they misplayed it at the end. And well, with 11 runs needed after the last over, you would have fancied them, especially with the dangerous Mangala Gunasekere on strike to start the over. And the Sri Lankan Lions hang on by the skin of their teeth, and they make it two wins in two to start off their tournament. And of course, not quite the title defense the Black Caps would have hoped for to start this tournament off. And hey, let's take a quick look at the highlights of what was an absolutely breathtaking match. And of course, it started off with Pavan Deep Singh. He hit a four and a six to start off proceedings. He made 14 runs of 10 deliveries. He looked fairly solid. And then Love Deep Singh would be dismissed. That was a, a well taken catch there. Of course, uh, we saw Akila Kugala. He took uh, four catches so far today. And then, uh, well, we saw Bhupinder Singh come into the attack. And I really like that Bhupinder Singh. You know, he played some classy strokes. You know, he played it with the full face of the bat. Hit some really nice looking shots. He made 17 runs of 11 deliveries. And we really saw them target that straight boundary so much. Didn't we, the Black Caps? It really is. The uh, formula that won the Punjab Lions, their first ever ECS. We saw Siri Wardana. Well, you know, he might have had three missed fields, but all that matters is he did it when it counted. Took a couple of stellar catches, and then, of course, bowled that dramatic final over. This one just taking an edge through, and that was a huge moment. I mean, Siri Wardana, well, he did it when it mattered. Some very, a very clutch performance by him. We see Tej Winder Singh here. He made a great 26 of 9, with a strike rate of just under 300. So I've hit three boundaries and two big sixes. This one, though, he presented a catch straight to Roshan City of Ardana. Look at that one by Roshan City of Ardana. He's just uh, telling everyone that's out. And, uh, well, that's a moment he'd like to forget. But uh, all that matters to City of Ardana is he'd uh, end the game smiling. We saw some uh, big shots by Mangala Gunasekra. This was another crucial catch by City of Ardana. He was just a magnet for the ball throughout this game. The ball kept finding him somehow. As of course we came down, it came down to that dramatic final over where the Black Caps needed 11 to win, but uh, it was the Sri Lankan Lions who held their nerve and they took it by the skin of their teeth, winning by the smallest possible margin, just the one run and a good start for the Sri Lankan Lions. They make it two wins in two. And of course we'll leave you with the scorecard as in just about 30 minutes time, we're bringing you some more cricketing action. Of course, the next match is between Markor and the Nicosia Fighters. Of course, Markor will be looking to rebound after that loss, and the Fighters will be looking to make a great first impression. So join us in just about 22 minutes, as we'll have some more great cricketing action for you. See you in a bit.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to a sunny day here in Cyprus as we're getting ready for our third match in Group B. And of course, without further ado, let's head over to Stefan Gooch, who's alongside the captains for the coin toss. You can see how far is the call. Heads is called. It is heads. Okay. Good luck, guys. Have a good good game. All the best. Thank you. So, Nick, see fighters have won the toss. They're having a bowl. Back over to you in the commentary box, Nish. Thank you very much, Stefan. And indeed, we've got the uh, Nick see fighters here playing their first match of this tournament against uh, Markor, who, unfortunately for them, opened the day with a loss against the Sri Lankan Lions. Let's take a look at the fantasy dashboard. Of course, uh, right up there, we can see Awe Sulari with 95 points for Markor. And then the Nicosia fighters, well, of course, this is their first match, but the star player is the man right at the top, Abdullah al -Tazmin. This team goes as far as he can take them. I mean, we, we better be focusing on him all game long. I mean, he's number 33 for the Nicosia fighters. I can bet he's just going to be a magnet for the ball. The ball's going to find a way to him. He's an electric player. And they're truly one of the better cricketers in the country as, of course, uh, fighters. Heavy underdogs in this group, in all honesty, but I certainly see them as a team who could who could knock off and surprise one of the big boys, especially you know if Al Tasman has a big day where he makes that 60-70 run innings. So let's see. Of course, Markor looking to rebound after that tough loss, and we're just moments away from the first ball. Empire just. Uh, Waiting for to get the uh, signal to go. Yeah, this is a, a huge match for Markor, of course. They need to rebound after that loss. Let's see how they rebound. It's a poor delivery to start off, in all honesty, by Ahmed. And, of course, there it is. Of course, Saurav Ahmed. We've seen him play before here in the European Cricket Series. That's a rankful toss, and I think the, the batsman has to be really, really annoyed, uh, Ahmed, that he's, he's not managed to get that one away. I mean... No protection. Not a deep cover either, so if he beats the fielder, it's going for four, of course. Uh, many of our viewers will remember Sarov Ahmed from uh, previous ECSs. Uh, looks like he's got a lot more slimmer, leaner, and trimmer. And uh, maybe we'll see a better Nicosia fighter side, a more, a more athletic one, one that's uh, ready to really slay some of the giants in this group. I mean, a lot of people have labeled Group B the group of death because... We're probably going to see, you know, at least one or two of the big boys miss out on the quarterfinals. So these matches, they're such high-stakes games. This one's very nicely played, and it's going to be a four. So Ahmed, he missed that on the uh, first wall, but not on this one. This is a, a good shot. He gets down well, and it's a nice cover drive. Look at that. Holds the pose. That's one for the photographers. Real shame, uh... Diana Oros isn't here today. Of course, she'll be joining us back again tomorrow. And uh, I bet she'll be going click, click, click when uh, Zishan plays. The shot's as gorgeous as that. Let's see if Sorov Ahmed can just uh, get it right this time. Can he, just, can he just pull it at a good length? Let's see. Oh my goodness, that one has uh, slipped out of his hand. That's a, that's a poor ball. Very, very wide. Oh, and this is going to be a no ball. That one hasn't even landed on the pitch so you know he once again he's trying to correct he overcompensates goes way down the offside that is a a poor ball and Sorov Ahmed he has to be very disappointed with himself here of course we know he's better than this he's uh, taken 20 wickets in his ECS career has an average economy rate of just under 10 and a half free hit coming up and this free hit looks like it will be punished Al Tasman has put on a good chase but it's going to take one bounce and boy look how athletic he is I mean he almost did a bit of parkour on that uh, bit of the boundary over there. Have a look at that. Of course, you can't quite see the shot on the camera because it's uh, blocked by those olive groves. But immediately, just look at his first impressions, how athletic he is, how quickly he gets around the field. And it's a, a very nice start here for Mark Hoare. 
in a game they, they really need to win. And now you just see the uh, captain's made a fielding change. He's put Altasen back from mid-off towards long-off. That one's going down the leg side and uh, it's wide. I have to say though, and this is very, very odd. I mean, the captain has just the one fielder outside the ring, so this is very, very aggressive. Just the fielder at long off. Oh, and that is a poor delivery by Saurav Ahmed, and uh, it's going to be first minimo of this innings. It's a poor ball. You can see he's just trying to shape it into the batsman. Can't quite control the swing, and it's gone away for a wide. You have to feel for Alvi Chowdhury, of course. Uh, he's a wicket keeper, former skipper of this Nicosia fighter side. The new one is Anwar Hossein, and yeah, you, you just have to wonder. I mean, this is a very aggressive tactic, going with just the one fielder outside the circle, but Baller needs to back up his captain's aggressiveness, and that is another no ball, so a terrible, terrible delivery. And you have to feel for Saurav Ahmed. He'll be very disappointed with himself. You know, he, he's someone who's been here, is in this moment. He's played in, in a European cricket series before, and the captain's turned to him because of his experience in these big moments, and he's just not delivering. You can see now he's going with a change of angle. And uh, I wonder... Why they're appealing that one? I believe it's a free hit anyway. <laughs> rather, rather baffling to see them appeal on a free hit. I think they've even forgotten and they kind of lost track of what is going on in this over, which is uh, taken an absolute age to conclude. I mean, we're uh, more than five minutes in. I've only seen four legal deliveries so far. So Al Tasman moves in at mid off, and again, just the one fielder out now at deep mid wicket. Yeah. Oh, wide by Ahmed, so. Well, well he's, he's having a very difficult time, and he needs to find his radar ASAP. Yeah, the umpire now just having a word with the batsman. I wonder what that pause in play is for. If we do receive an update, of course, we will inform you. That's just going to be another no ball. I mean, this over, what a nightmare start for uh, the Nicosia fighters. I mean, it's going to be another free hit. Just take a look at this. Fails to even land it on the pitch again, man. Boy, I mean, uh, you know, your heart goes out to Sorov Ahmed. I mean, he's obviously not doing this on purpose, and it's just, this is just truly, truly miserable for him. The captain just has a word with him. But another free hit coming up here for Markor. This over. It's already taken seven minutes. And uh, this doesn't quite take advantage of the free hit, does he? Ahmed, he's uh, hit this one straight to the skipper. And we can see that when Sarah Ahmed actually lands the ball in the right areas, he's a he's a quality bowler. But I mean he's just take a look take a look at him right now. I mean you can see he's really struggling. Uh, just a little bit of width and beautifully carved towards the offside by Zishan Ahmed. And uh, this rather miserable over for uh, Sarah Ahmed, beg your pardon, Sohail Ahmed has finally come to an end. So 23 runs of the first over for Markor, a brilliant start for them. And uh, thoroughly, thoroughly disappointing for Ahmed. And this is uh, not the start that they could see a fighters would have wanted. I mean, we know this is their first game. They'd want to make a big impression. Yeah, they've come out and really struggled, really, really struggled mightily. I mean, we saw Sohil Ahmed there, 11 runs of extras in the first over. 
mean, that is that is absolutely unacceptable to start off, and uh, very very disappointing. I don't I don't think he will uh, appreciate that one. As we just see, Al Tasman introduced into the attack. And we have another slight delay. Of course, a uh, few things being sorted out here. And they can see a fighters as well. They, they don't. They don't seem to have, have got things right early here. They're a little bit confused about what field to set as well. Of course, still just the one fielder outside the ring. He's uh, currently positioned at deep mid wicket. Oh, and he goes for the bouncer first up, Abdullah Al Tasman, but it's a bit too hot for even his own keeper to handle and well uh, this, is a, this is a nasty ball a really nasty one brilliant short ball but uh, again it's just one for the over and a bit too wide That looked like it went over the head. I mean, I'm surprised it's not been given a wide, but Al Tasman gets away with it. Goes for the shorter one again, Al Tasman, and this is worked away behind square on the leg side, and it's going to be a boundary. So Markor continuing to punish the Nicosia fighters. We just see this one here. Gets onto the back foot and swivels beautifully and he's just stroked that away for four. Zishan Ahmed who's uh, had a very good start to the innings. He's been aided by some poor bowling but we know Walt Tosman he's a terrific bowler. I mean he doesn't need to keep bagging it in short. I mean he's got a nasty Yorker. He really does. And I'd like to see him go over the wicket and I'm really really glad he is. Oh that is so beautifully played by Ahmed and it'll nestle into the goal so it's a an early goal in this match for Mark Hoare. And look, take a look at this. Just uses Al Tasman's pace and beautifully guides that down for a four. And certainly, Rob, thank you very much, of course. Yes, uh, got five games today and another five tomorrow. I'll have uh, Rico back joining me on Tuesday. So until then, it's, uh, it's indeed going to be a, a very long one. Of course, we had 12 matches the last couple of days as well. Oh, that's uh, that one is wide down the leg side, and with it, you can see fighters are just all out of sorts to start off. It's been very sloppy stuff from them, and really, when you see Abdullah Al Tasman struggling in this manner, their their talisman, it's a, it's a very bad sign for the rest of the team. And has this touched the? boundary rope. It's very hard to tell from that angle in all honesty. Very, very hard to tell. That's much better by Al Tasman. That is where he needs to be bowling at. Well, you know, he's very good when he uses that shorter one as, a, as an occasional weapon. I mean, we've seen him. He's a left-hander. He just gets that move ball to go across the right-hander. And if he can mix it up with the Yorkers and bouncers, he's going to be such a great bowler. But I think we've seen some, a few talented bowlers uh, so far in this tournament, at least in these first seven days. They get a bit obsessed with the short ball, especially when they've got that pace and bounce. But Al Tasman, I mean, he's, he's, he's a very talented player. And let's see if he gets it right here. Oh, unfortunately he doesn't. That one's gone wide down the leg side as well. So it's a rough start for uh, Ahmed and Al-Tazman. You know, you would have really expected them to come out here, try to set a tone for the Nicosia fighters, keep things tight, maybe get a few early wickets, but they've uh, actually dug their side into a bit of a hole early. It's cut away, and it was a half a chance to catch. That uh, was always going to be a difficult, difficult catching opportunity. I believe that's uh, that's gone to. It's either gone to Monirul Islam. I believe that is Monirul Islam. Yes. Yeah, that is a tough chance. He's done well in the end because he certainly prevented a boundary. 
And we're just going to see now. So third man going back for Zishan Ahmed. Just the one fielder inside the ring again. Beating it for pace there, all toss man. I mean, he's a quick bowler, and uh, let's hope we see more of that the next time he comes out to ball. So, in the end, Mark Hoare have gotten off to a great start. They're 38th for no loss at the end of two overs. We'll take a look at the standings for Group B. Of course, we're uh, only had a couple of games played so far. The Sri Lankan Lions winning both of them against the Black Caps and Mark Hoare. And, of course, that last match between the Lions and the Black Caps. Boy, that was an absolute thriller. I mean, we uh, saw that one come down to just one run. It was just a single run that separated both the sides. And the Sri Lankan Lions, of course. So we know they've, uh, they've often fallen just short of the title, finishing in third place numerous times in previous European cricket series. And this time... They'll be hoping to go all the way and uh, win the championship. So this is a really exciting group with a lot of good teams as uh, this one is stroked away and that's going to go for four. So Hossein starts off with an over pitch delivery. And that one is struck away for a four as uh, just take a look at this. It's uh, it just, just gives him a chance to free his hands. And he hits that towards point. And we just see the captain now. He's uh, moved Sohil Ahmed who was previously out a deep third man to a sort of deep backward point position. But still, just the one fielder outside the ring. And he does find that one fielder. It's uh, Ahmed. We know he had a rather difficult first over, but it's a good bit of fielding this time around. Absolutely agree with you, Liam Day. I mean, Al Tasman is a terrific bowler if he gets his line right. I mean, we, we've seen him do some very, very special things here on the European Cricket Network, and I, I, I'll hope that that was just a blip in form for him, that previous over. One's popped up in the air, is certainly going to beat the fielder, takes a couple of bounces, and it trickles over the boundary rope, so they continue pummeling the Nicosia fighters here. Mark Hoare, this is a terrific shot, as uh, these two are now nearing a 50 partnership. A very nice stroke play, of course, a very intelligent stroke play as well. And, you know, you just wonder, why are the fighters just keeping the one fielder outside the ring? Especially when they're being uh, smashed all over the place. But it seems Captain Anwar Hussein is keen to continue this way. And he just uh, pokes and dabs at that one, so hell, but... Strays onto those pads over here, doesn't he, Hussein? And that one is uh, just played off the pads by Sohail. It's going to go away for four, so it's looking really, really difficult here for the Nicosia fighters. This one is just tucked away. And they brought up the 50 partnership in very, very short time. Just 20 deliveries to get there. This is looking very, very miserable now. And... Mark Hoare, they'll be looking at those big scores, 150 plus, 160, 170. They're really going to be aiming for something along that. And it's a, it's a rare dot ball to end the over. And it's another good over, though, for Mark Hoare. 14 runs off it. As a, it's a huge dilemma here, really, for the skipper. Anwar Hussein, he tried to come in and uh, stop the bleeding, but he did go for 14 runs himself as uh, this power play has been an extremely productive one for Mark Hoare, 52 runs off it. Of course, some of you might remember Anwar Hossein. You've probably seen him in previous ECSs playing for the uh, Nicosia Tigers. You must be wondering, well, has he transferred? Well, remember, both of these are uh, Bangladeshi expat teams uh, based in Nicosia, both the Tigers and the Fighters. So it's, uh, it's not uncommon to see players uh, either uh, moving teams or... Uh, Playing for either one. I mean, we even saw Al Tasman 
play once with the Nicosia Tigers in the inaugural ECS here in Cyprus back in uh, 2020. Of course, his uh, main team is the Fighters. And we see the captain going back to Ahmed. And yeah, after that forgettable, he had a forgettable first over, so let's see if he can improve things this time around. And are the Nicosia Fighters going to persist with the strategy of having, not having all their fielders inside the ring, but again, they have five fielders inside the circle over here as well, so they're really not taking advantage of the opportunity to put enough protection on the boundary, but I mean, this delay, which you're seeing right now, this is all because they're taking an age to uh, sort out their fielding. And just take a look at that clock. I mean, we've run out of 19 minutes. We're only three overs into the game, and this is some poor planning by the fighters. And now that they send third man back, they call him back in again. I mean, they're halfway through this clock. And they've only bowled three overs, so this is a very lackluster stuff by the Nicosia fighters. I think it's a disappointing way to get out of the gates. You know, you'd have hoped they'd come in with a plan, with some real intensity, but that's not happening. Now they've decided to send fine leg back. And it's a dot ball, a rare one, so far this over. is uh, to head well straight towards Al Tasman and that's going to be a single. Of course, uh, I mean, granted it's been a rather rough start for the Nicosia fighters. One positive we do have to give them is they've got some of the nicest looking jerseys. I mean, these jerseys do remind me a lot of the MDOX jersey, don't they? I mean, let's see what the chat has to say about that, but uh, both those teams are rocking very similar and good looking jerseys. He's played away. It's going to take a bounce, and that is a good bit of fielding by Parvez Mia. Very, very good work by Mia out there. That was tough to take. The ball was hit hard at him, and it took a nasty bounce, but he did well to get behind him. And we can now see that uh, Ahmed just uh, improving a little bit this over. Of course, uh, his nickname, Joni. That's the one on the back of his shirt. Much, much better ball, and it's a good bit of fielding by Al Tasman as well. And that's a good throw at the stumps. And that's the thing with Al Tasman. I mean, he'll make an impact regardless. It'll either be with his fielding or his batting if it's not working with the ball in hand. But this is a better over by uh, Sohil Ahmed so far. Just the three runs off it so far. And after going for 23 in the first, and Bowling a ridiculous amount of deliveries because of all the extras. It's uh, good to see this comeback from him, and this is more of uh, what he's like. Oh, that's a nice delivery, but uh, it's uh, the impact is probably just outside the off stump. But good bowling by Ahmed. I really like this. He's uh, starting to show some of his quality, as you can see. The impact was uh, just outside the off stump, but I like this by Ahmed. You know, he's somebody who can move the ball well, getting it to just shape back in on that occasion. Let's see, how's he going to close out this over? I mean, can he get a wicket? Can he break this good opening partnership? Oh, and he, that's an inside edge, extremely unlucky. I mean, he cre almost creates a chance over there, and it's a good bit of fielding out in the deep as well to prevent that from going for a four. So a nice fight back in that over by the Nicosia Fighters, just five runs off it. And they desperately needed a quiet over. But uh, I'd really be staring at that clock if I was them. I mean, it's uh, just ticking to that 17 and a half mark. Now as we of course take a look at the run rate. Great start for the Mark Horse side, looking to bounce back after that defeat to the Sri Lankan Lions. And they're going straight to Old Tasman, so the skipper of course uh, showing faith in his star man and he's of course Probably trying to expect Al Tasman. Look, I know you had a rough over, but you're the guy who can get me wickets. And I want you to go out there, break this 
this very impressive opening partnership and how does this draw us back into the game? And uh, yes, indeed, this time around they do have just the four fielders inside the circle. Or, or not, I mean, I'm, this is very odd by the fighters. And oh my word, it's been hit away to find leg. I mean, that's uh, not the sort of delivery you normally expect from Altazar. I mean, you can see what he's trying to do. He's just trying to cramp the batsman for room, but it's uh, played away to find leg. But I'd like to see Altazar go back over the wicket. I mean, we've seen him. He's so much better when he bowls over the wicket. And uh, you can just see the captain, Anwar Hussain. He has a word with him and says, look, you're a quality bowler. Stick to what's worked for you throughout your career. And yeah, it's going to be the change of angle for him here. So I think Anwar Hussain probably told him the same thing that I just mentioned. He probably told him, go back over the wicket. But it's going to be a fairly similar outcome as Al Tasman goes back to the bouncer and he hits it away for a boundary. Gone underneath that one very well. And it took a bounce just before the boundary rope, which is what prevents it from going for a six. But it's a, a little bit disappointing by Al Tasman. You'd, let's see if he can just go back to bowling on a good length, just around that channel. We know how well he can bowl. And he just tries to aim for the stumps. I mean... He gets one to just go across. He can draw an edge. And that's how he really became a, a good cricketer, was uh, just using the short ball and the Yorker as occasional weapons, not getting obsessed with the bouncer. And you can see he tries the uh, wider Yorker. And it's just a single because it's uh, actually him bowling to his field on that occasion because he's got plenty of protection on that side. So... That's much better for Maltas. I mean, you like to see him bowl to his field, but they've now sent a fielder back at fine legs, so they're slightly chasing the ball all over the place here, the Nicosia fighters. This one's uh, just not in the way, and it's going to be a single. Played away. This is a just going to fall short in front of the fielder and fine leg. And a good response here by Al Tasman after uh, getting hit for a couple of boundaries. And uh, this one is just uh, coming down the ground and it's going to be cut off. Not long off and it's a single to end the over. So after getting hit for a couple of boundaries to start off, Al Tasman makes this a 12 run over. So it's a good recovery as uh, they've done a, bit, a slightly better job here these last couple of overs. The Nicosia fighters, uh, just 17 runs off these last two overs. But Markor still going along very, very well at uh, 69 for no loss during halfway through the innings. And we might see some spin introduced into the attack now. So it's uh, going to be Kamran Ahmed. I don't think this is too bad an idea right now. And we just try to, they've managed to slow down the run rate somewhat. And now with uh, the power play over, some extra fielders allowed outside the ring. Let's uh, see if they can get this uh, run rate under control and continue to get it to dip. This is a... Played off the pads to start off, so it's a single off the first ball of the over. Yeah. 
And the umpire just asking Kamran Ahmed to wait as uh, just resolve a couple of issues. And of course, I think this would be a good time to maybe uh, just talk briefly about the history of, your, of Cypriot cricket. I know there have been a lot of questions about it. I mean, many of our viewers are aware that, of course, Cyprus is a Commonwealth country. And as a Commonwealth country with uh, such good weather year-round, I mean, 300 days of sunshine, one would think that cricket would be a popular sport here as, uh, well, the umpire initially signals it's a no ball, then changes his decision and rever reverses his decision. So very, very confusing stuff going on there. And we'll, we'll certainly keep you updated with anything that happens. This one's played away. And that's uh, down to the other Kamran on this team. And it's going to be a single. That's it, Kamrul. Down the wicket there, so hail. And a little bit of footwork to prevent that from being uh, any extra runs out in the deep. But yeah, certainly going back to the point, of course, uh, dur during the initial stages, um, during the colonial era in Cyprus, cricket was largely just uh, restricted to the British bases here. It was mostly just played at Aria Fakra Theory. There's uh, still a cricket ground there as this over continues. Goes for the scoop shot, and that is a delightful stroke. And it's the second time today we've seen that executed beautifully by a batter. We saw a brilliant, brilliant scoop shot by Chamal Sadun earlier. And, well, I think Zishan was looking at that and saying, hey, I can hit it just as well as you can. That is a brilliant scoop shot. And with fine leg inside the ring, great bit of premeditation. And he gets it over. So a terrific shot here. As, boy, this opening partnership has been delightful to watch. This time he goes for a, a more orthodox slog, and this one is hit out towards long on. It's a four, so back-to-back -back boundaries here. As uh, this Ahmed over, which uh, started off quite well, is uh, slowly turning into an expensive one. Of course, started it off with just three singles and back-to-back uh, -back boundaries since then. So let's see if this uh, if this over is going to end up being a very expensive one for the fighters. Kurtz with the scoop shot again, and oh, he doesn't quite execute it this time, but you have to give him points for the attempt. That was a delightful attempt, but he finds the fielder this time around, and uh, full credit to Ahmed. He provided some great entertainment as he makes a brilliant 43, falls short of his half century, but he's done a fantastic job for his side. That was a good catch out there by Kamrul, and you can just see he went for the scoop again, but uh, couldn't quite field the fine leg fielder inside the ring. As, uh, well, the Nicosia Fighters picked their first wicket up of this tournament. It's probably come a little bit too late. But, uh, you know, we've seen stranger things in the past. Maybe they can just uh, find a way to slow down Mark Hoare. I mean, we saw Mark Hoare slow down at the later stage of their innings against the Sri Lankan Lions as well. And uh, we're just waiting for the new batsman to come in. I can certainly continue this tale about uh, Cypriot cricket. And initially it was only played. Back in the 1940s in Aria Fakra Theory, Episcopi Garrison, Zekelia, which is uh, close to the city of Larnaca. Unfortunately, we don't have any sites from Larnaca, one of the more famous cities. And of course, there is a radar base up on the mountains here in Cyprus. As you just take a look at the scorecard, great opening stand of 80 runs between uh, Zishan Ahmed and Amir Sohail. And we're going to see Islam, Monirul Islam, going for the first time in this tournament. Was played up to Parvez Mia. It's going to take one bounce. And it's, it's a good bit of fielding. Mia has been a very busy fielder. But he's done a terrific job so far. Of course, Monir al Islam has yeah, taken seven wickets in his ECS career. He has an average economy rate of just under 11 and a half. Going to need him just to improve a little bit on that economy rate here in the uh, death overs of the innings. Big appeal there and uh, good start to the over so far by Islam. Just the one run of the first two dot balls. Sir, 
So a single and a dot to start off this over. This one's played away. Going to Ahmed, it's a little bit of a chase and I have to say, he was a little slow out of the blocks and that's exactly what Islam is saying to him. I think he reacted a bit too slow and uh, that's why it's gone away for a four. I think he didn't start sprinting early enough. He didn't pick the ball, didn't quite know where it was going and I think if he'd seen it a bit earlier, might have been able to cut that one off. So you have to feel for Islam as uh, this one's gone away for four. Oh, and that's a, once again, attempting that uh, dipping Yorker. We've seen a number of sides use it. It's a knuckleball. Of course, we've seen it largely uh, come into uh, cricket from uh, its, uh, its first use in baseball. But let's take a look at that. Uh, batsman would have probably been safe. I know, that's a terrible full toss. And uh, is this one going to race away for four? Oh, it certainly will because of that misfield. I mean, it wasn't very cleanly struck, was it? But then Mamum Howlader, well, Howlader has made a howler. And, uh, it's just gone right underneath him. He doesn't even get down. And it's just slipped underneath his hand. So it's uh, very disappointing here for Munir Islam. I mean, to be fair to him, the ball wasn't that good, but could have been, could have been bailed out by some better fielding. As uh, you can just tell, that's the pressure of going for a couple of boundaries being felt. As we see the another minimo here for the Nicosia fighters, their issues with extras continue. That is a, a poor delivery. It's at the point where, you know, it's almost being tested whether it be a wide for a left-hander as well. And that's now 25 runs of extras already given up by the Nicosia fighters. He tried to take some pace off the ball, but he hits it straight to Al Tasman. And uh, that will be the end of Sohail's innings. Of course, he did plenty of damage during his stay there. Made 26 of 16. And you just have a look there. The wicketkeeper is uh, having a word with uh, Molly Rolislav. He's telling him, look, calm down, calm down. Pat gave him a little pat on the head afterwards as well. I don't know if you can have a look at that. And a good catch there by Altaz. Been very, very well taken. And you can just see right there He's talking to him about, about some of those, probably some of those uh, wider full tosses. And of course, couldn't quite catch that at the end, but he did give him a nice pat on the head. And as a couple of wickets fall for Markor, but they're really, really going extremely well here. 95 for two. And uh, the seven over mark, I think they'll be targeting somewhere around that 140 to, one, to 145 range. I mean, they certainly have the hitters to do it. I mean, no Waka Sakhtar, of course, this match, which is a bit of a disappointment for them, but they still have the likes of Nadim Kamar to come, and of course, these two, Zishan Ali and Abu Bakr, they've uh, certainly demonstrated their ability to slog the ball as well. Uh, so this one's uh, just played down the long on, it's a single. Yeah, this is given buys by the umpire, so there was clearly no inside edge there. I mean, some of the Nicosia fighters, players, they, they thought they had missed an opportunity, but the umpire signals buys. Of course, the wicketkeeper, you can see, he's just standing a little wider. All the Chaudhry is expecting a sort of wider line here by the skipper, Anwar Hossein. And it goes past him, so more extras continue to leak for the Nicosia fighters. One slogged away. It's going to be worked away towards mid wicket, and that's going to be another boundary. And uh, this is uh, going extremely well for Mark as Of course, they are benefiting off the extras, and then we can see Abu Bakr. He uh, just manages to connect on that, and it goes away for a four. So the captain, Anwar Hussein, he's had a very, very miserable time with the ball so far. 19 runs, the nine deliveries he's bowled. One's gone up in the air. 
And it, has it cleared the boundary rope? It certainly has. The fielders confirm, and that's a six. So they continue, continue to uh, pummel. Then they can see a fighters. We can just see how well Abu Bakr gets underneath that one. It's a big, big six. Enormous shot, and it's all smiles right now. If you're Mark Hora, must be glad to see the Nicosia Fighters after picking up a loss. And uh, while well, this is going to do their batsmen a world of good, so much confidence, and they'll be really backing themselves in the second innings to uh, defend this total. This one's gone up in the air, is heading towards the commentary box, but Parvez Mia tries to get underneath it. And uh, boy, he. Uh, We've seen him do some really good feeling so far, but again, you can just see the Nicosia fighters. They're a deflated side, and this one, unfortunately, goes past Mia. He slightly misjudged it. He could, should have gone back all the way, but, well, it's just symptomatic of what this uh, Nicosia fighters innings has been so far. It's uh, very, very challenging for them. They've struggled to really get anything going. Uh, they're going to have to find a way to salvage something in these next 13 deliveries. One struck neatly, and it goes to Altazman, and boy, he's done a sensational job. It's a real shame we haven't caught that because he's uh, currently positioned behind the Olive Groves, and there was a chance for a run out as well. But boy, if you could just take a moment to describe what Altazman just did. The ball just spat up at him. Took a nasty bounce. Really don't know if we have caught this, and... Well, it just bounces up. It almost comes up to chin height, and he just bats it back, puts in a great throw. And you've got to say, Anwar Hossein, well, just in terms of the fundamentals of cricket, why is he just ball watching and not behind the stumps? I mean, that's just that's just a basic cricket fundamental. As soon as you bowl the ball, you should get behind the stumps. And, you know, if you see your captain getting the fundamentals wrong, it really discourages the rest of the side as uh, Mark Hoare are 116 for two at the eight over Mark. And uh, that over by Hossein going for 21 runs. So a difficult day for the captain. Very difficult day for him. 25 runs of extras already. And I think we'll certainly see a penalty runs awarded because I, I don't see how they're going to bowl these uh, six deliveries in 90 seconds. So I think you might as well already add those uh, five runs to the extra. So this is going to be up to at least 30 by the end of this innings. Well, they're taking their time as well, so I think they're just resigned to the fact that they're definitely going to give up penalty runs as uh, this one is uh, played away by Zishan Ali towards third man, and really it's just double teapots all over the field. Didn't quite know where that was going, Ali, did he? He got a thickish outside edge, but well, when a team's on top there, uh, everything just seems to go their way, doesn't it, in cricket? As Markor bring up the 120 with uh, 11 balls still to go. This one's played away. I think it's just landed in front of the boundary rope. And that's going to be a six. So they continue battering this uh, Nicosia fighter side. But the interesting thing is, though, that they've managed to get to this run rate of 15 by just hitting two sixes. So it's mostly just been fours. And he's absolutely drilled at Abdullah Al Tasman. He's a uh, that's a very powerful throw back, but it's almost a bit too hot for the keeper. And <laughs> you really have to wonder, I think this keeper is just uh, not capable of handling Al Tasman's throws. And you can see he's very frustrated. And I'm seeing a lot of shouting right now in this uh, Nicosia fighters field. Uh, this is not a good sign. He's gone up in the air. This is not going to be a catching opportunity. Surely Al Tasman puts out a great effort, but it's cleared him. As Bukhar continues to absolutely blast it. Take a look at this gets underneath that one it's over pitched and you can see Kamran he was just hopping a little bit hoping that it might get to Al Tasman but not even he can feel that and then it's one down the leg side so uh, there's the 26th runoff extras and as you can see the timers run out I expect five so right at the end of this over we better have the camera focused on the umpire as uh, this one goes to Parvez Mia it's going to be a single 18 runs off the over so far. Still a still a ball to go. And this is a, a dot ball 
Twenty over, a rare dot ball actually. The first dot ball we've seen since uh, the second ball of the seventh over. So uh, Marcourt are really, really struggling. But I think right now all eyes on the umpire. I think we could have five penalty runs here. And uh, this Marcourt total is just about to move up to 140. As we take a look at the uh, bowling card, I mean, yeah, not not much to cheer there if you're a Marcourt fan. It's a uh, been extremely, extremely miserable. And as you can see from the extras, yep, there's the umpire signals. Five penalty runs, so 31 runs of extras already. And there's there's going to be a, this is a, a, a rather forgettable performance for the Nicosia fighters. Not the way you want to start a tournament. I mean, you want to show some intensity, some real fighting spirit, but we just haven't seen that. And this one's a struck away by Bakar for another four. And boy, Bakar Siddiqui. I mean, he is having a terrific time. 27 of 8, three fours, two sixes. He's seeing it like a football today. I mean, we saw him smashing it really nicely against the Sri Lankan Lions as well. Hit a big six in that final over. Of course, it was a bit too late for him to change the outcome of that match by that stage. But he's got a chance to bat a little earlier here, and he's taking full advantage of it. Oh, that's an awful full toss, but it might just be a catch. And boy, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes in cricket and of course uh, Al Tasman uh, he does uh, take that one it was a no ball and that was uh, signaled by the umpire so uh, Bakar will survive of course uh, yeah this one was a signal for height the square leg umpire gives it a no ball this is going to be a free hit so even when they do get a wicket well uh, it doesn't count because it's a no ball this one's struck away, and this is going to go for four. There isn't much the fielder can do about that. It's a stellar effort, but it uh, nestles just to the right of our commentary box, meets it on the half volley, and it's very, very well struck by Zishan Ali. And uh, these extras just continue to mount, of course. Uh, that one there by Monirol Islam, and uh, this over already. We've seen uh, 10 runs off it so far, just the two legal deliveries. And Markor have already achieved the highest score we've seen so far in this ECS tournament. They've beaten uh, Napa's previous best. Of course, we have noticed that the one big change uh, so far at the start of this group is that Group B has been a lot higher scoring than Group A. I mean, Group A we saw a lot of low scoring matches, many games with about 80 to 100 runs scored. But so far today, it's just been uh, the run scoring has been a lot, lot freer. This one's gone up in the air, and this is going towards the camera tower. That is an enormous slog by Bakar. And they just continue to pound the Nicosia fighters while they're down. And it's that man there. Boy, look at that grin on his face. I mean, why wouldn't you grin that wide when you're having such a good time? Bakar Siddiqui going at a strike rate of 340. This is absolutely ridiculous, isn't it, if you think about it? And after seeing a previous highest score of 146 in Group A, I think we're going to cross the 160 mark here. This one's gone by Bakar. It's gone high up in the air. And oh, would Anwar Hussein have had a catching chance if he was all the way back on the rope? We can just see. Look at this. Takes a few steps forward. And oh, goodness me, the skipper, he really needs to be all the way back, doesn't he? And he just apologizes to the bowler, but... Oh my goodness, he's just sending himself his side up. An absolute mammoth total to try to chase down. 163 runs for Mark Hoar, and still one ball to go. And it's a big swing and a miss, so it's a rare dot ball at this point. But of course, still a wide grin if you take a look at uh, Abu Bakr Siddiqui as he uh, trudges off the field. And a very, very good effort for Mark Hoare. Of course, we saw them lose that first match against the Sri Lankan Lions this morning. It was a rather tough defeat for them in a, what was a hotly contested match, but they've come out of this one and they have absolutely blasted the Nicosia fighters who will be utterly disappointed with their effort. They could have done so much better because we know they're capable of more as we take a look at some of these highlights. Of course, really the tone for this match was set by this Sohail Ahmed over. You know, usually Ahmed, you know, we've seen him. He, Tents the ball pretty well. We saw his second over was pretty good one, just five runs off it. But this first over was an absolute disaster. It went for 23 runs, 
He bowled plenty of extras and it just seemed to infect the entire side. I mean, Abdullah al Tasman wasn't quite himself either. Bowling uh, extremely waywardly. I mean, he bowled plenty of extras. Giving up two wides for Saurav Ahmed. Seven no balls and wides from him. And of course, the batsmen for the Mark IV were more than capable of capitalizing. I mean, they hit some gorgeous strokes. Take nothing away from them. Zishan Ahmed at the top of the order with 43 of 25. And then that shot, that beautiful scoop. That was so good. Of course, you just see it lands uh, to the uh, of that goalpost. And then, of course, Zishan would try that again. This time, he to provide a little dolly to Kamrul Mahmood. And then this was a nice boundary struck away. We uh, saw a bit of difficult fielding as well by the Nicosia fighters. They just weren't on it. Alvi Chowdhury had a very difficult time with the gloves as well. I mean, you take a look at this. Five runs off buys. Not quite what a keeper wants to see. We saw him struggle to uh, handle a few throws for runouts as well. Al Tasman would take that catch, but Amir Sohail had already done the damage by that stage. But uh, the, these two bats would have come in. Zishan Ali and Abu Bakr Siddiqui. And well, they were just seeing it like a football. They were slogging it all over the place. I mean, this was a chance to catch for Parvez Mia. He let that one go. Terrific fielding effort there by Abdullah Al Tasman. But in all honesty, it didn't make too much of a difference. Of course, uh, the Nicosia fighters, all those extras they bowled, the enormous length of time they took to uh, set their field meant that uh, they would give up those penalty runs. Look at that wide grid over there by Abu Bakr Siddiqui. A little bit foolish there by Noir Hussein. He should have been all the way back on the boundary rope. As in the end, Markor set an absolutely mammoth total of 163. Well, the Nicosia fighters are going to have a very difficult chase on their hand as we'll be back in just about 10 minutes time as the Nicosia fighters, well, they try to do the impossible and chase down 164.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to Ipsonas. The uh, Nicosia Fighters have got a mammoth task at hand over here. They've got to chase down this uh, behemoth of a total by Mark Hoare. Mark Hoare scored 163 runs in the first innings. Uh, highest total we've seen so far in this first week here in Cyprus. Of course, it's been a much higher scoring day now that we've commenced action in Group B. These teams to be, uh, these teams really seem to be uh, full of many more talented batsmen. And this one is just cut away. And it's uh, well fielded out in the deep by Abu Bakar Siddiqui. And the fighters start off with a single. going to see Al Tasman setting up his guard. So they're going to need to go at a quite a terrific rate here, the Nicosia fighters. It's just about, they need just about three or four boundaries and over to uh, keep themselves in the game. Al Tasman has a has a look at the field setting and they're going to have to pick out certain bowlers in this mark or attack the target. This one's uh, just stabbed away by Al Tasman and it's a dot ball. Very wide delivery, so it's uh, we saw some of the issues the Nicosia fighters had with extras in the first match, and uh, well, here's uh, Marco with some of their own. This one is a very, very wide one to see. Not quite able to control it there, Sohail. And of course, in the first over for the fighters, I mean, Sohail Ahmed had a really, really difficult time trying to control the ball. Let's see if uh, he rebounds here. This one just played off the pads very nicely by Al Tasman. It's a little bit of a chase here, and it's a good chase. And it's a couple of runs for the Nicosia fighters, and uh, you can see their uh, dugout now. It's been a lot more vocal. They're uh, cheering every single run. I think they must have had a big team talk after what was a rather disappointing performance in the field. It's a big swing and a miss. And the umpire's given it a no ball. Square like umpire signaled a no ball. I wonder if this is a... Oh, he's pointing at one of the fielders, so... Well, uh, look, at the, look at the look on Sohel's face. He is really disappointed, so... Looks like the fielder at deep backward square has just... just stepped outside the circle before that ball was delivered, so going to be a free hit here and boy the Nicosia fighters they need every single bonus they can get while well, Tasman better make Markor pay it's a little change in the field as well long off is brought back in and they send a very deep fine third man out goes to the big slog all Tasman is this going to beat the fielder not quiet it's a uh, Oh, it's just stopped right in front of the boundary rope. I had a perfect view of that. And Al Tasman not quite able to make them pay. It's uh, just a couple of runs. He can be a little bit disappointed. He should have really cashed in and tried to hit a boundary there. Up it goes by Al Tasman. And is this going to take a bounce before the boundary rope? It will. And it's going to go for four, so uh, a nice over so far for the Nicosia fighters. Just a few a few errors, uh, a little bit of uh, lack of concentration by Marco Early. They have to be careful. I know they've had a great first innings. They set a massive target, but 
they need to make sure they aren't too complacent against this Nicosia fighter side. And not only that, it's not only important that they win this game, but they need to try to win this game by a big margin because as we saw in the, fir in the first group, Net run rate plays a big role in determining who goes through. And this one's uh, struck away, and it's uh, going to need to be fielded well by Umar Farouk, who does a stellar job. Of course, we saw Farouk out at the uh, straight boundary. Run a four, so uh, the over comes to an end, and it's a very healthy one for the Nicosia Fighters. They managed to get 16 runs off, and in the force, it is worth reminding you that we are 130 matches since the Golden Ball. Of course, we had a game where uh, we saw the Sri Lankan Lions win by just one run, so we have been agonizingly close to it. And as we take a look at some of these games that have ended in a golden ball. Haven't had a golden ball here on the European Cricket Network since the 21st of March, but hopefully we are coming closer and closer to getting one. A very good afternoon to you too, John Gray. Great to have you joining us. And it's going to be Umar Farouk here. Farouk bowled uh, very well in that first match. Uh, was a little bit unlucky in the second over. A uh, few things went against him, but I think he will be uh, very pleased with that performance against the Sri Lankan Lions. I think he was uh, among the pick of the bowlers for Markor. Cash figures of uh, one for 20. A little bit unlucky to even give up uh, 20 runs. Yeah, that's a big swing and a miss by Al Tasman. So the dot ball to start off with Umar Farouk. And I think uh, you really saw Farouk in that first match. He was so good at just bowling at a good length, having the ball in the channel, making it difficult to play. And uh, let's see if he continues with the same level of accuracy. Tries to cramp the batsman for room and uh, it's uh, gone straight to the fielder. Dot ball. This one's played away. It's on his pads. He's done a terrific job here as an eight Al Tasman and uh, that's a rare poor delivery by Farouk, he just smashes this over the fielder, inside fine leg. And it looks like it's gone the distance, so it's a six for Abdullah Al-Tazmin. This one's uh, stroked away really well. But uh, no run over here, it just it's hit straight to the fielder. So Al Tasman, it's, it's smart cricket. I mean, there's no protection out at that boundary. So he's targeting that region, but he just finds the fielder here. And again, a big heave by Al Tasman. So Farouk, after, after bowling one poor delivery, he's rebounded really well this over given back-to-back dot balls. And I think that really is a feature of Omar Farouk's game. You're not going to get too many too many wrong. He's uh, just kept it very tight throughout his career. Nice one there. Goes for Lex down Yorker, and it's another dot ball. So three consecutive dot balls and the over. That's really good by Omar Farouk. And as the Nicosia fighters are 22 for no loss at the end of the second over. We'll take a look at the standings for Group B. So far today, we've had a couple of games. The Sri Lankan Lions have won both of them, especially the second match. was a very tight win against the Nicosia Black Caps. The Lions winning that, winning that one by just a single run. And, uh, well, some other very good teams here in this group. I mean, really looking forward to seeing the Limassol Zalmi. They, uh, they really impressed last time uh, during that uh, ECS series in November 2021. And, of course, the Cyprus Muflons who have... Uh, been to three straight finals. Nice 
Coming down the left side. And uh, couldn't go all the way of that one, Mahmoud. Oh, they're going to get a run for a leg by. Yeah, that was certainly going very wide. We've often seen batsmen here in Cyprus get in the way of balls unnecessarily. But Tasman, you can see he's trying to hit that straight boundary. Uh, we saw how much Marquardt targeted that short straight boundary, as well as the Black Caps in their uh, earlier loss to the Sri Lankan Lions. So just doesn't quite get a hold of that one, Abdullah Al-Tasman. Up in the air, is this a catching chance? Just reaches a hand out there, Zishan Ali, but it gets past him, so uh, he's quietly knocking away some runs here than they can see of fighters, but he did see a few big ones from them. They've got to capitalize on this power play. Look to, got to try to end this power play with at least consecutive boundaries. That's the bare minimum they need. Al Tasman gets hold of that one, and of course there, is the first of two boundaries they'll really need to capitalize on this power play. And uh, very well struck, of course. There's no fielder out at long on, so it takes a hop, and it goes for a four, so. I see Tigers at 29 for no loss now. Current run rate at uh, just under 10. Maybe for that full wide one. And there's a big, big appeal here by Markor. But the umpire signals a wide, so this is an interesting call. Oh yeah, yep, it's caught the line, so it's that's a good decision there by the umpire. And I don't think there's any bad on that one. And this one's cleaned Al Tasman up. That is a humongous wicket and a devastating blow to the Nicosia fighters right at the end. This is enormous. I mean, Abdullah Al Tasman is really the talisman for the side. He's their top run getter. Everything tends to go through him for the Nicosia fighters. I mean, we saw it earlier this year in previous CCSs. Al Tasman made 320 runs in his 12 innings, average strike rate of just under 240, and uh, with him gone. Well, they're really going to struggle here, aren't they, the Nicosia fighters? Take a look at this big swing by Al Tasman. And, uh, I mean, he really had no choice but to try to attack with uh, this massive total that uh, Mark Horov posted on the board. But you feel with Al Tasman gone that where are they going to find the runs from? You know, I mean, this Nicosia fighter side built uh, a lot like Everest when it comes to their batting. It's, uh, it's really down to a couple of star players to deliver for them. I mean, we saw with Everest earlier this week how you know when Jeevan Lumsdale wouldn't make runs they just they just couldn't get to anything respectable and I feel it's gonna be a similar issue with the Nicosia fighters so that is a that is potentially a game changing match moment or potentially even a game sealing moment for Mark Hor and the Nicosia fighters thirty for one at the end of the third over. Goes up, and this is a catching opportunity. Is this going to be taken? It's very comfortably taken. That is a solid catch. As uh, the wicket's now tumbling for the Nicosia fighters after the departure of Abdullah Al Tasman. They have to go at it, they have to throw the kitchen sink at everything. And uh, this is a solid, solid catch. As uh, Mark Hor, of course, looking to rebound after that loss earlier to the Sri Lankan Lions. But you know, Nicosia fighters, even if they're going to lose, they have to try to get as close to this target as possible because. At some point, they have to think, look, you know, we can't have such a devastating defeat that's going to absolutely destroy our net run rate. We've already seen so many times during these ECS tournaments, it often comes down to net run rate to separate two different teams. And that might well be the case in this group, too. So you can see if fighters have to try to close this gap and at least get to a respectable total as a team. And of course, just to tell you the two batsmen out there are, it's Anwar Hussein at the non-striker's end and 
New batsman is Parvez Mia. This is pitched on a good length and has played quite well, so it's a single, a quick one run here. As Parvez Mia will get off the mark. Score is currently 31 for two at the 3.1 over mark. Apologies for some of the issues with the graphics and uh, your inability to see the score. 31 for two at the 3.1 over mark by my calculations. Go shorter. Uh, this is just played away by the skipper, Anwar Hossein. down the leg side, so that's wide there for uh, Hamza Rahman. Hamza Rahman had a very respectable figures in the previous match against uh, the Sri Lankan Lions, giving up just 16 runs in the two overs he bowled. He was the most economic bowler for Mark Horan, that 22-run uh, defeat to the Lions, and oh goodness me, all eyes on the square leg umpire. What's he going to give over here? was a terrible, terrible delivery. Ooh, that one is, uh, yep, it's been signaled a no ball in the end after having a look at it. As uh, the square leg umpire's initial decision was it was legal, but of course uh, the replays confirmed to the umpires that this is a no ball. So this is going to be a free hit and a chance for some runs for the Nicosia fighters who desperately need them. And it's, oh, it's a little bit of a mix-up. Remember, you can still get run out on a free hit. So the Nicosia fighters, well, it's a dot ball on this free hit. And that's a very indecisive bit of running. I mean, you've got to say the captain isn't leading by example here. He's got to be a lot clearer with his calling, a lot more decisive. You saw him make a few errors in the field as well. It's just been a rough day so far for everyone involved with the Nicosia fighters from the captain to the bowlers and some of the fielding was uh, a little bit disappointing as well. So I think the fighters really from here, the only way to go is up. And the umpire just asking the bowler to go back. I think there's just a few things being uh, sorted out. One's played away. And it's uh, going to be a single. So apologies for some of the issues with the graphics. Of course, uh, we'll try to keep you updated with uh, what the score is. As we are currently 3.5 overs in. One ball left in the fourth over. This is very, very wide down the left side. That is a poor delivery. And uh, having a difficult time now, Hamza Rahman. I mean, just needs to keep his focus, doesn't he? I mean, his side has a lot of runs to play with. Doesn't need to overcomplicate things over there. Well, I don't know if he was just trying to aim for that leg stump. Yorker and got it completely, completely wrong. But uh, they'll happily accept that minimo when they can see a fighter's. And this one is just uh, popped up in the air, and it's uh, oh, they're looking for a run of overthrows. And uh, well, Anwar Hussein was a little slow to react to that, but you have to say his partner Parvez Mia was uh, very aware, and he was uh, with a good, loud call. He uh, managed just to encourage Anwar Hussein to come across. So a couple of runs to end the over. 
as the uh, Nicosia Fighters are 42 for 2 at the end of four overs. Stow the wicket and looks to hit that one and it's been given away by the umpire. So score now moves on to 43 for two. As we're still at the four over mark, yet to get a legal delivery this over. And that's uh, just left alone again. Well, just to confirm to you, Baudrillard and Yadav, of course, they are now 44 for two at the four over mark. I'm uh, having to keep the score manually here, doing it old school with a piece of pen and paper. Okay, I'm just a little bit flat at the moment. Neither one of the, neither one of these sides, uh, certainly the fighter is not quite able to assert their authority in this match. They've just been outplayed throughout the uh, innings as a uh, score now 45 for two. At uh, 4.1 overs so far. That's another wide, and this is going to be another minimo. So they're just losing their focus here a little bit, aren't they, Mark? Or I mean, at least in their eyes, they'll feel like uh, they have this game under control, but. They, need to, they still need to concentrate because getting this win by as big a margin as possible would uh, really help their net run rate and put them in a very good position against some of their contenders. Again, we talk about this group being the group of death and this is where you really need to take advantage of opportunities like this to capitalize, to be ruthless, to maximize your net run rate because they could well be in a very tight race to get that final spot to make it to the quarterfinals. One's played away, so uh, oh, that's a good sharp throw, and uh, let's hope we see better backing up here. We certainly do. So it'll just be the one run, and that puts the score at 51 for two at the 4.2 over mark. 51 for two at 4.2 overs for those of you watching at home. Again, apologies. We're going to be sort out those graphics ASAP and have the score back up for you. Goes on the left side here, and that puts the score at 52 for two. Completely agree. At this rate, extras will probably end up as the top scorer. I mean, we saw all the issues with the extras. Fighters had giving up 32 of them. That's another extra, and uh, the keeper just about gets some glove onto it, and that's the only thing preventing it from uh, going all the way to the boundary rope. No, oh, this is a much, much better ball. And that's what one hopes to see from him. And we saw how well he bowled against the Sri Lankan Lions and all these extras he's given up at the start of the over are a uh, little bit disappointing. Mohamed Tajimal would like to see him bowl better and it's good to have the score back up as this one's gone up in the air. And oh, a little bit of a juggle and he gets it in the end. <laughs> Goodness me. Well, for a minute you just thought he had some butterfingers and I think he's hit himself on the side of the face trying to take that catch. And oh, I hope he's okay. I really do. And of course, we'll, we'll check on him. He seems to be fine. Uh, I hope we get some uh, medical personnel to just uh, have a look at him. He's going to get a little rub on his head by some of his teammates. That was a very, very poor delivery. A rankful toss. Uh, goodness me, that's a, quite a juggling act here. Just to uh, get everyone back on their toes. And uh, well, 
<laughs> gets a nice, well-deserved pat on his head. That was a, a good catch in the deep by Abu Bakr Siddiqui. We saw how well and how cleanly he was striking it earlier in the innings, and that puts the Nicosia fighters at 55 for three. We're going to see Nadim. This will be Nadim come up. This is the Monroe Islam coming in here. Beg your pardon for the Nicosia fighters. Trying to get you all up to date. That's a good delivery there. Fuller, wider. As a big swing and a miss there for Monroe Islam. Of course, it is uh, Easter Sunday here in Cyprus. Uh, a lot of fireworks throughout the night. Uh, it's Typical to usually have big bonfires and fireworks to uh, celebrate the resurrection of Christ as we see this delivery. It's a good leg stamp Yorker by Tajamal. It'll be a dot ball to end the over. The Casilla Fighters currently at 55 for three. And uh, it's, uh, it's common throughout Cyprus, of course, uh, the following day on Easter Sunday for people to greet each other with uh, greetings of Christos Anesti, which is, uh, of course, Greek for Christ has risen and We've certainly seen Markor rise up with a much better performance in the second match. They showed a lot of positive things in that first game, but uh, just couldn't quite close it out. They they fell, a, they fell away at uh, the key stages of the innings, which uh, cost them in that match against the Sri Lankan Lions. But now we're really seeing them absolutely dominate the Nicosia fighters, who you feel now are uh, really going to struggle to put together a uh, respectable score. But the captain, Anwar Hussein is still out there. Of course, uh, none of our ECS viewers might remember him as uh, a very handy middle-over batsman for the Nicosia Tigers. He's had a pretty rough day so far with both his fielding. He's got a lot of decisions wrong as well with his captaincy. D didn't bowl very well either. So here's a chance to make amends and just get some confidence back, of course. Keep in mind the fighters... Uh, They've still got another game today. They're right after this. They play the Black Caps, so it doesn't get much easier for them. And this one's uh, going down the leg side for a wide. And then, of course, they start off tomorrow morning uh, playing the uh, this Markor side as well at 10:30 uh, local time. Hussein and boy, that's a that's a gasp there by the, uh, the bowler. This is uh, Kamar coming into bowl for Markor. Oh, this should be a stumping opportunity. Let's take a look at this again. I think we'll have another look at this one on replay, but uh, that was a very very good ball by Kamar. He saw Anwar Hussein coming in. He just followed him. But uh, yep, the umpire says let's have a look at the uh, decision. So. Let's get a side-on angle here and have a look at this one. Up, uh, he's gone. And uh, I feel like uh, Anwar Hussein's stay is going to be a very short one. And it seems like Hussein has already begun to walk off. I think he knows he's been stumped. Isn't even waiting for the umpire's final decision. And uh, that will be the end of uh, Hussein's very, very brief stint at the crease as the fighters. Well, at this stage, I think they're resigned to the fact that this game is uh, slipping away from them. And it's a terrific ball by Muhammad Kamar. Gets that stumping. You can see uh, Hossein charges down the wicket. Completely misses the ball, of course. Kamar just following the batsman. And that's a very sharp bit of glove work by Nadim Kamar. A bit of Kamar to Kamar action. In comes Howlader. Howlader will just, uh, just uh, hit that one away for a single, and he's off the mark. So a couple of new batsmen out there for the Nicosia Fighters. They'll try to rebuild the innings, but well, that required now is above 24, so they pretty much need 
a boundary every single ball from here on out to win. And I, I don't think they can uh, really going to try to win this now. I think it's just a case of trying to get as close to the target as possible to uh, reduce the damage to your net run rate. We've got up in the air. Is this a catching opportunity? And uh, it's yeah, it's very well taken out of deep mid wicket. Uh, Islam just popping this one up. It's a simple catch, a nice little dolly out of the deep for Umar Farouk. We've seen how well he's bowled so far. Now he takes a good catch. So that'll bring an end to Monirul Islam's very brief stint. As now wickets are tumbling at a very regular interval for Nicosia fighters. It's a really case of uh, well, if you go, I'll follow you. Back to the dugout and a good catch there. Very well taken. Safe pair of hands. Umar Farouk, we've uh, seen him take catches a lot tougher than that. Now we see this required now. Go all the way up to 27 for the Nicosia fighters. So really hard to see how they're going to salvage this one. But I do know a lot of our viewers as we uh, were having a discussion uh, a little earlier about the history of Cy Cypriot cricket. But yeah, as we, as we discussed... Um, Cricket here in Cyprus was uh, not very popular during the colonial era because it was largely just restricted to the basis. So many of the, the local Cypriot community were, were never really acquainted with cricket. This is a swing and a miss. So really the game only first uh, began to grow in the uh, 1980s when the expat community started to flourish. Uh, a lot of this was because of Cypriots uh, returning back to Cyprus after the troubles here in 1974. This one's a full toss. It's just uh, not going to be punished. Of course, uh, a lot of Cypriots uh, went off in 1974 to live in Commonwealth countries such as the UK, Zimbabwe, South Africa. And uh, they really they really got a, a love of cricket during their time there. Of course, we got to include Australia. Of course, that one is a no ball for height, so it's going to be a free hit. So let's just see if the Nicosia fighters can uh, add a little something to their total. Of course, the umpire just asks uh, Muhammad Hamza to wait. We'll uh, continue the story after this uh, free hit. Hamza just giving a thumbs up to his captain. And uh, not quite able to take advantage of the free hit there, of course. So we're just going to take a look at the square leg umpire. And uh, doesn't. It's just signaled one for the over. It's a wider delivery again. A bit too wide for the liking of the umpire. Let's just take another look at this. Yeah, you can see well, it's a tight call, really, in all honesty. But at this stage, I don't think too much is going to help the Nicosia fighters. Of course, uh, good moment to give a shout out to the two umpires, Sujit Kumara and Sachita Thurunga. We're both doing a terrific job out there. And uh, just going back to our story, and uh, that's when the Cypriot uh, Cricket Association really came into being. It was in the 1980s when uh, uh, a lot of a lot of expats started to move to the country. Of course, this love of cricket in uh, Cyprus was uh, was boosted in the early 2000s. This is uh, this ball's completely missed, and uh, it was in 1999 that Cyprus first became a member of the ICC. And then, of course, after a lot of Cypriots coming back in the 1980s, in the 2000s, it would be a lot of uh, a lot of foreign workers from different parts of the world, such as uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and numerous other countries, and uh, they brought their love of cricket with them to Cyprus. And then we really had this uh, this nice mesh of you know, you know expats from all over the world bringing their love of cricket. Cypriots coming back to Cyprus from Commonwealth countries, and uh, really the game began to flourish during that period. I would say uh, it was a, it was a huge period in the history of Cypriot cricket, the 2000s, and then uh, in August 2006, of course, was a monumental occasion for Cyprus as the Cyprus will make its international debut, finishing as runners-up in Division 4 of the European Championship. Of course, uh, right after this, we have another heavyweight clash between the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions. The match uh, between these two sides earlier was uh, quite an exciting matchup. Of course, we saw the Black Caps just fall short by one run, a single run against the Sri Lankan Lions. So not much to separate these two sides. And that will be a very, very entertaining affair. Of course, a good day so far for Akila Kalugala. So no surprise, he's leading the way with 200 points. 
having taken four catches and made a brilliant 85. And then, of course, in 2007, the Cypriot uh, national team was uh, promoted to Division Three and finished seventh in that division. We see Kamar come into the attack. And this one's cleaned him up, hasn't it? That's a very good ball by Kamar. That'll be his uh, second wicket. As we're just seeing now, wickets are tumbling at a regular interval. We can just see that the Nicosia fighters' lower order, well, isn't quite up to scratch when it when it comes to batting. It's a big swipe across the line, and that uh, catches the stumps. And uh, and as exactly as we thought, I think this Nicosia fighter side is built very similar to Everest in the sense that they're they're reliant on a two or three key players really to score most of their runs, and if they're dismissed early, you really have this Nicosia fighter side on the ropes. As of course it's now already reached a stage where uh, it's uh, mathematically impossible for the Nicosia fighters to win this match if the Mark Ward just balls 17 legal deliveries. This one's played away, it's run down to third man, a good looking shot for Ahmed. That's gonna trickle over the boundary rope, so a chance for some of these batsmen to uh, get a bit of confidence for themselves. And of course, in 2009, going back to the story, Cyprus hosted the ICC Division IV Championships, which was a massive success for Cyprus as uh, Cyprus won that tournament as the hosts. And then in 2011, Cyprus competed in the ICC Division II Championships held in Belgium, where Cyprus would come 10th. Of course, a very big accomplishment for this island as, uh, <laughs> well, that is a very, very poor delivery. It's a no ball and it's a four. And mind you, I'd say one big concern for Markor is that they've been very complacent themselves throughout these innings. They've given up 33 runs of extras themselves. And the Nicosia fighters, well, it says a lot about them that they've uh, not been able to get anywhere near this total despite all this extras. That's extremely disappointing. And uh, this is going to be a free hit here for Ahmed. And of course, this is a free hit that uh, bold won't matter, as it's uh, basically just a dot ball. And you know, this this growth has really, really continued for Cyprus. I mean, Cyprus beat Sweden in that playoff game over in 2011, a very historic win for the country. And since then, we we really saw a big rethink in the regulations for national teams in the ICC. And Cypriot cricket has just continued to grow over this past decade, and uh, the European Cricket Network has really done a terrific job to uh, help improve that as uh, we just, <laughs> well, that's a nice bit of innovation. It goes for the scoop shot, but uh, the uh, striker just about gets to the right end. And a little bit of frustration here for Mark Hoare, but they know that this game is uh, pretty much done and dusted. And I think the biggest thing that we've noticed in these last few years is just the explosion in the number of teams in the country. I mean, we certainly didn't have that many sides, of course. Uh, if uh, Nadim probably gets hold of that one, it might have been a run out, but he never did. Yeah, there's so many different clubs now all over the country. I mean, regardless of which city you live in, even if you live in a smaller city like Paphos, there's probably a cricket club there. I mean, we've seen a team from Agia Napa do really well in Group A. So it's uh, not just the major cities, as we said at the top of this broadcast, Nicosia and Limassol. We have clubs now in uh, a lot of smaller cities and smaller towns in Cyprus as well. This one's played up in the air, and this is a very good-looking shot by Howlader. So it's uh, it's gone the distance. It's a big six. It's only the second six the fighters have hit so far this innings. But he gets under this one well. It's a good-looking shot. And there is uh, not too much the fielder can do about that one as we come to the end of the eighth over. So just a couple overs left here for uh, Mark Hort to negotiate before they uh, lock up this uh, victory, a very good victory in uh, response to what was a, a tough, tough defeat. Got See Umar Farouk into the attack. This one's uh, played down the ground towards Logan as we get a single. I mean, a lot of these sides, like Mark Hor. The uh, Limassol Zalmi, these are a lot newer sides, sides that didn't even exist three years ago, and now 
we can see how strong they are, which just tells you the development of the game, how rapidly it's developing. And yeah, this one's a, a terrific job of uh, grounding his bat there. And, uh, you know, even teams like Everest, these are new and very exciting teams. Same same goes for the Limassol Calunders, the Napa Royal Kings. Uh, a lot of new sides making their mark here. Of course, so uh, we've got the heritage teams also in this tournament, teams like the Mufflons. Uh, the Mufflons, of course, are the uh, oldest team on this island. It was first created by uh, British expats, actually, back in the uh, 1980s. So uh, just played away. It's going to be a uh, single. Struck hard, and uh, it's well fielded. Out in the deep by the fielder, that's uh, Muhammad Kamar. And uh, well, just looking ahead to uh, the next few games for these sides, of course, uh, as we mentioned, you can see the fighters will be back later today, playing against the Black Caps. This one's uh, gone down towards uh, the fielder at mid on. And I think we're gonna need to see a lot, for, for starters, they're just gonna have to come out and play with more intensity, I mean, really, Things went wrong for the Nicosia fighters right with that very first over. I mean, we saw Sarav Ahmed going for over 25 runs in that first over. Bold uh, four wides, three no balls. He just can't start that way. It completely, it just meant the whole side was deflated right from the get-go. We uh, didn't see much intensity from them. So it's going to have to just start with that. They're going to need to come out there. We know Sarav Ahmed's a bowler who can move the ball both ways. They've got Abdullah Al-Tazman as well. Terrific bowler. He needs to back himself and go over the wicket as we take a look at the bowling figures uh, very briefly for a split second as uh, of course no time for that we've got to get going with the action again and that's the number one thing really they have to come out they have to play they have to play the right cricket they have to play smart cricket as well i mean we saw them they had just one fielder outside the ring i mean they were trying to experiment a little bit the experimentation didn't work and it's another swing and a miss uh, we're going to need the captain himself, Anwar Hussain, to try to lead by example. I mean, we see Napa with uh, Hardeep Singh, the Napa Royal Kings. He really looks to lead by example. You know, he does the right things. He's electric in the field. He's very vocal. He goes to talk to all the bowlers. And uh, we're going to need to see some of that from Anwar Hussain as well. But, uh, at least the one thing, though, the Nicosia Fighters fans will be thinking is that uh, the only way is up for them. And so... Um, not a lot has gone right for them so far this match. Not a lot. Of course, uh, the next time we see Markor will be uh, tomorrow morning. They'll be playing the Sri Lankan Lions, so a rematch of the game that opened uh, the day today. Of course, uh, we saw Markor. They, uh, unfortunately for them, lost that one by 22 runs. This one has struck well. And it's going to go to mid-wicket, but... I think regardless of that loss, they can uh, they can still be pretty encouraged. I, I don't think they were that far off the Sri Lankan Lions. Things kind of just fell away for them. But for about six, seven overs, they were right there with the Sri Lankan Lions in terms of their uh, run rate. It was uh, going very well. As that's a slight misfield, uh, won't really cost the uh, Markor side. And there we go. That's a run out. And uh, they just try to push for that extra run, don't they? And I think that's going to be the end of uh, the inning. So it's a dominant victory here. For uh, Mark Hoare, they take this one very, very comfortably. Total destruction of the Nicosia fighters who start this tournament off in a very poor manner from their point of view. I'm sure they'll rebound and come back a lot stronger, but uh, a good win for Mark Hoare as they get their first ever ECS win. So a big congratulations to them. It's a good side, and I expect them to be right in it, right in that hunt to make it to the quarterfinals. They take this one by 81 runs as we'll uh, take a brief look at the highlights. And of course, uh, they have plenty of issues with extras as well, Mark Hoare. I mean, this score could have been a much, much lower. 33 runs of extras given up by Mark Hoare. And consider the fact that the Nicosia Tigers only got to 82 runs. So that's just uh, 49 runs off the bat. And we take a look at this wicket by Awe Sulari. That was the wicket of Abdullah Al-Tazman. And pretty much once he fell, you knew that uh, all hope was gone for the Nicosia Fighters. There were simply too many runs for them to chase, and uh, without 
one of their star batsmen playing well, you knew that they were always going to struggle to get there. You know, the scorecard for the rest of them looks a bit like a phone number. It's uh, 43018. Mamoum Howlader making 11 runs. Uh, this is how the captain will be dismissed. Uh, Anwar Hussain looking to charge down the wicket. Completely missed it. And then a bit of Kamar to Kamar action as uh, Mohamed Kamar with a good bit of bowling and uh, Nadim Kamar would stump him. This was a very well taken catch by uh, Umar Farouk. He had a good game. And then look at this a shattered set of stumps. Mohamed Kamar would pick up his second wicket there. And a solid, solid performance from Markor, who, uh, well, they've got a few things they can iron out as well. 33 runs of extras is uh, not good enough from their point of view, but we do know they are an excellent side. And the fact that they can still win games this comfortably, despite being that off with their extras, is a very, very good sign. As they take this one by 81 runs, a truly dominant victory. Of course, uh, well, we're not too long away from, we're just 15 minutes away from the uh, next game of the day. It's going to be a very exciting matchup, of course. Uh, we're going to see a game between the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions once again. So we'll leave you with the scorecard, but don't leave us because we'll be right back in 16 minutes with an absolute thriller of a match.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fan Code, and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to Ips and Us. It's the fourth match of Group B. As you take a look at this beautiful drone shot. What a gorgeous village Ips and Us is. Of course, we're seven kilometers west of the city of Limassol. Well, without further ado, let's head over to Stefan Gooch for the coin toss as he's with both the captains. Okay, Sri Lanka lines the call. Heads is the call. It is heads. Okay, good luck guys, all the best. Have a good game. So the Sri Lankan Lions have won the toss and they haven't hit. Back over to you in the commentary box, Nish. Thank you very much, Stefan. Of course, uh, these two sides facing each other for the second time today. That uh, first match between them was quite a thriller. We saw the Sri Lankan Lions just hang on and uh, win it by one run. Let's have a look at the uh, score for both these teams. Of course, the Sri Lankan Lions have won both their first two games. The Black Caps start their title defense off with a uh, rather tough loss. And of course, Tej Winder Singh leading the way for the Black Caps with 140 points. And then Akila Kalugala with 200 for the Sri Lankan Lions. He took some very, very good catches. And uh, well, certainly did a really good job, hasn't he so far today? Of course, making 85 runs as well. So it's been a good day for him and a good day for the Sri Lankan Lions. And of course, they're uh, just about set to take the field. Uh, you heard the outcome from the coin toss. So the Lunkin Lions, of course, have uh, won the toss, selected the bat first. And they've done a really good job so far of posting a big total and uh, giving their rivals something to defend. And of course, let's have a look at the bat versus ball wall. Of course, the Black Caps fancy it as 12 run favorites. Very interesting, considering they were uh, defeated by the uh, Sri Lankan Lions earlier today. Look at that. Look at how many runs they're averaging. That is a very, very solid thing. And of course, I think the biggest trend so far today has just been uh, how much higher scoring these games have been. I think I've been really impressed by some of the cricket I've seen, especially. Uh, these two teams, the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions, uh, both of them look really dangerous, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if either of them go on to win it all. So this match right here, this could easily be a finals preview. And it uh, looks like we might, we might even see a bit of a, a, sh a shuffle in the batting lineup, so uh, I don't believe. We're going to see Akila Kulagala opening the batting lineup. Yeah. So with no, it's going to be Roshan City Wardena. So Akila Kulagala going to the non-striker's end. So City Wardena, he's been moved around up and down the order so far. We've seen him bat at number three, bat at number four. And uh, now he's out there facing the uh, first ball. Of course, he bowled that dramatic final over. Where the Black Caps needed just 11 runs to win. And somehow they didn't, especially with Mangala Gunasekar on strike. That was a huge surprise. But this one, this is Tej Rinder Singh running in. The ball, the first ball, and that's a big swing and a miss for Roshan City Warden. So great start by Tej Winder Singh. And of course, we saw how terrific Tej Winder Singh was with his uh, batting in the previous match. His first over was on the money, but then we saw him struggle a little bit in the second. And that takes a bottom edge, and oh, that's really unlucky as it's going to go away for four. So uh, fortune favoring Roshan City Warden over there. Let's just take a look at this. Yeah, it's a nasty bottom edge, and you have to feel for the keeper. That's always going to be really difficult for Bhupinder Singh. Uh, a very good cricketer, I have to say, Bhupinder Singh. We saw him hit some very classy-looking strokes in the uh, second innings where uh, the Black Caps were trying to chase down the Sri Lankan Lions total. And you can see he's trying to go for that Yorker, and he just gets enough bat on it, Roshan City Wardena, and it's going to trickle over the boundary rope. So that's a really nice four as uh, City Wardena. Just uh, carving this one through the offside. That's a, yeah, it's taking a nasty bounce. I think that's uh, Kumar who is uh, fielding out there. 
And a very good start here for the Lions. Uh, City of Orleans, we know he's a very explosive player, so I like this move. He's uh, somebody who we know. He likes to play the big shots. A little bit of a stutter step, but he uh, swings and misses. But it's interesting to see Tej Winder Singh go around the wicket rather than over. I think he's a certainly a uh, quality bowler. Uh, Let's see now. Fifth ball of the over coming up. This one's aimed at the stumps, but City of Orleans has clubbed that one beautifully. It's going to take a bounce and go over the rope. So three boundaries so far this over, and City of Orleans is just winning this battle so far. We're seeing two quality players go at it, and it's uh, been riveting stuff so far. Just uh, one bounce and into those olive groves. Uh, so this move to bring uh, Roshan City of Orleans to open the batting, paying dividends so far. Now let's see, how does Tej Rinder Singh round out this over? Oh, and that's really wide. And uh, boy, we saw him struggle with extras a little bit. And uh, his second over in the previous game, but you can see what he's trying to do. He's probably going for that Lex Tom Yorker and just doesn't get it right. So he's going to have one more go at it. Try to round out this over. 13 runs so far for the Sri Lankan Lions. And a big swing and a miss for Roshan City Rodana. And that's a dot ball to end the over. So the Sri Lankan Lions are at 13th for no loss at the end of the first over. Of course, I've uh, got the great pleasure of being joined by match referee Stefan Gooch in the commentary box. Great to have you here. Thank you very much, Nish. It's a pleasure to join you and uh, give you help you out on this marathon five-game day you have today. And welcome to everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be in the commentary box. So how, how have you found the action so far on, on day one? I mean, uh, I think the biggest difference for me is just how freely these sides are scoring. Yeah, it's it's been pretty impressive, actually. I think the, the standard of cricket today has been a, very high. And uh, we've seen some extremely good innings and some great bowling. And there's a few familiar faces. Um, Tejvinder Singh being one that we saw at the ECL as well um, not long ago. And he played a big part for the Punjab Lions there. And uh, he's a great player, so it's been great to see him out there. And um, I've been very impressed with the Sri Lankan Lions. Uh, they've, they've looked really re in, in top form today as well. Um, and yeah, it looks, looks like a good, a good group. Uh, swing and a miss here as the Kalugala who uh, made that brilliant 85 to start off the day, uh, plays a dot ball to uh, begin his innings. That was a fantastic innings early on, earlier today. He was striking the ball exceptionally clean. And I'm pretty excited to see what he can do out here today as well. This one's uh, played uppishly. It's heading towards the commentary box. It's just going to land a few feet to the left of it, and it's a good shot by Kalugala. But once again, just hits it towards his preferred boundary out there at Cal Corner. And that's uh, a four as he gets off the mark. Yeah, it's a nice shot. He looks like a classy batter, doesn't he? Nothing better than watching a left-hander do his work. This one's uh, just played away behind fine leg. And I think it's taken a bounce for the boundary rope. No, it hasn't actually. It's gone over the rope. And he sent one to his dugout. They'll want plenty more to come towards there. Let's just take a look at this. He gets underneath that one so well, doesn't he? And he's been striking it cleanly all day. Yeah, he was onto that like a flash. That's a fantastic shot. Just a swivel on, the, on that foot and whip around the corner. He's looking in good form. Let's just see here. So it's been a tough start to the over for, for Singh. He's gone for 10 runs already. And I wonder if, uh, I mean, a change of the angle wouldn't be such a bad idea here for him because uh, I, th I think more right-handers should be going over the wicket. I think we've just seen a few too many players go around the wicket throughout this tournament. Yeah, I agree with that. It's been T-Tag cricket. It's just the angle makes it easy for the left-hander. As he comes again, it's going to be a wide. Yeah, that angle coming around the wicket and angling it into the body just makes it easy to get under it and get onto that leg side, which you can see that Kalugala likes to do. So I would, I would also probably suggest to come over the wicket and change that angle up. And 
this is a better ball, a much better length. You really can't be uh, bowling at a back of a length of Kaluga because he's just so good, as he said, getting underneath the ball. That's really where you need to be. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the that's a perfect T10 ball right there. You want to be wide and full outside the off stump. And uh, I think if he can keep it there, then round the wicket might work for him. This one's just played away by Kaluga. That's going to be a bit of a chase for the fielder. He doesn't do a good job, does he? It's a little bit of a struggle for Chetan Sharma. We know he's had a difficult day in the field so far. He bowled quite well in the first game, but uh, he's put down a catch so far and had a few crucial misfields. And, uh, well, that was always going to be a bit difficult for him. And I think he was a little bit slow off the block. And the Kalugala starting this innings off just the way he started the first one. Yeah, and then that's that's that back of the length ball you've, you've talked about as well. He's just, Kalugala just so quick, just so quick to get under it and just help it on its way there. It's a really nice shot. He's looking very dangerous. Of course, we've got Maz Baji who's uh, tuned in. He's saying good afternoon to Stefan and Nish. Great to have you here, Maz. G'day, Mazzy. Good to see you. And he goes fuller and wide. And this one, has it cleared the boundary rope? We await the umpire signal. It certainly has. So Kaluga accelerating early, as he often does. He gets underneath this one really well, smashes it towards that wide, long off position. It's a big six. So again, the Sri Lankan Lions are right out of the blocks very quickly 34 for no lost at the end of two overs yeah what a shot that is that is just an absolute quality cricket shot just gets under it just plays it through the line right out the middle of the bat what a great shot and hello to everyone in the chat hello to john as well good to see you all if anyone has any questions regarding match officials or tournament referee business i'm happy to answer them for you so don't be shy and we're going to see uh tate winder sink bowling uh this third over says so the final over the power play. We know he had a few issues bowling the final over the power play in the previous game against the Sri Lankan Lions. Let's see if he does better this time around. This one's uh, just trying to choke Roshan City rather than up a room over there. Yeah, like I said, we saw Tej Vinder feature quite heavily in the ECL this year, and I was really impressed by, by both his batting and his bowling. He played a, a very uh, significant part for that team, and he's a quite all round cricket up. I think he, he just is a little, can be a little bit inconsistent sometimes with his bowling, but when he gets it right, he gets it right. Yeah, this one is absolutely drilled down the ground, and that's really difficult. You've got a feel for Love Deep Singh. It's come at him really quickly, and he's just misjudged it a bit. I think he slightly overruns this one, because we know when Roshan City Wardana hits it, it stays hit. That's another four for City Wardana as the Sri Lankan Lions continue to accelerate. Yeah, he's just got a bit of a dodgy bounce there, hasn't he? It's a bit of a tough one. It, it's certainly a really hard field to, to field on because this, mind you, this was a fo this was a football pitch once upon a time, so it's really hard. There's not too much grass on this either, so it takes the odd bounce over here. Yeah, it does. And as you can see, it's got that, it's kind of clay underneath. A lot of the areas are very, very hard, which is why you see the field is a little bit reluctant to have big dives and slides. And there are, yeah, it, it can be a little bit uneven. So it's a tough job for them. And once again, City Rodana absolutely drills this one. And it's going to go just to the right of the commentary tent, and City Rodana looking really, really good here. And I like the fact that he's just playing some ground shots here in the power play, taking advantage of the fielding restrictions. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic shot. He's just cleared the front leg and just hit, it, hit the ball through the line. You have to say the Sri Lanka Lions are looking very, very dangerous at the moment. 42 of two and a half overs with a lot of loss of no wickets. This one's a played away by City Rodana. And it goes out to Kulwinder Singh. I think I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we see him inserted in the very next over. He's uh, We saw he was the pick of the bowlers in the previous match, so I'm, I'm honestly quite surprised he doesn't bowl in the power play. Yeah, it's a pretty good point. He's, he's a very good bowler, and he, he was the, the pick of the bowlers in the last match. But I think you're right. I wouldn't be surprised if he's given the nod for the next over. So very good afternoon to Chris Smith as well. Sam Williams, the, the project manager in the chat. G'day, Gaffer. Yeah, this one's uh, played away very nicely. And once again, a bit of fielding for Kulwinder Singh. And the Sri Lankan Lions, uh, maybe they'll get a single over there. So City World, then I will face the final ball of the power play. I think uh, this has been exceptional batting. I mean, as we said, Tejwinder Singh is a uh, terrific bowler. So to get him away for 23 runs off the 11 balls he's bowled is uh, some sensational stuff. The Sri Lankan Lions, they were a little bit slow out of the gates. 
against uh, Mark Hoare, but that's not the case here in this power play. And uh, good ball there by Tej Winder Singh to end the power play. So it's still a very good one for the Sri Lankan Lions. They're 44 for no loss at the end of three overs. Yeah, they'll be very happy with that start. They're looking in exceptional form. You know, wickets in hand in T10 is key as well. They're going at just just over 14 and a half and over with with all the wickets in hand. So they're in a very, very commanding position at the moment. And they'll be pretty pleased with that power play, I think. Of course, as we have this little break in the over, it'd be a good chance to ask you some questions about match refereeing. Of course, so please do not hesitate to put any questions into the chat. I have to ask you this one, though. How's the experience been so far here in Cyprus? Is this your first time in the country? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's my first time here. And, um, you know, Cyprus has a bit of a reputation that precedes it amongst the ECN crew. And I was, I've been very excited to get out here for a while. So when it popped up on the schedule, uh, I, I put my hand straight up. So I've really enjoyed it out here. The, the hospitality has been fantastic. Mohammed's been great, who's been the local organizer, who's looking after us. And uh, it's been an excellent experience so far. Yeah, this is just played away as we see Mangala Gunasekara inserted the attack. We didn't see him ball much in the first uh, innings when uh, Black Caps uh, faced Sri Lankan Lions. But I also have to say the quality of the umpiring has been sensational throughout this series. I've been really impressed by it and so have a lot of our viewers. Yeah, I agree. I mean, these guys have been fantastic. There's just the four of them doing the entire tournament, which is no mean feat. It's not an easy job, especially when you've got five, sometimes six matches a day. And they've been workhorses. So I'm very proud of what they've done. Yeah, a big swing and a miss there for Roshan City Rotha. And it's a great experience for them as well, you know. They're, they're all cricketers themselves and they're getting a chance to be out there on a big stage and, and show what they can do and they've been, they've been fantastic. Yeah, he connects on this one, City Rotha. That's going to be a single for the Sri Lankan Lions and certainly you have to add to that point. I mean, uh, I mean, yesterday was quite a warm and sunny day where a lot of us were sweating and just to see the umpires out there in the middle Making decision after decision was a very impressive. You have to credit their fitness levels and their concentration. This one's uh, popped up in the air. Is this going to be a catching opportunity? No, it won't. It's going to just uh, land on that boundary in the third man region. That's another four for Kalugala, who's really just been throwing the kitchen sink at everything today. And uh, he deserves a little bit of fortune. Slice of luck there, but he gets the boundary. Yeah, well, fortune favors the brave, doesn't it? And he looks like a brave man out there at the moment. He's not shy, uh, shying away from anything. And he's moved to 26 off nine. Uh, yeah, the umpires have done a fantastic job. It's not an easy job to do. And they're out there all day. It's, it was, it's getting warmer here as well. As that's been pumped straight back over the bowler's head. That's a fantastic shot. Goes all the way for six. What a shot. That is a sensational shot, I have to agree. And uh, both of these two look in absolutely fine touch. I mean, uh, I have to say our umpires, uh, they have the best view for some of this cricket. Yeah, they sure do. They sure do. There's nothing like being out there in the middle and watching it all happen around you. And that's a terrific ball 10 by Mangala Gunnasekar, but that's a slightly disappointing bit of wicket keeping by Bhupinder Singh, who's normally so good with the gloves. And uh, it's an unnecessary run there by a buys given up by the Black Caps as uh, this over comes to an end. Uh, continues to have struck go at an incredible rate here. The Sri Lankan Lions going at just under 15 and over. They're uh, really setting themselves up to get a mammoth total. Yeah, absolutely. Ten wickets in hand, four overs gone. They're on 57. They are setting themselves up for sure. And as I said before, wickets in hand is so key in T10 matches. It means you can keep your run rate really high. If you lose a wicket here or there, it doesn't really matter too much. So they're looking the goods at the moment, Nish. Of course, I believe we have a question from Chris uh, Smith here for you, Stefan. Uh, would you like to have a go answering this one? Of course, Chris Smith asking, Stefan, any chance the Ums would have a different outfit other than black? I mean, black absorbs the heat and surely can't be good for them. Certainly the case here in Cyprus. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. I'll get back to that after this ball. He comes in. That's a, it's been whipped away on the leg side. Just be a single. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fair question. Uh, it can get quite warm out there. We have floated the idea of, of at least having short sleeve shirts, and this is something that maybe we've got, we've got in the pipeline. Um, but at the moment, you know, we think black looks sharp. Uh, yeah, it can, it can absorb the heat and it can be tough. But, you know, of course, we'd have to go another color of the rainbow otherwise because we couldn't have white out there because of the white balls so black works at the moment uh, but it is something we've discussed 
And this one is uh, played away very nicely by Roshan City Northern. You really can't be bowling to him there with absolutely no protection behind square on the leg side. This is a good swivel by City Northern Hoots and uh, easy pickings, one would say. Yeah, I just got another question coming in the chat from James Stewart. Any plans to take another driver in the commentary car? That's funny. I was telling the guys about that last night. My cousin Joe Begasati and myself. The cousin's commentary car in Barcelona. What a fantastic experience that was. Um, I would love to, James. I would love to. We've, we've said we'd love to do it. Maybe, maybe the opportunity will arise again. Let's hope so. Uh, this is going to be a top ball. I mean, certainly that, those tales about uh, the Triple C were, were fun to hear. And, of course, I've had the pleasure of working with Joe as well, an absolutely outstanding commentator. Yeah, he is. He's very good. He, he's, he's a real lover of the game. He knows, what he, he knows what he's talking about and a bit of a history buff too. So he can make the commentary very, very interesting. And uh, big hello to you, Cuzzy, if you're out there listening. This one struck absolutely cleanly by Roshan City. Well, that I was seeing it like a football right now. That's his first six of the innings. But what a beautiful shot. Take a look at this. Gets underneath it nicely. Well, looks like he's brought his driver today because he's playing golf, yeah. teeing off right now. Yeah, absolutely. That's one off the tee. He's got right up and under that. That's gone a long way. And again, the Sri Lankan Lions just asserting their dominance on this game. They are looking like they're going to be hard to catch now. 68 going at just a clip over 14 and a half and over. Yeah, this one's uh, a little bit of a bottom edge. And it's uh, going to go for a single. So uh, Kalugala will go on strike. And the incredible thing about this partnership has been neither one of them's uh, been the sort of, uh, I would say, the one who's just looking to rotate the strike. Both of them are slogging it. This is pretty rare in a partnership. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they both can hit the ball pretty hard. So why would they hold back? I mean, you know, if you can hit sixes in T10, don't even worry about the singles. Uh, this one's played uppishly. And I think the fielder just isn't quite able to keep track of that one. I believe it's uh, Sukhjinder Singh. We didn't see him in the previous match, but they also make an impression there. To be fair, that was a very tough opportunity, and he's uh, just lost track of the ball. Yeah, swirling in the, in the wind. That is a tough one. Went very high. As, of course, we are at the halfway stage of the innings, and the Sri Lankan Lions are 71 for no loss. So, of course, uh, I'm Nishivat here with the great pleasure of being joined by Stefan Gooch in the commentary box. At the halfway stage of the innings, Sri Lankan Lions are on top. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, they're, they're really dominating this game at the moment. I think uh, the Black Caps are going to have to s start thinking about how they're going to stem the flow of these runs. They just, everything's out the middle, everything's going to the boundary, and they are really on top here. They certainly are, but if you're the Black Caps, what would you do in these uh, last five overs to try to force the issue? Oh, it's going to be tough. I think, uh, you know, right now I'd probably be thinking about a partnership breaker type bowler. You know, someone who maybe not is your first option, maybe not one of your five that you'd go to because they need to do something different. And um, maybe some, I mean, they've just they've been bowling these medium paces pretty much the whole time. Maybe change it up, something different if they've got, any, if they've got some spinners. I mean, I'm a bit surprised that Kulvinder Singh's just been standing at long on throughout this innings, and he hasn't bowled. I mean, as we said, he was the pick of the bowlers in the previous game. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a curious one, that's for sure. I'm not sure what, what they're thinking here, but he could definitely be the one that could break the partnership. Yeah, this one's uh, struck away by City Wardana, and a good bit of fielding by Tejvinder Singh. You have, to, you have to love the way he's tied his hair. <laughs> yeah, it's got a bit going on there, isn't there? <laughs> You've got to have a bit about you to go for that one, but he pulls it off. He pulls it off. And it certainly goes well with the kit as well. It's a, I believe it's a New Zealand retro kit they've gone with. Yeah, I really like the kit, actually. It's a, it's, a, it's a really nice kit. And it does match very well, doesn't it? They were calling at the ECL, his nickname between the teams was the Silver Fox. So <laughs> yeah, this one's uh, played away beautifully by Kalugala. Don't worry about that one. It's going to clear the boundary rope with some ease. And he's been on fire today, Kalugala, as we see uh, ECN's <laughs> very own Ravi Pancho. There, yeah, Ravi. He's loving the camera time, old Ravi, at the moment. He's getting out there trying to feel I hope Corey Rutgers didn't see that one, Ravi boy. <laughs> he goes over. Oh, that's never going away, Ravi. That <laughs> uh, one's going to be clipped and uh, put on all of the European Cricket Network social media accounts. As uh, Kalugala has now moved on to 41. This is... Uh, been quite a bludgeoning here. Chaitan Sharma, difficult introduction for him. And this one's gone straight down the ground. They're targeting that shorter boundary. Don't worry about that one, Kulwinder Singh. He tried to get across to cut it off, 
but that one's gone straight down the ground for six because once again Kalugala is now just three runs away from a half century. Yeah, just 15 balls as well. This is phenomenal batting from Kalugala. This is an absolute masterclass going on here. We are lucky to be witnessing this. He's on for a big one, I think, Nish. I mean, he's already made 85 today. He was super unlucky to miss out on that century. I mean, it was some rather poor running uh, that prevented him from reaching it. Yeah, absolutely. Can he make amends? He's just sliced that one away behind point, and that's gone to the boundary. That will bring up his 50, and what a 50 that has been. Just 16 balls. Yeah, it's just it's been it's been a really special day for him. I mean, he's made quite an impression today. Of course, Sri Lankan Lions used to have a very explosive hitter, BLCS Kamara. Uh, many of our old uh, ECS viewers here in Cyprus might remember him, man. He's not taking part in, in today's action, but Kalugala has just come in and replaced him so well. He's been the most impressive batsman I've seen today. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to think, what can he do over the week? It's a pretty exciting thought. He's, I mean, he's up to 130-odd runs today at least. I, I mean, I have to ask you this. Do you think he will catch up with Saran Ahmed as a top run-getter for this tournament? Oh, mate, the way he's hitting him today, I, I think he's probably a very good chance. He's gone again. I might have just commentated, cursed him. <laughs> and I have. He's, he's got it. He's just, he's just pulled one away to deep mid-wicket and he hasn't quite got it out the middle, which is rare for him today. And he, the catch has been taken just, just about five metres inside the boundary. And he's going to have to make his way off the ground. But what a fantastic innings that was. And congratulations on your commentator's curse. I bet it's some memories <laughs> of being with the triple C. Yeah. We do this about two, twice a game. <laughs> uh, it's a real thing, isn't it? It's a real thing. Yeah, no, but what a, what a fantastic start for the Sri Lanka Lions. He's put them in an extremely dominant position. Uh, 88 for one now. And, and, and what a batsman to replace him, right? It's Chamal Sadu who just made a 51 of 17 in the uh, previous match the Sri Lankan Lions played. So again, they're just showing their vast array of options here. And uh, the Black Caps, you know, you can see it. Despite that wicket, still plenty of double teapots out on the field. They're not too happy to see Sadoon walk in. Yeah, the body language isn't great right now for the Black Caps. They're going to have to, they should be up and about now. They've just removed the, the danger man. But yes, there is another danger man on his way in. But one brings two. I see what happens here. So uh, charging in for the final ball of the over, Chetan Sharma. And this is very well struck by Sadoon. Is he going to split the fielders? Not quite. Good bit of fielding by Kulvinder Singh. So it's just a single to end the over. As uh, the Sri Lankan Lions, 89 for one at the end of the sixth over. Of course, uh, you know, going back to sort of some of the talk about the weather. Um, a few days ago, of course, we had wind speeds of up to 42 kilometers per hour. I mean, of course, we have a look at the scorecard there. Could you just give us some insight into what it was like for the umpires to deal with that? Yeah, it was difficult. It was diff I think it was difficult for everybody on the ground. It was exceptionally windy and it was relentless wind literally all day from start to finish. Um, laptops were flying around. Everyone has wind burn all over their bodies and face. So challenging conditions for the umpires out there. You know, it's just another thing they have to contend with. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a difficult one for them. Uh, but as I said, they've, they've taken this opportunity to umpire out there with a smile on their face. They're very enthusiastic and, and they did really well. No, they just did a stellar job, game after game. I mean, they're right here with us early in the morning, and they, they leave with us as well. So it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, work with them throughout this tournament. And uh, I have to say, their decision-making has been near perfect throughout this tournament. As we're going to see Mangala Gunasekara come in for his uh, second over. Went for 12 on his first. This one's played away by Chamal Sadoon. Fine leg is inside the rings. You have to be really careful bowling there. And looks like we have the first goal of this match. Sadoon showing off that he's a multi-sport athlete. Oh, it's oh, just gone over the bar, actually. Just <laughs> over the crossbar. It was a decent strike, but not to be. But six more in the book. And uh, Sri Lanka Lions about to tick over the 100 mark in just the seventh over. That one is uh, very wide. You can just tell he's uh, overcompensated a little bit right there. Mangala going to sacred after straying onto the pads. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's such a such a fine margin between a wide and a very good ball in T10. It's a very difficult one. If you can just keep it inside that, yeah, that's a very good ball. It's been missed by the keeper. It's going to run away for buyers. Is it going to go to the boundary? And it is. That's very unlucky. I think he said there's a little nick on that. So there might have been an inside edge. And it has, yeah, almost a, a worldy take from the keeper, but he hasn't been able to get a glove on it. It's four runs off the bat. And that brings up the 100 for the Sri Lanka Lions. And what a game they're having, Nish. I mean, look at that projected score, 154. I mean, that is certainly attainable with the nine wickets they have in hand. I mean, I mean, of course, we do, we do expect sides to slow down a little bit at some stage in the game, but 
even if they go at 14 and over, they'll be at 148. So Black Caps could be in for a behemoth of a chase. And this one is struck down the ground by Chamo Sadoon and struck cleanly. Tejwinder Singh is a tall man, but even he can't get to that one. Six more runs for Sadoon. Yeah, the onslaught continues. And as you can see, the, the Lions are actually increasing their run rate at the moment, which is quite scary for the Black Caps. And uh, they just can't seem to put a foot wrong at the moment. That's straight out the screws. Tejwinder Singh gives it his best, sh best shot, but he can't get a hand to it. Now this is so gently played by Sadoon. That was played very well, but he's a bit unfortunate to uh, find the fielder. That's a good bit of fielding there by Pavan Deep Singh. Yeah, it's a, it's, a bit, it's a better ball. I'd still like to see it slightly wider and a slightly fuller. But as I said, so the margin between such a, a good ball and a wide in T10 is, oh, that's a big beamer. It's going to be called a no ball. That one must have slipped out of the hand. Yeah, just bowling a bar of soap over there, Mangala Gunasekar, as we take a look at this one. Yeah, that is a nasty no ball, and this is going to be a free hit. So that'll be his first warning, and yep, free hit coming up. The wheels are falling off for the Black Caps at the moment. This is worrying stuff for them. So, uh, big opportunity here for Roshan City Ordena. And let's see if he takes advantage of this free hit. He's hit it straight to Tejwinder Singh, puts down the catch. It doesn't really make a difference. But they've got to come back for a second run. In the end, they go for the more conservative option. Chumbo Sadoon stays out there. But boy, they're both striking it cleanly. So it's uh, not going to matter too much who's over there. Yeah, that's very true. They're looking very dangerous here. Did they see the final ball of the over for uh, Mangalaga to Sekera? It's a better area, that. But it's been carved away behind point, And it's going to go to the boundary again. So the rain, the raining runs here at the moment. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice shot in the end. But yeah, as I said, I, I just, I've always, always focused on it with T10. It's so important to that wide full length inside the line. It's the hardest, the hardest ball to get away. You can really set a feel for it. And right now the Black Caps, and Black Caps are not hitting that area at all. And they're just making it easy for the Sri Lanka Lions who are pouncing on every opportunity. As we look at the upcoming events, Got a busy calendar ahead of us. Certainly do. We're going to be in Cyprus through this Sunday, the 23rd of April, before handing over for a fortnight in Milan. Of course, for a lot of our Zoomer viewers, fortnight means two weeks. It's not just a video game. And uh, we'll have a nice little bit of international cricket over there in Gibraltar. And then, of course, in the month of May, we'll be in Austria up in that fine cricket ground in Seabar. And, of course, uh, can we expect to see you at any of these events, uh, Stefan? Just, we'll just take a look at this ball. It's uh, played away by Roshan City Ordena out to square leg. Yeah, actually, um, I'm really looking forward to it. I will be in Austria. Uh, I'll be there for the first week um, working for the ECN, but I'll also be back for the ECIs because I'm the Hungarian national team manager, and the Hungarian national team will be playing in the ECIs against Austria and the Czech Republic. So I'll be back there um, yeah, on, a, on a bit of a different job, but very, very excited. Always love going to Vienna. Love the hospitality, love the cricket, and love the, pl the people there. So very exciting times. And yeah, a swing and a miss here for Chamal Sadoon. And of course, you know, we've had a chance in the first innings at least. We were uh, talking a bit, beg your pardon, the previous game. We were talking a little bit about uh, the history of Cypriot cricket and the growth we've seen over the last few years. How's it been in Hungary? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've on the back of the what the ECN has done, it's the same all around Europe. Oh, that, that has just been lifted up over long on. What a shot that is. He advances two, three steps down the wicket and just pumps it down the ground. That might be shot of the day for me, Nish. That is a phenomenal cricket shot. I mean, you really have to feel for uh, Justdeep Singh, of course, who's uh, out here doing a terrific job every single day. Gets here at 6 in the a.m. in the morning. I mean, these Sri Lankan lines, they just keep sending these to the Olive Groves. Uh, some terrific hitting between these two. Absolutely. That is Beautiful to watch. He stepped across to that. He stepped right in front of his stumps. He's whipped it off middle stump, backward of square leg, and that's four more. And the onslaught continues. It continues. And this is Rajwinder Brar, the captain, normally a very economical operator. He's had a difficult day against the Sri Lankan Lions. I mean, the way they're hitting it right now, I'm really baffled what they could do to change things over here. The biggest thing that really, really surprises me is that we haven't seen Kulwinder sing at all. Yeah, it's a, it's a confusing one, to be honest. And I think the, the bowlers really need to think about their areas they're bowling at the moment. They're making it very easy for the Sri Lankan Lions, who are in amazing form, to hit big boundaries. And that's been pushed away to long on again. And it's a bit of fancy footwork on the boundary has stopped the, stopped the four, but they'll get back for two. 
Yeah, that is a nice bit of work there by Tejinder Kumar. But uh, again, good running between the wickets by the Sri Lankan Lions. And uh, what I've really liked about this innings is that, sure, they've shown the uh, their power hitting ability, but they've also been great running between the wickets. So they've just done all the fundamentals really well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a swing and a miss. I think he a sneaked that. Yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about. That's that's the that's the area you want to be bowling. You know, you want to you want to bring the batter into playing a false stroke. This is a full and wide, outside off, and uh, he gets the reward for it. So I'd like to see the Black Caps targeting that area a little bit more, even a little bit fuller than that. But that one has worked. He's nicked it behind. He's going to have to make his way off the ground, and a little relief for the Black Caps. Yeah, certainly very well played there by Chamal Sadun as we see. Uh, Rajith coming to bat. He's had a very interesting day. He's uh, faced the first ball in both of the first couple of matches, hit them for a four, and then got dismissed the very next one. As we take a look at the graph, an extremely healthy run rate for the Sri Lankan Lions. But uh, I do have to ask you something. There's, throughout this week, there's been a lot of chat on the, a uh, lot of discussion on our chat about some of the wides and uh, how close they're called. Could you just give some insight into how uh, wides are called in T10 cricket? Yeah, sure. Well, we're obviously, in T10 cricket, we're a little bit harsher on these sort of things. Um, so, I mean, the ruling is if the ball catches any of that line as it crosses the popping crease, then it will be a judge of wide. Some people uh, are a little bit harsher than others. Some people will, will look at half the ball is the majority of the ball on the line, is the majority ball off. So as long as it's kept consistent, uh, we're fine with it. But, um, yeah, I mean, we are a bit harsher and much to the player's dismay sometimes. Uh, we do ping them a little bit more for, for wides in T10. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's the the official ruling is if it, if it if it cuts that line at all, the popping crease, then it's going to be a wide. With th that one is also a wide over the top of the head of the batter. Uh, this one's uh, played away by Roshan Sivar. Then of course, Kulwinder Singh starting off with a wide. Yeah, just to go back to what you asked me earlier, Nish, about the Hungarian cricket scene and its growth. Uh, we're experiencing some tremendous growth, like everybody else in Europe, like on the back of the ECN. So it made it a lot easier for us to to grow the game in the country. It's just been put back down the ground again. It's going to go straight over to Jinder Singh's head again. He gives it his best shot, but it's six more. And it's just not not letting up here, is it? No, it really isn't. And I think uh, the fact that every batsman has just come in, hasn't wasted any balls, just settled right in, and I've been smacking the big ones. This has been a near-perfect innings by the Sri Lankan Lions. Yeah, this one is stroked away, and he's going to pierce the gap. So uh, Rajith... Looking terrific in his first couple of balls. He's taken no time to settle in. Yeah, I think we could be looking at a very, very big score here, Nish. I think we could be pushing 150, 160. The way they're hitting them, they've, they're not having any trouble finding the boundaries whatsoever. Putting on absolute show here, the Lions. Uh, that's going to be a dot ball, a rare dot ball. Uh, so far this innings, of course, there's still eight deliveries to go. I mean, if they can get another 16 or 20 runs here, what a mammoth toll that would be for the Black Caps to chase. I mean, I know the Black Caps have plenty of firepower, but every team has its limits. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's, oh he's going to be lucky. He has what? It's down, just straight onto leg stump. Got a leading edge. It's just popped straight up, but there's no one there. Scamper through for a single. Yeah, it looks like a, a big score here coming up. But as we said, the Black Caps, they do have the batting firepower. They can chase a huge total. If a couple of their guys click, then there's not many scores that are out of reach for them. This one's struck firmly, and that's going to go away for four. And Roshan Sirivardana has been so strong through extra cover throughout the day. And uh, this one, he just hits it on the half volley, and boy, look at that might. Yeah, what, a, what fantastic hands, uh, hands he's got there, and his hand-eye coordination is phenomenal. He doesn't even step into the shot there. He's clearing his front, front pad outside leg stump and just swinging through that line, and he's middling him. That's an incredible shot. Such, such quick hands. Yeah, that's a full toss, which uh, Kalinder Singh will just get away with, and... Uh Oh, they're going to come back for this. Oh, they really want to come back for the second run. He's in a little bit of trouble here, Rajith, but he just gets back. I think Rajvinder Brar didn't quite collect the ball as cleanly as he would like. And the Sri Lankan Lions get away with that one. But they are 145 for two with an over still to go. Yeah, what a fantastic effort. I mean, I think, I think they'll be looking for a 15 or 20 of this last over to take them up to the 
around you know 160 165 would be a huge total and would set us up for a pretty interesting second innings i'd say like i said the black caps do have the batting firepower as we're looking at the bowling scorecard here and you can see it's been a pretty tough gig for the bowlers in this game so far but i do think it's going to be uh you know there's still a twist in this game for me yeah, again, score for that full and wide delivery, and he's just about nailed it inside the line, hasn't he? Exactly. That's the one I'm talking about. There's such a fine margin. And as you can see, this one just sneaks inside. It's so it's so well directed that the batter just leaves it, thinking it's going to be a wide. But for me, that's the best area to be bowling in a T10 match. Yeah, this one's uh, just stuck away. Good bit of fielding by Chaitan Sharma, and it's just going to be a single. So good start of the over. Just one run of the first couple of balls, of course, uh, there's another little bit of uh, discussion that's been happening in the chat, of course. Unfortunately, we've seen a few batsmen go out there without helmets. Uh, we saw Shaw Khalid get eight stitches after being hit on the head. We'll continue on that point after this ball. is this a dot ball well bowled here by Love Deep Singh. you got to like his lines so far. And, uh, you know, there's been some talk about, well, you know, wearing helmets should be made mandatory and uh, numerous other things. I mean, where would you stand on this? And as a match referee, do you encourage a lot of these players to wear helmets? Yeah, I mean, of course, we, we strongly encourage them to wear helmets. That's uh, another excellent ball. The <laughs> bat's gone flying to square leg. <laughs> He's just let it go. It's a, it's a very, very good ball. A nice Yorker. And he's just decided he doesn't want the bat anymore. And off it goes. <laughs> um, yes, you say. So we, we strongly encourage helmet use, of course. But we're all grown adults. And it's not something I think you, that you can force somebody to do. Um, if they don't want to, uh, but you know, it's something that we highly, highly recommend. This one's hit him outside the line of leg stump. That's not going to be out. They've scampered through for a leg bye. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's been a bit of a shame. You don't see it happen. It's it's quite scary, especially on these bouncy wickets. So this this wicket does have a bit of bounce in it. So it can be a bit worrying with guys going out without helmets. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that they have to choose for themselves. This one takes an edge, and it's a fortuitous boundary here for the Sri Lankan Lions. That was an uncharacteristically quiet over for them. Just uh, two runs off it before that edge. And, of course, the Sri Lankan Lions still end up with an extremely healthy total of 151 for two. That was some incredibly exceptional batting. Yeah, that was a real master class. But, I mean, a pretty decent over in that last over, which kept them to just 151. I thought they were going to end up with 160, 165. So... A little bit of respite for the Black Caps just there, but still 151 is a formidable total to have to chase down. So it's going to take all their big guns to fire if they want to get the win today. And of course, let's take a look at the highlights. And of course, the innings, we saw a little bit of a shuffle in the batting lineup. Roshan City of Ordon was sent up to open the batting, and that was a terrific decision. He made 47 runs of 26 deliveries, and look at how cleanly he struck the ball, and so did his partner, Akila Kalugula, who made his second half century of the day. He made such, so many big blows, going at a strike rate of 300 to get to his 51. These were some terrific shots, just playing that one over fine leg. Not too much they could do. This was just an absolute battering. And then City Rodana, we saw how strong he was to extra cover. I mean, try getting behind any of those balls. They were uh, sent like an absolute laser. And then we take a look at this one. It was popped up in the air. Chaitan Sharma had quite a chase. He was a very, very busy fielder out there. Getting sent all over the place. I mean, the ball was like a magnet <laughs> towards him. And uh, this is another very good stroke. We just see, I mean, this opening partnership was terrific. It was uh, worth 88 runs. And uh, they really just uh, knocked the Black Caps out of this innings very, very early. As, of course, we see our very own Ruby Punchel slipping over there. As uh, one thing you have to say that was really good about them was the fact that they targeted those straight boundaries terrifically well. And look at those two. A nice, well-earned fist bump for uh, Akila Kalugala, who made a good 51. And it was then caught out in the deep by Tajinder Kumar off the bowling of Chetan Sharma. But no real respite for the Black Caps as uh, Chamal Sudun would come in. He would just continue right where Akila Kalugala left off. He went at a strike rate of 275 to get his 33 runs. He was striking cleanly, hit three sixes, three fours, and we saw everything from him. You know, you had a death stroke, some classy shots, good placement, big blows. It was a complete innings, but of course he would just see it, get a razor through an edge, through to Bhupinder Singh. That was caught well by Raj, beg your pardon, that was caught well by Bhupinder Singh off the bowling of Rajwinder Brar. And then of course we saw Srinath Rajit 
come in at the end, hit a big six, hit a big four, and then, uh, well, the main man, Roshan City Vardana, he uh, guided this side throughout the innings, and that was one of the most comical moments of the innings, as uh, this one just, uh, the bat just slipped out of his hand and went off. Well, ended up uh, somewhere behind square leg. And then this little uh, fortunate edge at the end meant that uh, Sri Lankan Lions ended up with 151 for two. And of course, uh, well, a great, great set bit of batting here by the Sri Lankan Lions. And I have to tell you, it's been a real pleasure to be alongside with you here, Stefan. And thank you very much for taking your time out to join us in the commentary box. It's been an absolute pleasure, Nish. And thanks to everybody. I've got to run out there now and do the toss for the last match. So thank you very much, thank guys. You. Cheers. And of course, uh, make sure to join us shortly as in just a few moments, we will be bringing you the second innings as the Black Caps, well, they have a big task at hand as, uh, well, they'll be looking to chase down a target of 152. Join us in just a few moments.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to Ipsodas for the uh, second innings of this terrific match between the Sri Lankan Lions and the Black Caps. Of course, uh, we've seen the Sri Lankan Lions defend totals successfully twice so far this day. And now they'll look to make it three times today. So let's see what happens here. It's Buddhika Mahesh bowling the first ball. And that's a nice ball first up. Very interesting that he decides to go around the wicket to the left-hander. And the Sri Lankan Lions have decided to promote Mangala Gunasekra up the order. Well, let's see how he continues. This is a good first ball. And uh, just waiting for the umpire's call here. That looks like a legal delivery. But I mean, Butika Mahesh bowling exactly where the Black Caps failed to bowl earlier which is just getting that nice full and wide length, which is uh, outside the batsman's arc. Now this is a wider one. So we saw Wudzika Mahesh uh, bowl a few wides in the uh, previous match against the Black Caps. This is the second time these two sides are facing each other today. Bowl three wides in that game. It was a little bit too expensive for his liking. Gave up 28 runs of two overs, but... Ball bowler of his quality, you expect him to bounce right back. We did see, we did see some terrific balls. He was a little unlucky not to get a wicket. He created two nice opportunities, and uh, Mungo looking to sacred as well to get out of the way of that. Of course, uh, this is the third uh, different team Mungo looking to sacred has played for here in the European Cricket Series in Cyprus. Saw so him feature for the Punjab Lions the very first time he. Featured here in Cyprus. That was back in July 2020, then in 2021. Saw him play a handful of games for the Sri Lankan Lions. Not too many, but now he's uh, here playing for the Black Caps. And a big swing and miss again for Gunasekar. But, of course, very interesting thing was that Gunasekar averaged 96 in that very first DCS. He was in terrific form. No one could stop him. His uh, strike rate for the tournament was uh, just under 280. And then all of a sudden, uh, back in 2021, it just seemed like everything went away for him. It he just had a hip injury while playing uh, volleyball. Oh, is there an edge there? Shrunken Lions think there is, but the umpire disagrees. And we take another look at this one. Big swing, and he uh, whiffs of that one. Mangala going to Sacra. So Mangala, of course, he's a very talented volleyball player as well. And he unfortunately has suffered hip injury playing volleyball. He just wasn't quite himself that tournament. Struggled to make more than six or seven runs most games as uh, this is a beautiful shot by Mangala Gunasekra. That's going to go away for four. So he opens his account in style. Very classy shot. You uh, just love to see cover drives in a T10 cricket. That's, that's just one for the purists, isn't it? What a shot. And uh, one ball left in the over. It's been a Fairly decent one so far at Budika Mahesh, despite that boundary. Let's see if he can close it in style, or if Mangala's just found his, uh, set his eye in, and oh, he's cleaned him up. That is a terrific ball by Budika Mahesh. Top, top stuff, bowling full and straight. And you have to like the length that uh, Budika Mahesh has bowled throughout this first over. And we're really seeing him at his very best right here. Uh, might have gone for a few runs in the previous match, but he's just been on the money so far this over. And this is a big, big battle to win for him. You know, Mangala Gunasekar, a very dangerous batsman. Saw him make 24 of 12 in that last match. Of course, he'd been a little disappointed with himself that uh, he couldn't quite make the 11 runs that were needed in the final over. But unfortunately here, he has to depart, having made just uh, four runs of six deliveries. Of course, we're 131 matches since we uh, last saw a golden ball here on the European Cricket Network. And boy, these two sides came very, very close to delivering us one, didn't they? Uh, the Sri Lankan Lions just eking a victory out earlier today by one run uh, against the uh, Black Caps. So a terrific start for the Sri Lankan Lions and the Black Caps, who, of course, uh, need to fly right out of the gates. 
aren't quite able to get it going. Of course, as we mentioned, this is the third time today the Sri Lankan Lions are defending a total. They won the previous two matches. And of course, uh, they did it defending much lower totals than the one they're defending right now. They uh, defended a target of 120 against the Black Caps last time out. And they started off the day with a good defense against Markhor as well. This one is played away by Kulvinder Singh. It's a really good shot. Uh, so that length just uh, allows him to play it away to that vacant leg side boundary. Yeah, this is a terrific shot by Kulvinder Singh. We've seen him really uh, power shots through that straight boundary, but he's trying to show us the different facets to his game. But yeah, earlier today, we saw the Sri Lankan Lions set a target of 136 from Markhor, and they were able to defend that as well. So they've been very good with the bat so far today. And uh, it's just really been the perfect formula for a team batting for a set of big total, put a lot of pressure on the opposition, and then uh, ask your bowlers to deliver, and uh, everything's worked so far for them. And that's a full toss. It's a rather poor delivery, and Rajit will be a little bit disappointed with that. As there is, of course, match referee Stefan Gooch with a sensational bit of fielding. He's got... Uh, Project manager Sam Williams right next to him. And a great, great shot. Just takes a bounce for the boundary. And some good fielding behind the boundary ropes by the ECN crew. I think uh, I think some of our ECN crew has uh, fielded a lot better than even the, a lot of the players involved. So, boy, we've got some terrific cricketers in our blue crew. This one's uh, just a plate uppishly and... Uh, it's going to be the single. They scamper across in time. So a good response by Rajith. He was struck for, for a couple of boundaries right at the start of this over. That's a full toss again, and he's going to be punished for that one. Rajiv just getting it wrong this over. It's uh, the first ball. Pavan Deep has played. We saw him. He looked really solid in the first game. Made a very nice uh, score of 21. And he's just going to look to uh, continue on that form so far this match. And, of course, if they keep handing him dollies like that, it uh, shouldn't be too difficult for him. But the biggest difference between uh, this over by Rajiv and the previous one by Buddhika Mahesh is the length. I think he's just got it all wrong so far, Rajith. You know, Mahesh just nailed it throughout the over. This one's uh, played down the ground. It's going to take one bounce before going to Chamal Sadoon, who's out at long on. One ball to go in this over. It's been a slightly expensive one so far, but the Black Caps, of course, do need to go. It's just over 16 and over, so it's uh, really at that stage where a 14 run over is uh, basically considered average. Well, let's see, Kulvinder Singh, he's uh, certainly someone who can uh, end it in style, and uh, boy, I, I think that's a bug that's uh, just uh, probably uh, just coming to his eye. There's a fair few insects around this ground these uh, last uh, few days. Of course, uh, everyone who watched yesterday's broadcast knows uh, some of the struggles we had with mosquitoes yet last night. And Kulwinder Singh gets a hold of this one. It's coming straight to the commentary tent. And uh, good, good shot there by Kulwinder Singh. He ends with a four, and that is a terrific over for the Black Caps. That's exactly the rate they need to go at. Once again, the length just too short by uh, Srinath Rajith, and he's going to be punished for that. And it's a 18 run over for the Black Caps. So uh, managed to bounce back well. And of course, uh, let's take a look at the standings for Group B for the Sri Lankan Lions. As we mentioned, they've uh, had a couple of matches already so far today. This is their third one. We saw them successfully defend a total against uh, these very Black Caps as well as Markor. And then Markor, of course, uh, predict picked up a victory against the Nicosia Fighters in what was a very, very one-sided affair. Whereas... Uh, these Black Caps are looking for their first win. But you have to say, though, I mean, uh, you could say the, the scheduler has done them a disfavor by uh, putting them up against the Sri Lankan Lions in their very first uh, couple of matches. But 
this group is just full of heavyweights, as you can see from that table. It's, uh, it's been labeled the group of death. And we're certainly going to see a lot of giants slain over this coming week as uh, swipes across the line, but he gets a hold of it. And that's a really, really big six. So a terrific shot by Pavandeep. And what's really impressed me about Pavandeep throughout this day is uh, he's shown the ability to both hit the big shots, some of the big sixes, and then when he needs to, he's just got that deft touch and that deft stroke. So there's some really good cricketers in uh, both these sides. And I think... You know, Stefan made this point as well, and uh, we both agreed that the standard of cricket in this group is really, really high. And I think this next week of cricket is going to be the best week here in Cyprus. This one's up, played away by Pavandeep. Oh, and a slight misfield by Roshan City of Ardana. He's uh, been very eager in the field, but a few have just slipped past him. And he just uh, pats his chest and says, that's on me, that's on me. All smiles, though, for the Sri Lankan Lions. That he just tries to attack the ball and uh, one goes past him. As we've mentioned, it's uh, not the easiest field to field on. I mean, it's a extremely hard surface. This one struck down the ground. It's a bit of a chase for Sadoon, but he does very well uh, to get to that one and cut it out, prevent it from going for a boundary. He's taking a bowl here to Kulvinder Singh, the Dika Mahesh. Uh, you know what a dangerous batsman he is, and he uh, that's really where he needs to be, isn't it? That uh, full and wide uh, Yorker. I mean, I know that one's been called a wide, but the plan is absolutely spot on here by Mahesh. Let's take another look at this one. Yeah, that one's uh, it's touch and go, but a good decision by the umpire. Of course, the umpires are in the middle are Haman Ahmed. He's joined by Abdul Rahman. And once again, it's the right idea, but he just can't quite execute it, Buddhika Mahesh. And uh, you can see just a little bit of a shrug of the shoulder by him. And uh, the, the captain, Dalit Patirana, is just going to come across and have a quick word with him. He changes the angle here, interestingly enough, uh, Buddhika Mahesh. Coming back round the wicket. Two more balls left in his spell, and let's see how he rounds it out. So that's the fuller one, aimed at the stumps. And this is a good throw, really good throw, and... Uh, because when they're saying just contemplating if there's a chance to benefit off overthrows, not so because there's uh, some good backing up uh, by the Sri Lankan Lions. Let's take a look at this. Oh, it's just taking a, a nasty bounce off the side of the pitch. Uh, we've seen that a few times so far this tournament, and it's uh, thrown off a lot of bowlers and wicket keepers. That's a big swing and a miss there for Pavandeep. So a very good bowling spell for Buddhika Mahesh. Just 18 runs he gave up in his two overs. And he's certainly done a job for his captain. As uh, I think the Sri Lankan Lions will be pretty pleased that they've restricted the Black Caps to just 36 runs. Uh, and at this point in the power play, of course, uh, keep in mind, as this says right there, the Sri Lankan Lions were 44 for no loss at this stage. They came flying out of the gates thanks to Roshan City Vardana and Kalugala. You see Chamal Sadoon come in, bowling right after the power play, and uh, it's a really good move, of course. Uh, we know Sadoon, he's had a really successful ECS career for the Sri Lankan Lions, taken loads of wickets during his time. And he always bowls so economically, doesn't he? Such a tight bowler. And interestingly enough, he's going to go around the wicket as well. And it's a lowish full toss. That's not quite able to get away. And... Uh, 
It goes straight to Asan Shalika for a single. And then he goes over the wicket to Pavandeep. This one's up, play up in the air. Is this a catching opportunity? No, it isn't. It's going to go over. Kamal raises his head. And that's a big six. So Pavandeep really looking to power the Black Caps here. It's just a, probably not as full as Chamal Sudun would have liked. And that just allows Pavandeep a chance to get underneath it. This is a terrific shot. And uh, we've seen some clean hitting by both these sides. In today's match, the standard of cricket has truly been very high. And this time he goes across the line and he picks out the gap. He splits the two fielders, Nalingamagi and Kamal Reyes out in the deep. So a uh, good little cat and mouse going on here. We can see he just shuffles across the stumps. And he picks out that gap in the boundary. So a little bit of a dilemma here for Nolan Pathirana. How is he going to change things? And what he's decided to do is uh, instead... But having uh, Kamal Reyes a lot squarer, he's brought him in straighter, so they've cut that gap down between the fielder at Cow Corner and then a more traditional deep mid-wicket. again and this time of course uh, thanks to that little change in the field this is cut out well in the deep good work by Nalin Gamage <laughs> off of Kalinder saying you have to be really careful giving him any length you know we saw some of those big forehand slaps down the ground he hit in the previous match and this one's heading straight for the commentary box and uh, a terrific shot, of course. Kulvinder Singh has been aiming for equipment throughout this game. I mean, we do need to tell it. We've been very complimentary all match. Uh, no need to try to target us sitting in the commentary tent. As a good shot by Kulvinder Singh to end the over. So uh, they're now 19 for 8. And that Chum also did over going for 16 runs. So the Black Caps are ticking along at a really good run rate here. Going at just about 13 and over. As we take a look at that graph, I think the important thing for the Black Caps is just that it's trending up. And uh, I think this is going to be a very interesting chase. We know the firepower the Black Caps have. So uh, we saw in Group A, uh, a total of 152 in Group A would have been unattainable for most teams. But I don't think that's going to be the case for Group B teams. These sides, they really look like we're going to have a lot of high-scoring thrillers over these next five or six days. And, you know, there's a... Group A, we saw a lot of uh, a lot of matches where uh, 80, 90 runs might have been enough to give a very thrilling chase as uh, that one goes uh, behind point for a boundary. Dylan Gamage, he's had a had a bit of an issue here, hasn't he? The bowler uh, pulling a bit too short and wide throughout the day. I believe that's uh, Suresh Janaka. Especially with the pace he's bowling at, he needs to really be very tight to the stumps. And this one, a little too short, but uh, there's protection out at that boundary. So it's a well fielded by Kamal Rezu. Interestingly enough, we haven't seen him bowl in this match or the previous match. Of course, we know how, what a key bowler he was for the Sri Lankan Lions in previous ECS tournaments. And uh, still remains the only person to get a hat trick in an ECS in Cyprus. It's popped up in the air, catching chance. This is a big moment. This is a big moment. And this is really, really well taken. Great catch by Akila Kalugala. That's the fifth catch he's taken today. But it's been signaled and no ball by the umpires. So, well, the Sri Lankan Lions, they were just about ready to celebrate. And the umpire gives it a no ball. Oh, what a costly, costly error this is. Oh, look at the looks of devastation on their face. And right as they were ready to celebrate, the umpire just spoils their party. And the signals out of no ball. This one's uh, this free hit's going to be uh, struck away. 
And oh, he's made a mess of that, hasn't he? Oh, he's going to be very disappointed. Ashan Chanaka, he's a, he's a good cricketer, and uh, that's not what you expect from him. That one just bobbles past it. It wasn't even the nastiest bounce you'd see here in Cyprus. Uh, I think we've seen worse. And I think I think he just fails to get down on time. And uh, it's a poor bit of misjudgment and uh, some more free runs for the Black Caps who really need them, who are now going along at the same rate as what the Sri Lankan Lions were. This one's again, he hits across the line and he absolutely clubs it. That one's gone onto the football pitch. And goodness me, we're really lucky there are no games today as it's an Easter Sunday. But boy, I mean, once, uh, once we return to things as normal here in Cyprus uh, during the uh, middle of next week, it's, uh, I'd, I'd really be very careful for some of the kids who are going to be playing football there because uh, a lot of cricket balls could go racing towards them. That is an enormous six by Pavandeep Singh. This one's uh, just a bottom edge, so it's a dot ball to end the over. Rather expensive over for Janaka, who is uh, still balling a little too short and wide. And let's just take another look at that six. That's one of the biggest sixes we've seen so far this tournament. Look at where that lands. My word. He wasn't that far from the mini goal on the other pitch. I mean, of course, you know, Rico's been talking about us potentially giving uh, eight runs to batsmen who can find any of the four goal posts around... Uh, here in the Ypsilas Creek Ground. Imagine if you hit one of the goals on the opposite field. You surely deserve 20 runs for that, especially if it's one of those uh, mini futsal goals. So uh, very, very good stuff here by Pavan Deep, and they're going along at a great rate. And uh, Black Caps now need to go at just over 16 and a half and over. And 83 runs needed up these last 30 balls for them. I think they'll really back themselves now, especially the way they've started. You know, I mean, uh, they can go at it. They can attack. I mean, of course, the Black Caps, they don't have the same issues as uh, some of the sides we saw in Group A. They've got plenty of batting depth and plenty of big hitters as well. And I like this move to just insert Roshan Sidiwardhana into the attack. Uh, we saw how he bowled very economically in the uh, previous match, particularly that last over, and they need him here just to stop the bleeding a little bit as uh, Kulwinder Singh just blocks that one out. One thing I will say about Kulwinder Singh is, uh, you look at his uh, strike rate, he's not someone who's too keen to take the singles. I mean, he's either going to blast it for six or he'll just uh, play out a dot ball. But you can see he's going for that big shot. And uh, just... Uh, Looking for that leg side boundary. There's no 45. So if he gets any bat on that, that's going to go for a boundary. So City Wardena just needs to correct his line, but just in response to that, the uh, mid-wicket has been moved a lot squarer. And uh, there's now an orthodox square leg. This is a chance for a run out. And I think he might be in trouble here, Pavandeep. The umpire says he wants to have another look at it, but Pavandeep, well, he's just taking his gloves off and he looks like he's walking away. And this is a big, big moment. I mean, we've seen how well Pavandeep has been batting so far. And if he's out over here, this could be a huge turning point. Let's take a look at this. Great effort by Roshan City Wardana. You have to say suicidal running. And yeah, he's nowhere near it. He has to go. And uh, he'll be given his marching orders shortly. And he doesn't even wait. He's on his way, Pavandeep. And boy, oh boy, this is a great bit of athletic fielding by Roshan City Wardana. We know he's been a live wire so far in the field. And a terrific throw. Just take a look at that. That is outstanding stuff. And a yup, and a yup. Certainly has every reason to get both his arms up. Of course, as Rico would say, Mano Sariba, both his hands are up. And uh, top, top stop. So uh, it's a very important wicket here for the Black Caps. They've, uh, beg your pardon, the Sri Lankan Lions. You know, this part, that partnership was going along really well. Put the Black Caps in a great position, and now... Pavan Deepa once again gets a start and then has a bit of an unfortunate dismissal. Can't quite get to that 50. Forced that partnership. Worth 64. We'll uh, take another look at this. There wasn't really a run on here. Slightly suicidal running. I mean, neither of these two batsmen, in all honesty, are particularly keen runners. And they don't really have much reason to because they both backed themselves to clear the boundary with ease. This 
one's uh, struck away again. It's going to take one bounce. And again, a little bit of work by Nolan Gamage out there. They've done a good job of uh, plugging that boundary ever since uh, Pavan Deep hit a couple of fours there. Of course, this is a man. You don't need to worry about where the fielders are because he just aims for sixes. And yeah, that's a big swing and a miss. I mean, he doesn't have a chipper or a putter and uh, his golf bag. He's only got a driver and <laughs> he tees off. That's uh, pretty much how uh, Kulvinder Singh plays. And this is a huge hit. Goodness me, this has sailed over the camera tower. Richards, we're going to need to get you a helmet, of course. Uh, uh, fantastic work here by Spring Productions. Of course, a big thank you to Richards, Valentine, who both done an excellent job up in the camera tower, and of course, uh, Martins doing a terrific job as the director of this broadcast. And uh, boy, there's a lot sailing uh, past that camera tower so far when the Black Caps are hitting. I mean, they always target that straight, short boundary. Uh, this one's just hit the pads. It's uh, pitching outside the leg stump, so uh, they're going to live to fight another day. Let's just take another look at this. Yep, no chance over there. As the over comes to an end, so despite that big shot, it was still a very good over for Roshan City Worth. They're not just the eight runs off it. And of course, we'll take a look at the scorecard. Of course, Pavan Deep was absolutely sensational, played some good shots. Now, what I really enjoyed about his innings was that, you know, he really showed a, a vast array of strokes. It wasn't just bludgeoning the ball. He hit some nice-looking uh, cover drives as well. And now, of course, uh, Tejwinder Singh, we know his uh, striking ability. He's an absolutely br brutal striker of the ball. I mean, he made 26 of 9 in the uh, previous match between these two. Hit three fours and two big sixes. We're going to see Chamal Sudun inserted into the attack. Might have gone for 16 on his first over, but I don't think this is a, an unwise move. Sudun, a very experienced operator, someone who has plenty of ECS wickets to his name. I think it's just a good idea to bring him in here to try to stop the bleeding. And, uh, oh, that's a little bit of footwork there by Srinath Rajit. We've generally seen some very good, uh, rather more uh, orthodox fielding by the Sri Lankan Lions, but... Raji sticks a foot out over there to prevent a boundary. And what well, we can just see, uh, Kulwinder Singh, who's on strike, he's just putting his gloves back on. And he's just staring straight down the ground at that camera tower. And he hits it straight again. And this is a catching opportunity. He's been put down by Roshan City Warden. And that is an enormous moment. And you can tell from his reaction. Look at that one. He knows what this means. This could be a pivotal moment in this match. Kulwinder Singh put down. I mean, we saw City Vardana take some very, very important catches in that previous match. Tejwinder Singh, Lovedeep Singh. Yeah, now this is a lowish full toss. Just uh, hit straight to Nolan Gamage. I mean, you can still see he's very disappointed with himself, Roshan City Vardana. I mean, granted, that's been hit really hard at him. It's at chest height, but he's a terrific fielder, and he normally takes those. This one's gone up in the air. Once again, it's gone to Roshan City Rodana. Will he take it this time? He certainly will. That's a great catch, and look at that. Well, that celebration tells you all you need to know. It's a little slow step after taking that catch, and he's got his hands on his head. And there's all uh, wry smiles all around. Yeah, he knows he's been let off after uh, putting down that catch earlier. And Kulwinder Singh just not able to make that dropped catch count. And we know how he plays. He always targets that straight boundary. And uh, this one was very, very well taken. And that's a nice celebration. Really like that. <laughs> Could even call it the walking lunch celebration. But uh, that brings the end to uh, Kulwinder Singh's innings as he makes 27 runs of 16 deliveries. And uh, this is a very, very good moment here for the Sri Lankan Lions. They've got two new batsmen out there. They've, uh, they've basically gotten rid of both the batsmen involved in that major partnership. 
that huge 64 run one between uh, Kulvinder Singh and Pavandeep. And now both Tejwinder and Bupinder might need a ball or two to settle in. Of course, we know these Black Caps batsmen, they uh, are big hitters. And that's going down the left side. It'll be a wide. There's just a chance here for the Sri Lankan Lions to sneak in a few more dot balls. Uh, just try to get that, that required to climb up a fair bit. It's uh, currently at just under 22, but we do know uh, the Black Caps have plenty of power hitting and can uh, really just hit out of the screws with ease as that one uh, is a single. And uh, singles won't really hurt the Sri Lankan Lions at this stage. Big swing and a miss for Tej Rinder Singh, but he's going to be aided by uh, Byers over here. That's uh, really not like Nolan Pathirana, of course. He's a uh, brilliant, usually with the wicket keeping. And oh, he just misjudges the bounce. It doesn't quite bounce as much as he expects. Hits the inside of his pad and goes away for Byers. So, uh, desperately needed boundary there for the Black Caps at the end. Of course, this required is fairly high. I mean, with most teams at 22, we'd say that they probably don't have much of a chance, but. We know the power the Black Caps have, so they're just about hanging in this game at 86 for three. So the captain's now going to have to do a little bit of thinking to see who's going to bowl these last three overs. I mean, Siri Wardana will certainly bowl one of them, but he does go for Janaka here, and uh, Janaka's uh, just been a little bit wayward with his bowling. He's been a bit too short and wide. We saw him go for 17 in his first over, and you really feel like the Black Caps are going to try to target him in this over. Goes for the big shot. And Sadoon just tries to get in the way of it. It was a stellar effort, but it goes for four. And he just hope has not a uh, that just clipped him on the side of his cheek or something. Uh well, I'm just having a look at him. No, it doesn't seem to have. I think he's just uh glad it hasn't hit him actually. It's uh, somehow bounced over him. Much needed boundary here with the black caps. Of course, that's the wicket keeper, Bupinder Singh. This one's uh, struck absolutely sweetly. And this is another one that's been sent into the Olive Groves. And what an enormous six. And as we said, everyone in this Black Caps lineup has the ability to clear the fence. This is an impressive shot. Just hits it perfectly, time to perfection. And it's just look, take a look at that. He is laser focused, Bupinder Singh. He knows the task at hand. And he's willing to do whatever is necessary to accomplish it. 56 needed of 16 now. And that's cleaned him up. Huge wicket there by Janaka. He has the last laugh. And we saw four, then a six, and then Janaka, he comes back. And that is an important wicket, though. Bupinder Singh, if he'd have kept going, he might have uh, really put the Sri Lankan lines under a lot of pressure. So a good comeback here for the bowler as he gets this wicket. But... Every batsman that's going to come in now is just going to—they're going to keep swinging. Just a shattered set of stumps. That is a good bowling by Jonica. That's really where he needs to be. I mean, we saw in that first over in particular, everything was uh, extremely short and wide. But if you can just keep pitching it at that line and length. It's going to be very hard to get away for the uh, remainder of this tournament. Uh, here we see Sukjinder Singh coming in to bat the left-hander. So uh, they've got a lot of different weapons, the Black Caps, with the bat in hand, but not too many left-handers. So let's see how the left-hand option fares for them. And as you can imagine, for the left-hander, plenty of protection out on that leg side boundary. And yeah, Sukjinder so just looking a, a little out of place. With that first shot, maybe he really needs to get a uh, Tej Winder Singh on strike over here. I think uh, that needs to be the plan. And I don't expect them to uh, <laughs> run this one too hard, as of course Tej Winder Singh. You do have to say it's rather inappropriate that he's uh, taking his gloves off and he's just uh, holding his gloves on one hand while running. But they only need a single over here, and I think Tej Winder he's got to try to get this one away. He needs to 
needs to hit a six. He has to find a way to clear the boundary. 55 runs needed of 13. And he isn't quite able to get a hold of it. But at least he gets a single and he'll keep strikes. So 54 needed now the last two overs. That is looking like a mammoth task, even for a side with uh, all the power that the Black Caps possess. And uh, the Black Caps are 98 for four at the four over mark. So uh, are the Sri Lankan Lions about to do the double on the Black Caps? As of course we uh, take a look at this graph over here. And you just see that run rate ticking in the wrong direction for the Black Caps, uh, courtesy of those wickets. And of course, there was a little bit of debate on the chat a couple days ago where we had some people making the point that, well, wickets don't even matter in T10 cricket. But I think at least certainly in Cypriot T10 cricket, we do see that as the case because a lot of the sides, especially the teams we saw in Group A, just don't have the batting depth to uh, continue hitting throughout the innings. The Black Caps are certainly an exception to that rule, but Wickets have done quite a bit to slow them down. Oh, no, that was uh, not very wise by Tej Winder saying that was going extremely wide and he gets away, gets in the way of it unnecessarily. Yeah, no need to do that. That's not the first time we've seen that during this first week in Cyprus. Uh, a lot of bowlers have struggled for extras, so just step away, let it go down the leg side. I know he's cleaned him up. That is a great, great bit of bowling by Rajiv. And uh, that's Kassel, Tej Winder Singh. And now you really feel like the Black Caps' hopes are fading. It's going to take one hell of a miracle now for them to try to win this game. Tej Winder Singh, the big hitter, he has to depart. And sensational bit of bowling here by Rajiv. We, of course, saw that he did a good job in the penultimate over of the last match as well. Take a look at this one. Hits the off stump. There's Winder saying he had to go for the big shot and he misses this. And it's the classic case of you miss, I hit. That's limited over the cricket for you. As the Black Caps are now 98 for 5. And uh, really hoping for a miracle here. They need to pretty much hit a 6 on every ball now with that required at 32.4. So looks like the Sri Lankan Lions are about to make it. Three wins in three for the day. What an impressive start for this team. As we're going to see Kumar... Getting ready to face this ball. He's going to strike this one away towards mid-wicket. And you really have to commend them. I mean, they've uh, they've been sensational. I mean, the plan has been quite simple for them. They win the toss. They like to bat first. They put a big total on the board, put a lot of pressure on the opposition. Then their bowlers do a terrific job of uh, defending in the second innings. But uh, full credit to the batsman, really. I think it just starts with that top order. Yeah, this one's going to clean up <laughs> Singh as well. And up, he gets the wings out there, Rajiv. And now wickets are starting to tumble at a regular interval for the Black Caps. It's just a case of you go and I'll follow you. And uh, this is good, good bowling by Rajiv. He's just bowling at the stumps. And he knows a lot of these lower order batsmen, if uh, they miss the ball, it's probably going to go on to crash onto the stumps. And the sixth wicket falls for the Black Caps as they're just petering out here near the end. You have to say they did a great job for... Uh, about uh, half the innings, but uh, they've just fallen away at the end. It's uh, too large a target to chase in all honesty, 152. But they've certainly put in a valiant effort, but a little bit of, there will certainly be a little bit of concern in the Black Caps camp. I mean, I know we've seen a lot of positive things from them these first couple of games, but you're the defending champs. You don't want to start off with a couple of losses, do you? I mean, you want to come in, you want to stamp your authority and tell everyone, look, there's a reason why we're champions. And this one is uh, just played towards the offside. And a good bit of fielding by Ashan Chanaka. Yeah, he'll be a mightily happy man, won't he? Nolene Pathirana right there in the middle of your screen. I mean, his side has just done everything perfectly. I think they've just got everything spot on so far today. And as we say, it just all starts in that top order with the bat, I mean... Let's just take a look at this ball by Rajiv. The final ball of the over. Takes some pace off it. And Chetan Sharma isn't able to make any contact with that. As, of course, the Black Caps needed almost, uh, oh, pretty much, unattainable 53 runs off the last six balls. It's uh, <laughs> going to need, a, we're probably going to need a good 30-40 uh, run over. Maybe part 30-40 ball over to uh, even give them a chance to get close to that one. As we take a look at these bowling figures. Roshan Sudhi Wardhana will pull, probably bowl this final over, and he's been really, really good. And then Srinath Rajith, he came back so well in that second over, did, didn't he? I mean, his first over went for a few runs, 
but he's uh, come back well. And Bundika Mahesh, he was terrific in that power play. Bold, uh, some really good lines and lengths. I know he went for a few runs in the first game, but he's come back terrifically well since. So full credit to the Sri Lankan Lions. They've uh, been very professional with the ball in hand. Of course, they had to really survive that big onslaught by Pavandeep and uh, Tejwinder Singh. Beg your pardon, Nicole Winder Singh in the middle. But since then, it's uh, it's been all the Sri Lankan Lions, really. They've had complete control of this innings, and they're going to get a well-deserved third win of the day and, you know, continue to create a gap right at the top of the table. This one's just struck quite well. Going to go underneath the fielder. Of course, uh, this is the last match the Sri Lankan Lions will uh, play today, but the Black Caps, uh, they're going to be right back out after this one. They're facing the Nicosia Fighters. We saw how much the Fighters uh, struggled earlier today. They had a really, really rough loss against Markor, losing that one by 81 runs. So, as we said during that match, the only way is up for them as uh, Sir so Wethernay going for the leg stump Yorker. So I think the Black Caps will uh, honestly be glad to see the Nicosia Fighters. No disrespect to the Fighters, we do know that they're considered a bit of a weak link in this group, but certainly a feisty underdog side. And uh, the Black Caps are going to want to go out in that match and really uh, stamp their authority. This one's been very well struck, but it's been struck straight at Tamal Sadun who's going to put it down. That's a very rare drop by him. But at this stage of the game, it's not really going to alter the outcome. It's probably going to annoy Roshan City more than a little bit. He misses out on a chance to get a wicket, but he's all smiles. He doesn't care. He, he's a team player, and uh, I think he's just delighted to see his, uh, his team close in on a third consecutive victory. And that is a brilliant bit of bowling. And yep, that's Siri Vardana's celebration. Just raises a finger to tell Kumar that he is out. As another wicket tumbles for the Black Caps. And it's all smiles for the Sri Lankan Lions. I mean, they're just having a great time out there. You know, it's been a terrific Sunday for them. An Easter Sunday here in Cyprus. And uh, it's been a very festive one for the Sri Lankan Lions. And uh, the next time we'll see the Sri Lankan Lions, of course, will be uh, right at the start of the morning tomorrow. 8, 8.30 local time. 5.30 GMT when they'll be taking on Markor for the second time. And... They're going to go into that match with so much confidence. So much confidence. I mean, the way they've played, it's uh, they're really looking uh, a truly formidable outfit as uh, this one just uh, played away towards mid-wicket. Of course, we do know the story with them. They've uh, come third numerous times in the European Cricket Series here in Cyprus. And, you know, they said right at the start of this tournament, look, we really want to make a final. We want to make a final and we want to win in the final. And we know this side has the quality. It's just that things, you know, in certain key stages haven't quite gone their way. But I think, I think this looks like a much improved Sri Lankan Lions side. You know, they've got that firepower, that hitting ability. Uh, the City of Orlana is going to go back and start again. And that, to me, is the big difference between the Sri Lankan Lions this time around. And in the past, they've got that explosive hitting now. You know, if you look at it with the likes of Kalugala, Way Roshan City Wardana striking the ball as that one goes away for a four. But it won't really make a difference to the outcome of the match as the Sri Lankan Lions will take this one by 45 runs. And what a terrific start for the Lions. Three wins on the bounce to start the tournament. And you can see how broad the grins are on their faces. And uh, well, we're potentially looking at a side that could go on to win it all. This has been a stellar, stellar effort. And it's just uh, handshakes all around. I think uh, what's been so impressive is just the way they've batted. And for me, that is a big difference between this Sri Lankan Lions side and previous ones. It's the explosive hitting they have now and the explosive hitting they, of course, demonstrated in the first three matches today. Well, let's take a look at the highlights of this uh, Sri Lankan Lions win. Oh, we saw Budika Mahesh bowling uh, right up top. Mangala Gunasekara would hit a nice four. That was a beautiful looking color drive, but he'd be bold, clean bold right after that. A terrific bit of bowling by Mahesh. He was terrific, wasn't he? Terrific, outstanding bowling figures for him. One for 18 off his two overs. And then we saw this great little partnership between Pavandeep and Kulvinder Singh. It was worth a good 64 runs. And it was this stage where the Black Caps were just hanging in. And uh, their, their current run rate was uh, fairly similar to the required. And uh, they were striking the ball so sweetly. I mean, of course, uh, 
We know that Pavandeep Singh, he's a really, really good all-round cricketer. He showed a lot of his ability. At this point, we were just wondering if uh, things were slipping away from the Sri Lankan line, that they were just going to open the door for uh, the Black Caps. We saw just a couple of mishaps in the field. That was just about the only errors we saw from them. And boy, that was an enormous moment in the match. Wasn't it a real turning point? Roshan City Royals are running out Pavandeep. That was terrific. I mean, Pavandeep was looking absolutely sensational. He made 40 runs of the 16 deliveries he faced. And City of Arlington would put that catch down. He felt really guilty, but just two balls later, he would get another opportunity once again off the batting of Kulwinder Singh. And that would be the end for him. And of course, uh, we would see Kulwinder Singh try to strike a few. He hit 1-4 and 1-6. And this was, a, that, this was that six, a beautiful one sent straight to the Olive Groves. But then he would be cleaned up by Suresh Janaka as well. Janaka getting one onto the stumps. And then shortly after that, Tej Winder Singh would depart. And really, over here, where it was all unraveled for the Black Caps. And then the Sri Lankan Lions would just go into party mode. Getting a few wickets near the end. Chamal Sadun would put that one down. It would be completely inconsequential to the outcome of the match. As we see the dismissal of Sukhjinder Singh. And Roshan Sira, that a boy, he was delighted, wasn't he? Good little shot there by Chetan Sharma at the end. But it wasn't enough as the... Sri Lankan Lions took this one by 45 runs and made it three wins on the bounce. So a terrific start for the Sri Lankan Lions as they do the double to the Black Caps. And of course, well, we've got one more match right after this because the Black Caps, well, they have a chance to rebound after that loss because they'll be facing the Nicosia Tigers in 20 minutes' time. We'll leave you with a scorecard here, but please don't leave us as we'll be back with some great cricket in 20 minutes.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fan Code, and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to Ipsodas for the final game of the day. As a boy, it's been an absolutely beautiful Easter Sunday here in Cyprus as you catch a fantastic drone shot of this gorgeous village. Of course, this final match will take place between the Black Caps and the Nicosia Fighters. And well, let's over, let's head over to meet the new the captains. We're alongside match referee Stefan Gooch. Okay, Nicosia Fighters to call. Heads is the call. It's tails. Yep. Okay, good luck, guys. Have a great game. All the best. The Black Caps have won the toss and they'll be having a bat. Back over to you in the commentary box, Nish. Thank you very much. And of course, the Black Caps, who've uh, failed to chase down totals a couple of times so far today by the Sri Lankan Lions, are deciding they're going to go out there and post a, an in for a formidable total of their own. As we, of course, take a look at the fantasy dashboard for the Black Caps and the Nicosia Fighters. Of course, the Black Caps are not 0 and 1, they are currently 0 and 2 after uh, two defeats on the bounce against the Sri Lankan Lions. The Casilla Fighters started off with a forgettable performance, and uh, that was a, a real bit of a disaster for them, and they'll be looking to bounce back. Of course, we know they were a lot better than that, and we hope to see some of their quality on display in this final match of the day and what's been a terrific day of cricket so far. I mean, the action here in Group B has been really entertaining. I mean, you know, rightfully so. This, this group was called the Group of Death, it's um, quality teams all around, and I think it's been a lot more high scoring. We've seen some terrific cricket, some good shot making, some good bowling. I mean, Group A was uh, probably the group of nervy, low scoring, tight finishes where every boundary was uh, worth its weight in gold. Whereas I think here it's been a lot more free scoring, and we've been seeing, seeing runs flowing all day. So uh, we're just. 20 overs away now from the conclusion of action. Here on Easter Sunday in Cyprus. Of course, uh, for those of you celebrating here in the Eastern Orthodox world, it's a truly momentous day, of course, as uh, people here in Cyprus will greet one another with uh, greetings of Christos Anesti today, which means uh, Christ has risen. And, of course, uh, both these teams will look to rise back after a couple of uh, defeats for both of them. And... Uh, the skipper here, Anwar Hossein, I mean, he had a very difficult time in that match against Markor, and I think he'll be looking to put on a much better show and really, really lead by example. And that's a very, very wide delivery, and it's a bit worrying here for the Nicosia fighters. Of course, we can understand he tried to push it wide because he saw Pavan Deep advancing down the wicket, but... You know, this is the manner in which the previous match started, didn't it? We had that over bowled by uh, Ahmed where he had gave several wides away. Seven wides and no balls in the first over. That really set the tone for the Nicosia fighters. And they just struggled for the rest of the innings. They were just trying to claw back. It's got to set a good example here. And that is a terrific ball first up by Anwar Hussain. That's what he needs to do. That's the first legal delivery and it's a terrific delivery. That's where he needs to be. As we said, look at that movement. Look how look how much it moves away from the batsman. I mean, this Nicosia fighter side has a lot more potential. And uh, they displayed in that previous match. They were a good team. Goes for that leg stump. Yorker has played very well by Pavan. Deep in a good bit of fielding. So some competitive cricket here. That was uh, Molir al-Islam out at mid-wicket. Fielding that one. And surely, surely we see a good fight back from the fighters. Uh, pardon the pun in this match. You know, there, there's no way that we see some of the similar issues. And now look, they've got two fielders outside the ring. Remember, they would only put one fielder outside the ring in that previous match. And this is absolutely drilled by Kulminder Singh, who has been sent up. To uh, open the batting, of course, uh, these two had that terrific 64-run partnership, and the captain said, look, you know, you're my two best batsmen. You're my two batsmen who are in terrific form right now. I'll let both of you open the batting and take full advantage of the power play. You like that by Rajvinder Brar. And just look at that menacing look by Kulvinder Singh, a truly terrific athlete, big, tall, strong player. 
Goes again. This one is high up in the air. Monirul Islam is converging underneath it. And now he's managed to take it one-handed. That is an outstanding catch at the end of the day. That is truly terrific. And for a moment, you just thought he was going to let that one slip past him. And the catch managed to go behind him somehow, but he puts a hand up and he plucks it one-handed. That is a, the big spark this fighter's side need after that tough loss earlier. And this will energize the entire team. This one goes high up in the air. It was never going to be easy. And take a look at this. Money Rulislav just puts his right hand back and says, well, that's as easy as it gets. <laughs> that is truly sensational. And boy, I think he can't even believe it. <laughs> well, absolutely stunning scenes here. And uh, these are the biggest smiles we've seen across the uh, Nicosia fighters' faces in a long, long time. And maybe, just maybe, this is the spark they need to uh, rejuvenate their day after that forgettable performance against Mark Hor. So a big, big wicket here as Kulvinder Singh has to depart. And of course, we'll take another look at that one gone up in the air he just takes it one hand and look how casually he takes it <laughs> take a look at that so nonchalant the one struck down the ground and it's going to go away for a four so uh as we can see this is the case with uh, pretty much all the black caps none of them take too long trying to settle into the innings they're uh, right into proceedings as from the get-go and of course i have to say by hussein yeah, probably a bit too short and wide needs to bowl a little bit fuller at the stumps you know, we saw that bowl he gave to uh, Pavan Deep, which was terrific. That's exactly where he needs to bowl. And oh, he's clearly tried to bowl a lot straighter, but he gets it wrong. It turns into a juicy full toss that is struck away. It's a boundary, and it's a very good over for the Black Caps in terms of the run scored. But the big story from that over is going to be that outstanding catch by Money Roll Islam. Boy, that might be up there as one of the great highlights of the day that we'll surely see at the end of this broadcast. So uh, Black Caps 16 for one is of course, let's take a look at the bat versus ball wall. Of course, the Black Caps fancied as big favorites here against the Nicosia fighters. No surprise, I mean, uh, they're the defending champs and we know the fighters have often struggled for wins in the European cricket series, but I have to say they're a very good underdog side and someone capable of causing an upset. Even if they don't make it to the quarterfinals, they're gonna seriously dent one of these uh, other team's chances of making it there. They could spoil someone's party. So watch out for this team, man. So, and Ahmed, we saw him struggle a lot with extras in the first match, but we did see that when he got it on the money, he was really effective. And similar issues here again. That's going to go away for four wides. And it's the first minimo of the match. So Sorov Ahmed doesn't seem like he's rectified the problems that hurt him earlier. And I have to say... Mamum Howlader, who's uh, feeling out fine leg, he needs to do a better job trying to cut that one out. I mean, they pretty much have such a fine, short, fine leg. I mean, you could almost call him a, a backstop. There's, I think he needs to do a better job, but that's that's a better ball by Ahmed. And look at how much he can swing the ball. And you can tell that when he uh, can get that line and length spot on, he's so difficult to play. But just take a look at that fielding. You've got uh, two fielders right at the top of your screen who are pretty much acting like backstops, aren't they? So they need to. So whenever Ahmed uh, bowls any of these extras, they really should be cutting them out. As, uh, this is a terrific ball, but I think it's just doing a little too much. And uh, the umpire seems to agree. It just indicates that it is sliding down the leg side. Good ball here by Ahmed. And as we've seen, these last two deliveries, he's managed to bowl two legal deliveries. And he's got them right. As you can just see, they're showing some of the some of the glimmers of potential they have. And they can see a fighters. We uh, still haven't seen Altazman bowl. He might bowl the next over. Or it'll be interesting to see if they use him outside the power play. Oh, no, that is another top, top ball. And ever since he's uh, cut out those extras that he bowled, Right at the beginning, he's uh, looking a quality bowler, isn't he, Saurav Ahmed? I know that's a that's a poor delivery by Ahmed, and boy, he's just returned back to his old habits. So I guess old habits die hard. Take a take a look at this one. He's lucky that it even catches the edge of the pitch. 
And it's gone away. I mean, Alvi Chaudhry, you could maybe raise a few question marks about his wicket keeping in these first couple of matches, but Ahmed really isn't helping him with this kind of bowling. Yeah, this is another one that's going to be a wide. And Ahmed, well, he's saying, um, you got to give me that call, don't you? But the umpire's given the right call here. Of course, we had Stefan Gooch on the broadcast earlier. And we, we, we asked him about uh, some of these wide decisions. We know that there's been a lot of debate on the chat about some of these calls. And, you know, Stefan was very clear. Look, if it if it hits the, if it hit goes past the uh, guideline, once it's uh, past the pop increase, then it's going to be called a wide. I mean, this is T10 cricket. And... You have to be pretty harsh with these calls. Uh, so that's a fairly easy call for the umpire to make. As uh, Ahmed, once again, just returning to some of the issues we saw from him earlier this game. Can he just get it on the money again? I mean, you know he could take a wicket if he could just get it on a good length in and around the off stump, that fourth, fifth stump line. And this is it. Over delivery, a chance for a run out, but it's a poor bit of fielding. And oh, the Nicosia fighters let a chance slip by. Let's just take a look at this. Fuller delivery by Ahmed. It's a good, good cut out there by Islam, but oh, the wicket keeper just doesn't get to the stumps on time. He's got to be a bit quicker. And uh, well, I think Paige Winder would have been in serious trouble if the wicket keeper got there. So a let off here for the. Uh, Black Caps. This one struck hard, and it's like the catch has been put down. That was a really good opportunity. So, chances slipping by here for the Nicosia fighters. They really need to hold on to these. I believe that's Kamran Ahmed who's uh, put that one down. You can see just a shake of the head. Well, he looks like someone who just wants to take a giant hole and dive right into it. He really should be taking that one. He really should be, and you can tell he's very disappointed with himself. Yeah, this one's going to be a top ball to end the over. So it's a 14 run over, rather expensive one for the Nicosia fighters. But I think they'll rue some of those missed opportunities even more. The Black Caps are 30 for one at the end of the second over. Of course, we'll take a look at the standings for Group B. The Sri Lankan Lions off to the perfect start with three wins on the bounce. Markor. They won one against the Lions. Beg your pardon, lost one against the Lions, and then one against the Black Caps. And of course, Black Caps, they've uh, started off with a couple of losses, the defending champs, both against the Sri Lankan Lions. Uh, there wasn't anything overly con concerning in the way they played. They were fairly tight losses, I would say. I mean, the margin of victory for the second one certainly looks quite bad on paper, but I think they were hanging in well there for much of the innings. It was just... It was just the case of the Sri Lankan Lions playing some terrific cricket as uh, that one is struck very well down the ground by Tej Winder Singh. He's a very, very good batsman, of course. He missed out against the Sri Lankan Lions in the last match, so he'll be keen to make up. But, you know, I wouldn't say the Black Caps, there's anything, you know, too concerning about the way they play. They still look to me like they're a side that could easily defend their crown as the champions. The first match, they lost it by one run. I mean, that's as tight as it gets. Hussein bowls a little bit fuller here, and it's going to be quite a chase for Al Tasman, and even he can't get to it, the little speedster. And it's back-to-back uh, -back boundaries here for Tej Winder Singh. And look, we know how these players, these batsmen play. When Tej Winder Singh is out there, he doesn't care about getting runs or, uh, beg your pardon, getting singles. All he wants is to hit boundaries, so we're uh, not going to see them uh, sprinting around and not going to see too many quick singles unless it's... <laughs> The player at the non-striker end desperately trying to get back on strike. Whoa. Yeah, he just pulls his length back a bit there, Hossein. But uh, just going back to the points, I think uh, maybe some issues with the bowling that they could correct. They might have to think a little bit about how they're going to open the bowling, which bowlers they're going to use in what order. Uh, I found it a little bit surprising that Kulvinder Singh only bowled a one over in that uh, second match against the Sri Lankan Lions. A better ball there by Hussein. But otherwise, they, they've been. Uh, I think they'll be just fine as a team. They could. They, should, they could probably. They'll probably still make it to the quarterfinals and be in a good position in the knockout stages to uh, continue their title defense. 
Meanwhile, for the Sri Lankan Lions, I mean, they look an incredible team right now. Such a formidable outfit, don't they? I mean, the way they batted in these first three matches today was absolutely stellar. It was uh, truly terrific. Yeah, that's it. Takes some pace off that one on Omar Hussein and uh, sneaks in a couple of dot balls here. And I was really impressed by that, by the third match, the one against uh, the Black Caps, where it was near perfect. It was a near perfect batting performance. I mean, they did everything right. They ran singles well. They hit the big shots. They hit classy cover drives. They basically just displayed everything. And uh, that is very wide by Anwar Hussein as Elvi Chowdhury fails to grasp that one. Yeah, a lot of issues with extras today for the Nicosia fighters. We saw them, saw them give up 34 runs of extras in that match against Markor, and they haven't started this one well. That's another extremely wide one, and is there an edge? There it is, and that is poor cricket by Tej Rinder Singh. I think even Hossein realizes that he's managed to get away with a very poor delivery. He's almost disappointed with himself that he's a bowl to bowl as bad as that, but this is poor cricket by Tej Rinder Singh. This is going incredibly wide, and for some reason, he decides to just poke his bat at it. He can see an edge through to Alvi Chowdhury, and he takes that one well. Of course, he's had a little bit of difficulty with the gloves, Chowdhury, but makes no mistake there, and that's a that's just a very silly wicket to give away. It's a gift. It's an absolute gift. And uh, we've seen some sides this uh, first week uh, very unnecessarily chase wides. And the Black Caps, one thing you have to be critical about their uh, first couple of losses is they, they did that a fair bit against the Sri Lankan Lions. They unnecessarily chase wides both uh, way down the offside and certainly plenty that were way down the leg side. As, a as the Nicosia fighters get a couple of wickets here. Uh, the skipper, he might have gone for a few runs, but he has managed to get two important wickets, Kulvinder Singh and Tej Winder Singh. So it's a 39-run power play for the Black Caps. And I have to say that this thing over here, uh, the fighters, as we saw, they ran out of time and were gave up penalty runs in the previous match. And one of the reasons was they just take so long to set their field. And they need to be a lot quicker. They're uh, still trying to get it right. And you see, just a little bit of discussion still. I mean, they've got to get there a lot quicker. And still some adjustments being made, but I think they've got it right now. It's a man on the 45. Uh, yeah, that's just played away. As you can see, there's nothing that man on the 45 could do about that. Mamam Howe later, just a spectator as Al Tasman. This is a poor delivery by him. I mean, we know what a terrific cricketer he is. We really hyped him up. We uh, know he's a very, very talented player. He's played youth cricket for Bangladesh. And I'd like to see him go over the wicket. I mean, you know how good he is going over the wicket. He's a left-hander. He can get that ball to go across. And I think he's done that here as well. I mean, his teammate, Monero Islam, at long off has uh, suggested he do so. This one's played well. And it's uh, fielded well. So it's just a single. That's a good stuff by Ramjan Hussein, who's out of the deep. And certainly he'll be a little bit disappointed with himself when it comes to that first match. I mean, he went for plenty of runs, bowled too many extras. I think he also got a bit obsessed with the short ball. We saw Manzarelli do the same for the Napa Royal Kings in uh, Group A's games. And of course, both of them are very talented bowlers, and you just like to see them learn to vary their length. You know, use the bouncer as a weapon. Not every ball needs to be a bouncer. As that's a well-directed short ball. Just uh, looking at the square leg umpire, he suggests that's the uh, one for the over. And you can absolutely, you can see John Gray with a reaction regarding uh, that wicket of uh, Tejwinder Singh. Anwar Hussein was almost embarrassed to claim a wicket on that ball. Totally agree. And then Chris Smith pointing out that why would you chase a ball like that? And this is a much better ball by Al Tasman. Very, very good ball. And I'd like to see him bowl some Yorkers as well. We know he has a nasty Yorker. We've seen it in uh, previous tournaments here in Cyprus. I know it just looks like the mosquitoes are starting to come back. I'm feeling a few of them. 
And the square leg umpire is just taking his cap off. And he's trying to brush them away. So we're, we're in that hour in Cyprus. It's mosquito time. Full and wide. This is played away. Is it going to go to third man? It certainly is. And that's a four. So a uh, good bit of batting by Bhupinder Singh. Just uh, throws his bat at it. Yeah, that's always a slightly risky delivery with third man. As fine as he is. I think if he wants to go for that kind of ball, he should, he should ask third man to probably move a lot squarer. Because currently... Third man is so fine. He's almost acting like a long stop. Well, he struck down the ground. There's a call of catch it, but it's going to take a bounce. But then it goes to the skip. Anwar Hussain and long on. And uh, that's the end of the over. 48 for two for the Black Caps as... Uh, well, it looks like we've got uh, some of our friends here, the mos our mosquito friends. They've come right back <laughs> into the commentary box. So, uh, well, it looks like they're also excited to watch some of this cricketing action as, of course, we uh, take a look at the graph for the Black Caps. Um, going along very steadily at 12 and over. I think they won't be overly concerned. Looking set to get a, a good total here. I would say that the Black Caps will be slightly more concerned right now. Beg your pardon, the fighters would be slightly more concerned right now. But certainly it is out of their reaches. Yeah, that is exactly what I was referring to. I mean, that is uh, umpire Sujith just trying to get rid of some of those mosquitoes that are hovering around here. And we're going to see Parvez Mia ball. Uh, he was quite good with his fielding. In the previous match, we know the uh, captain really trusts him. They take on an important role, and again, as we said, this is this is the issue with the Nicosia fighters, taking way too long to get their field right. Yeah! Oh, that's just delicately tossed up. Should be an easy catch from Abdullah Al Tasman. And we're seeing some of the poorer deliveries here result in wickets. That was not a good ball at all by Parvez Mia. It was just a floaty full toss, but the batsman just completely fails to connect. I mean, we've seen Pavandeep play some great cricket so far today. But that wasn't the case there. That was a poor shot. And it gives Abdullah Al Tasman a very, very simple catch. So Parvez Mia is like, well, that's exactly what I intended to do. <laughs> this one going straight to Al Tasman, and that's a, a simple catch for him. As he managed to get their third wicket here, so the Nicosia fighters with a good little fight back. Of course, uh, Black Caps, they. Uh, Started off in terrific fashion, but they've just been slowed down a little bit. I mean, they made 30 runs in the first couple of overs. And since then, the Black Caps, you know, just courtesy of these wickets, have managed to tighten the screws ever so slightly. It's going to be a little bit of a chase for the fielder at mid-wicket. That's uh, Saurav Ahmed. <laughs> sure, I do believe we have the mosquito spray, but... Uh, if you remember, I was very reluctant to use it. And, uh, oh, this could be uh, maybe half a chance for stumping. I mean, this is where someone like Preetaj Deol for MDOX is so good, isn't he? He would stand right up to the stumps for Parvez Mia, but Alvi Chaudhry, I mean, he's had a few issues so far with wicket keeping, so he's standing far back. And, uh, well, that's just allowing Bhupinder Singh to uh, advance down the crease without too much fear as... Uh, Parvez Mia bowls a wide. I always find it interesting when they stretch after the wide. I mean, surely you should do your stretching before you bowl. And uh, that's a connect there, Poop in their sing. I don't know why. He's trying to heave that one away towards that cow corner boundary rather than play towards the offside. This one's uh, gone up in the air. It's going to be another catch for Old Tasman. And boy, he's such a safe pair of hands. He's never going to drop a catch like that. As Bhupinder Singh once again finds the fielder at long on. So a couple of wickets follow this over for the uh, Black Caps. And you have to say, not the best shot selection by them. They've uh, kind of shot themselves on the foot in this over. Some uh, very unwise cricket. But full credit to the Nicosia Tigers for capitalizing on these opportunities. And, of course, that man, Al Tasman, who is such a safe pair of hands. And I think Bhupinder Singh will be very disappointed with that shot. And it's a very well-taken catch. So a good comeback here by the Nicosia fighters. And they've really managed to 
to stop the bleeding, that current run rate has fallen to under 10 and a half. I mean, of course, they were going at 15 and over early in the innings, the Black Caps. And this is what you like to see. I mean, uh, they had a tough loss earlier against Markhor, and now you want to see, we really want to see the fighters at their best. So hopefully a much better performance here. And this one is a uh, count by Sarpreet Singh. I think the thing with Singh here is you really have to just ball at his stumps. I mean, that's what we saw the Sri Lankan Lions do, and eventually he was clean bowled because uh, we know he has a temptation to go for some of these wild swings as the Black Caps are currently at 50 for 4 halfway through the innings. Here's Naeem Khan. No, oh, that is another poor delivery. They'll be very disappointed with that. And some of these issues with extras continue as they're leaking far too many of these. I mean, you have to feel for Alvi Chaudhry as well. I mean, he's deputizing with the gloves. And uh, his bowlers certainly haven't helped him with uh, some of this wayward bowling. And uh, that's not the way to start off this over. Of course, uh, we talked about all the issues with extras the uh, fighters had in the previous match. You know, 34 runs in that game, 20 runs already of extras, and these 20 runs have come exclusively off wide, so it doesn't even include leg buys. And uh, this one is played down to uh, Islam, that long off. So they have to be really disappointed with themselves here, the Black Caps, because, beg your pardon, the fighters, because. can't be appointed to give up all these free runs, especially to a good side. I mean, these are very simple things that you can fix in your game. As we see, Khan running in for this ball. This is played away, and that is not a wise ball to uh, Sukjinder Singh. You've really got to be pitching it a lot fuller to him. I mean, look at his stance. He's uh, pretty much waiting for that ball. He doesn't look like he could play uh, too much of a front foot shot. So if you bowl it full and straight out of stumps, he looks like he's going to get dismissed. I mean, look at that stance. And... The way he's holding the bat is really, he's just waiting for a ball on a good length that he can just uh, play towards the leg side. And we now see the skipper, Hossein. He's uh, just gone out at the deep. He's out in a deep, fine leg. Protect the boundary. And the interesting thing about the fighters, fielders on the leg side is, of course, they're trying to prevent the two. Yeah, they're not backed up all the way on the boundary rope. As, uh, this one is uh, tells you a lot that the only appeals came from the boundary. <laughs> this one popped up in the air. It's a catching opportunity. I think it's going to land safely. And it's going to take a few bounces before it uh, lands towards Monirul Islam. But not very uh, convincing cricket so far by the Black Caps. I mean, we are starting to see here that their lower order has a few concerns as well. They've got some power. Probably not that same consistent ability to hit. This one's uh, struck towards Monirul Islam. And it's a great bit of fielding. Terrific stuff by Monirul Islam. Absolutely sensational commitment, and he really deserves a round of applause for that. And he's going to get a couple of claps from his teammates. Came across so quickly, and then just, uh, well, he's having a great day in the field, isn't he? I mean, we saw him take an absolutely sensational one-handed catch, and he must be feeling so confident right now. I mean, rocking the cool shades and the pink cap, pink baseball cap. That's a really nice look there for Monirul Islam. This one's a full toss. It's a poor delivery by Naeem Khan. And uh, that's what Singh is pretty much waiting for. So Sukjinder just slaps that away. 
towards Cal Corner, and it's a huge, huge six. Uh, and I think Naim Khan will be a little bit disappointed with the way he bowled in that over. And he just have to wonder. No worries about that one being a no ball, of course. It was uh, well under waist height. But you just have to wonder why the captain, Anwar Hussain, has gone with him. I mean, he's got plenty of bowling options. There's a no shortage of decent bowlers in this uh, Nicosia of fighters side as we, of course, uh, take a look at the scorecard. I mean, uh, quite a few starts there for the Black Caps, but no one's quite been able to kick on and make that big score. And, of course, uh, Mangala Gunasekar has very interestingly been held back this yeah. inning. This one's popped up in the air. This could be a cotton ball opportunity for Parvez Mia. And, well, he tries hard. It was a good effort. It was always going to be tough. But uh, the Black Caps, once again, they live to fight another day. That was a that was a half chance presented right there. It was uh, skied. Went high up in the air, and Mia, yeah, you just have to feel for him. That's a, a difficult opportunity, so I have to congratulate him for the effort, and good to see Abdullah Al-Tazman acknowledging that. Uh, it takes a bit of a bottom edge, and it goes towards uh, Anwar Hussain. Just the one run. That's a slower ball here, Mia. That one is another single, and I really have to praise how well Mia has bowled. I mean, uh, I seriously hope I don't hex him now. I mean, I've already seen even uh, Stefan Gucci in a short appearance in the commentary box managed to curse one of the bowlers. So, uh, top stuff by Mia so far. Uh, this one is struck well, but should just be a single. And a little bit of a juggle by Monirul Islam, but he will ensure it's just one. I mean, he's just, he's kept things simple, hasn't he, Mia? I mean, you can tell he's, uh, he knows what his game is, he knows his limitations, and he's just keeping things tight. And I think a lot of fighters, bowlers, could just look at how Mia has been bowling and try to learn from it. I think some of them have overcomplicated things a bit too much, but not the case with Mia. It's a bit too short and wide, but he'll get away with that one. As a Singh just can't quite get hold of that. And again, bottom edge, Nover struck it all cleanly, so well done here, Parvez Mia. He's managed to sneak in a quiet over, and he has absolutely terrific bowling figures. Two for eight in his two overs. That is a real standout performance and a star performer for the Nicosia Fighters so far as the Black Caps are 74 at the uh, end of the seventh over. Of course, let's take a look at some of the action we'll be bringing to you tomorrow, of course. We start off the day with the same matchup we started off today with. Markor against the Sri Lankan Lions. Markor will be looking to rebound after the tough loss they had earlier to get today against the Sri Lankan Lions. And once again, Markor will play the Nicosia Fighters. And then we get to see the Muflons against the Sri Lankan Lions. We've seen that matchup so many times here in the European Cricket Series. And I can't wait to see both these sides. Of course, they both had a fair few changes. And then we also get to see the Limassol Zelmi for the first time this tournament. Should be a very exciting day of cricket. I mean, Group B has started off very, very well. Today, I mean, we've seen some some very good cricket. We've seen some high-scoring cricket. I think it's been very different to Group A. Of course, Group A was a lot more low-scoring matches. Several tight finishes, and we often saw scores of 80 or 90 would be enough to make the difference in a lot of these games, but not the case here. I mean, we've seen those those big totals scored throughout the day. I mean, the Sri Lankan Lions, they posted some mammoth totals, but they still needed to go to uh, late in the innings to actually uh, secure their victory. Of course, uh, looks like any issue has been cleared up and we're ready to continue the game. So, Saurav Ahmed gave him 14 runs in his first over. Let's see how he fares over here. That was a very wide delivery. and He's actually been bailed out by Lovedeep Singh there. Oh, goodness me, what has happened here? Love deep thing. I think uh, I think he's just annoyed with himself. I think he's really annoyed with himself that he's uh, poked out out of wide. And that explained the reaction. And this is a good Yorker here by Saurav Ahmed. As uh, I'm just going to trickle down towards uh, Al Tasman for a single, and it's it's been good stuff here these last. Uh, 
seven or eight balls by the they can see a fighters. They've managed to slow down the rate significantly. Currently at uh, just above 10. This one's played uppishly. It's going to take a few bounces before going to Monirul Islam. But as you can see, once when Ahmed gets it right, he's a really, really good bowler. And if it wasn't for all those freebies he's given, he'd have some stellar bowling figures. But... Unfortunately, he's just uh, overdone it with the extras in his uh, two performances so far today. But he's got a chance to certainly improve his figures in these three balls he's got left. I think getting a wicket here would seriously hammer the Black Caps' chance of getting to a good total. And once again, same problems again for uh, Ahmed. He bowls a wide, of course. Uh, he had to bowl seven extra deliveries in the last match. Uh, these fighters played against Mark Warren so far. He's bowled five wides, Ahmed. I mean, if he could cut that out, he would uh, really, really be a fantastic player. And, of course, uh, Chris Smith uh, writing a nice little tidbit of history about Cypriot cricket. We'll just get to that there. And it's uh, gone wide. There's uh, nothing there. Of course, indeed, Cyprus were the first ever non-British military cricket team in Cyprus. Uh, as we mentioned during the uh, match between the fighters and the and Markor, we had a a little bit of a chance to review Cypriot cricketing history and uh, before the Mouflons uh, certainly came about, cricket was mostly restricted to the uh, different bases here in Cyprus. As This one's gone up in the air. That's going to be an enormous six. Really well struck by Singh. I mean, when he gets a hold of it, he sure gets a hold of it as we, get, of course, take a good look at uh, Sam Williams and Stefan Gooch out there from our very own Blue Crew. <laughs> it's just... Uh, Landed in front of the tent of the third umpire. Things have just gone a little bit quiet for the Nicosia fighters. Need to get some energy back. I mean, they've also got to try to get through these balls as quickly as possible. Of course, there's still enough time left, but they don't want to be in a situation where they give up penalty runs again. But the amount of extras they're bowling, they're really not helping themselves. Yeah, you can just see, I think, <laughs> Ahmed feeling it's just been one of those days. Hasn't it for him? That's the seventh wide he's bowled already. I mean, we pointed it out in the previous match. He bowled five wides and two no balls, and he's almost replicated it here as well. So two more deliveries left in this over. This one's been slogged absolutely beautifully. <laughs> Don't worry about that one. It's going for a six. That is a massive shot. As you can see, it's uh, landed not too far in front of the parking lot. And all of a sudden, after uh, getting a few uh, quiet, uh, quiet over in with Parmves Mia and then starting this over off with three singles, uh, it's just gotten away from Saurav Ahmed again, hasn't it? He bowled those two wides and got hit for a six, bowled another wide, and then gave a six up here. And one ball left in this over. How is it going to end? And some calls for out, but of course it was pitching well outside the leg stump, so it was never going to be out. As this over comes to an end, it costs the Nicosia Fighters 18 runs. And I have to say, that's exactly where you need to be bowling to sing. I mean, we've seen that mostly if you give Sarabjit Singh a fair bit of length and you just allow him to get underneath the ball, he's going to hit it away. And you can just see it from the way he's holding his bat. I mean, he's pretty much only going to hit it in one direction. As we, of course, uh, take a look at the graph here for the uh, Black Caps. Of course, uh, it dipped a little bit during the uh, after the end of the power play, as it often does. But they've uh, just managed to get it back on track with that massive 18 run over given by Saurav Ahmed. And I mean... Generally, since the power play, the fighters have bowled quite well, but those, that six over, that eighth over, the six over, bowled by Naeem Khan, which went for 18 runs, and that, and the eighth over, bowled by Saurav Ahmed, are the two blips. Outside of that, they've done a terrific job with their bowling since the power play, so it's just some, some, some errors over here that are really costing them, and, and I think, of course, yep, the... Uh, Batsman now calling for a helmet here, Love Deep Singh, and uh, certainly needs to. I mean, all Tasman bowls at ex an express pace, and of course, we know he doesn't shy away from bowling a bouncer, but interestingly enough, you can see the Sukhjinder Singh hasn't called for a helmet, so 
Really, I uh, have to say, you have to be a very, very brave cricketer to face Al Tasman without a helmet. And we see he goes for the shorter ball, and the umpire, square leg umpire, indicates it's the. Uh, that's one for the over end. And it's been given a no ball, actually. And yeah, we've, we can confirm this is, this is a no ball for the field. So they had too many fielders outside the ring. And you could just see number 98, Kamran Ahmed, has been moved back in. So again, just just very careless here by the Nicosia fighters. These are completely avoidable mistakes. And that's a good ball by Abdullah Al-Tazman. Ball's a nice slower one that uh, Love Deep Singh doesn't get near. And a good point there by John Gray. That's car corner, not cow corner. That's certainly the name it earns when uh, Atta Ullah was uh, playing for the Black Caps back in the... Uh, 2021 tournament that was held here in Cyprus. I mean, you have to be really careful with uh, parking your car there. He was a terrific left-handed batsman. And just uh, having a look at the square leg umpire for that one, is height an issue on this ball? Uh, the umpire seems to think it's fine. Let's have another look at this. And yup, I think he's got it right there. Square leg umpire. It's a tight one, but it looks like he's got it right. And they decided to change their mind now. So after looking at the replay, they've given it a no ball. And, uh, oh, it's the second free hit of the over now for given up by the fighters. And this one is heaved up in the air. It's going to take one bounce, and it's going to go over the boundary rope. So uh, Singh, Singh's been dealing exclusively in boundaries. He's uh, been seeing it like a football and he struck three sixes and hit two fours. This is a really good innings by him as he moves on to 30 of 12. Of course, he's been aided by a few mistakes and a few mishaps here by the Nicosia fighters. They're just losing their concentration a bit here. And all these errors they're making, they're very easily preventable. Go shorter again, and is this a catching chance? There's a fielder coming underneath it, and it's very, very well taken by the fielder out in the deep. So uh, Singh's innings comes to an end. He played terrifically well, of course. We do know that he likes to target that cow corner boundary all the time, or car corner, as uh, John Gray points out. So terrifically well taken. Goes for the shorter one again. Just prods that one up in the air, and this is really well taken. A good catch. You can see a bit of a juggle, but all that matters is it has been taken. But you feel Sukhjinder Singh has done the damage and just brought the Black Caps back into this match. I mean, we saw that the... That run rate had uh, dipped to just around 10 at these last few overs where I think the Black Caps made some uh, rather silly errors. They Needless wides, of course, and no ball for having too many fielders outside the ring. I think stuff like that is very easily avoidable, and uh, they should do better. And I think Anwar Hussain better have a big talk with the fielding side after this match to uh, just try to iron some of these things out because... They're really causing issues. And of course, once again, it's uh, the same problem for the Nicosia Tigers. They've Looks like they'll give up penalty runs here again. And uh, this is a good ball by Abdullah Tasman. And I'd really like to see him use that Yorker more. But just think about all the things that the uh, Nicosia fighters have done that they could easily prevent. 25 runs of extras. And it's easily going to be at least 30 now with uh, the penalty runs coming up shortly. And, and then, of course, the fact that they just take so long to adjust their field. I mean... That's one of the reasons why they end up with all these penalty runs. That's a good slower ball by Al Tasman. And we can see that any time a bowler bowls a slower one, you tend to hear a big ooh or ah. Unless you're Iftikhar Jaban, of course. In his case, there's a direct correlation between how loud he grunts and the pace of his ball. Oh, that's a very wide one, and uh, Alvi Chowdhury sticks his foot out, and you can see he's limping a little bit. And uh, they can, this is uh, kind of disappointing for Altazan because we know what a quality baller he is, and uh, this is rather needless. 
I mean, despite all these extras, he's uh, still only given up 18 runs off the 11 balls he's bowled so far. And again, he's going to change the angle once more, go around the wicket. I mean, he bowls just fine over the wicket, and just that he needs to get his radar right. And again, this one is way too wide, and there's going to be a chance here to run a single as well. I think Alvi Chaudhry has done a terrific job to get his uh, glove on that. Let's just take a look at this. This is a good dive by Alvi Chaudhry. I mean, we can see he's a rather short wicket keeper, but he caught across really, really well. And of course, uh, as many of you might have noticed, the uh, clock has run out, so just watch, watch out for the umpire signal at the end of this over. Going to Sakra plays it away, and this is uh, not the right area to bowl at to Mangala. He's uh, always going to strike that away. And that's, of course, the president of the Cyprus Cricket Association right there, Mr. Uh, Mohamed Hussein. That is a good shot. My goodness, Saker. But you have to feel like Al Tasman has probably let himself down a little bit. He's a terrific cr cricketer, one of the very best. But, of course, all eyes on the umpire here to see whether he's going to give penalty runs. Of course, uh, they've certainly now been credited. Here, and uh, let's just take a look. There's the umpire signal. So five penalty runs yet again for the Nicosia Fighters. They uh, failed to bowl their overs in time for the second time today. And they've just really been slow out of the gates as a side. I mean, there's, there's little things you can do as a team, even if you don't necessarily have the same quality as your opposition. You know, try to keep extras to a minimum. Try to bowl your overs on time. But they've just done everything wrong today, unfortunately. Well, you do hope this is a, a good learning experience for them and we see a stronger fighters team in these coming days as this is a, a fuller delivery by Naeem Khan. His first over was a very expensive one. Went for 18 runs. Now let's see what the Black Caps will try to target here. Of course, uh, as you can see, they're currently projected to reach 123. That would be a very, very good total for them. And one they certainly backed themselves to defend against a... Uh, you can see a fighter's side who were rather unconvincing with the bat in their first match. Big swing and a miss by Mangala Gunasekara. Of course, Mark Hoare made 163 in uh, that previous match against the Nicosia Fighters. Currently the uh, best total we have seen so far in this European Cricket Series in Cyprus. And then the Nicosia Fighters' reply was just 82. Uh, this is hit straight up in the air. And it's going to go past the camera tower. Terrific shot. As you can see, it's uh, deposited straight to those grapevines, which are looking uh, rather barren this time of year. It's uh, a full ball, a bit over-pitched. And Gunnar Saker, with just the full face of his bat, smashes it straight down the ground. Of course, we do know that the Black Caps, they target that short, straight boundary more than any team we've seen so far. It was a strategy that worked well for the Punjab Lions in the first European Cricket Series here. And, of course, they have plenty of players from that championship uh, Punjab side and they're using a lot of their tactics this is a rank full toss it's going to be struck away and it's going to go for a four uh, we see a little bit of fielding by some of our spectators who've come to uh, watch the game today of course the Sunday it's a day off people have come down to watch the cricket and an expensive over so far Oh, and it's a very unfortunate way for Mangala Gunasekara to get out. But it's not the first time he's got out like that. Just the, the, the manner in which he stands, his stance, it's always going to lead to his uh, the ball deflecting from the pads onto his stumps. It's, uh, we saw him get out in similar manner numerous times during the night series in 2021 as a very muted reaction by the fighters to that wicket, of course, uh, nearing the end of the innings. And... Uh, Black Caps already posted a very, very healthy total. So just the one ball left now in the innings. And we're going to see Kumar come out. Going to try to get one big slog right at the end of the innings. He's going to try to smash this one as far as he can. Uh, they're just trying to get their field right here. The Nicosia Fighters just 
standing. Advances down the crease, and again, you can just see Naim Khan sees him advancing down the crease, wants to ball it wider, but unfortunately, he balls a bit too wide. And again, just look at Kumar's stance. Look at, look at where he's actually taking guard. He's moving across a fair bit. And yeah, I think he's, it's very clear, he's targeting that cow corner boundary. There's no fielder there. And it's a full toss, which he can't quite get away. I have to say a slightly lethargic bit of fielding by Ahmed at mid-wicket. I think uh, if he'd uh, just been a little bit more alert getting to that, they might have been able to cut out the single. But in the end, the Black Caps do get to a very healthy total of 124. So uh, a dominant performance in this first innings by the Black Caps who are looking to notch their first victory of the tournament. And well, let's have a look at the highlights of this innings. Of course, we saw some nice striking early by Kovinder Singh. He is such a joy to watch, isn't he? And this was an absolutely sensational catch by Mali Rol Islam. One of the better catches we've seen throughout this tournament. It'll be up there with uh, Arjun Shahi's blinder back on Thursday. And, uh, and we would see, of course, uh, Paige Winder Singh would continue the scoring. And of course, that was a familiar story for the extras throughout, for the, throughout the innings. Uh, lots of extras were bowled by the Nicosia Fighters. They gave up 34 runs of extras and uh, this was a costly drop. Uh, the Nicosia Fighters would, uh, outside of that drop, be generally pretty decent in the field. I think uh, so fielding mishaps probably less of a concern and that was a terrible, terrible way to go out. I think he'll be extremely annoyed with himself. Uh, Tage Winders think it's an extremely wide ball. Scythe the throw is bad at it. And he gets an edge through to Alvi Chowdhury. And then, of course, <laughs> we saw Umpire Sajith out at square leg trying to get rid of some of the mosquitoes which are starting to appear. And this was a good shot by Bupinder Singh. Just uh, ran that one down to third man for a four. But, of course, uh, he wouldn't really get going. He'd make just a four runs before presenting a catch to Abdullah Al-Tazman. And it was just during this phase when Purvez Mia was bowling very well. And he got those couple of wickets. He thought maybe the fighters have a chance to just uh, claw their way back into this game and uh, restrict... The uh, Black Caps do something around 100, but that just wasn't the case. They had a lot of very expensive overs in the middle. I think uh, Saurav Ahmed went for plenty of runs. And then, of course, we saw that massive, massive over as well, given by Naeem Khan. He got 31 runs in the two overs he bowled. And look at some of these great shots. This was terrific hitting by Sukhjinder Singh, who came in and made quite an impression. Smacking 30 runs of 13 balls until he was caught by Ramjan Hussain. But that would just mean Mangala Gunasekara would come in and he would continue the slogging. Okay, 15 of 6 and that was a pick of the shots, wasn't it? Absolutely delightful one there, that straight drive for a 6. And then of course you get clean bowled by Naeem Khan. Not the first time we've seen a ball ricochet off his pads onto the stumps. And in the end, well the Black Caps have posed an extremely healthy total of 124. So they're in a great position now, the Black Caps, to notch their first victory of the tournament. And while the fighters we better see some real fight with them, pardon the pun, when they come out to bat in the second inning because they better not find themselves in a hole where not only do they have two consecutive defeats, but two defeats by a massive margin, which is seriously dent their net run rate. Well, join us shortly. We'll be back in just about 10 minutes' time, bringing you the final innings of the day.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back to Eeps and Us on this gorgeous Easter Sunday here in Cyprus as we bring you the final innings of cricketing action for the day. It's been a very eventful day. We've seen a lot of runs scored and we hope to see plenty more in this final innings. Certainly, if you're a Nicosia Fighters fan, they have a bit of a challenge on hand over here. They've got to try to chase down a target of 125. We saw them struggle a bit to make runs in the first match, but they uh, can get things right here. They could really, really uh, maybe bring us a good upset to end this day. Of course, it's been a terrific day to watch some of these games. I mean, there's been a lot of good action. We've seen some clean hitting. We've seen a lot of good run making, a lot of good stroke play. I think we've all been very impressed by the way the Sri Lankan Lions have played. They've been uh, the, sta the stars of the day. Some standout performances from them. And of course, uh, both these sides who we're seeing here in the final match are looking for their first win of the day. It's a couple of losses to start off with the Black Caps against the Sri Lankan Lions and the Nicosia Fighters. They obviously had that very, very tough loss against Marcor. So uh, they're looking to open their account in this tournament. As, as we're going to see. Tejvinder Singh bowling this uh, first over. He's going round the wicket. Here's the first ball. And he looks to swipe across the line, Mahmoud. I think there's something like that. I mean, especially the line he's bowling. And I think this is exactly what Altaz is saying. He could easily look to play this on the offside. Try to maybe run one down to third man. There isn't too much protection there. We've seen a lot of sides aim to just just run these balls down to behind point. And this is a very good ball by Tate Vinder Singh. Starts well. Nice full delivery just outside the off stump. A yeah, good chatter here amongst the Black Caps. They seem very encouraged despite their two losses. And this time around, he does exactly, I think, what we were suggesting he do, which is just try to run that ball down to third man. It's a well-played shot, and especially with this angle, where the bowler going round the wicket. Just use the pace of the bowler and a lick, look to hit it towards that goal. And hey, maybe if we can uh, get that rule change you've been lobbying for, uh, one day you could get eight runs if you uh, find it into those goal posts. One's uh, played away by Mahmoud, and there's no fielder there, so Singh just getting it slightly wrong on this delivery. Yeah, he's just uh, over pitches, just strays onto the pads, and of course, uh, square leg umpire, uh, Thurunga, does a very good job of getting out of the way of that. And of course, this target isn't un unattainable. 125 is a healthy total, but Certainly one that can be chased down. Of course, they need to look at this as hit a couple of boundaries every over and uh, try to run quick singles and also target certain bowlers in the Lions' attack, certain uh, players they might perceive as weak links. But that's exactly what I would say Black Caps did to the Nicosia Fighters. Of course, we saw how they went after certain bowlers. And they maybe showed a bit more respect to others. I mean, a lot of runs of Naeem Khan's overs they really look to target him as this one's a, a full toss. I know it's a rather poor bit of footwork as we see a bit of giggling from a few people in the crowd. Uh, he could have done better with that. There was no need to uh, play football. Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> he just kicks it on after that. Goodness me, I don't think you'd want him on your futsal team, would you? As the Nicosia Fighters uh, score 10 runs in the first over. Of course, a quick reminder that it's been 132 matches since we last had a golden ball, we've come close to getting one a number of times in Cyprus. We were just uh, one run away from getting it earlier today when the Sri Lankan Lions placed the Black Caps, but we haven't quite managed to break this streak yet. And hey, maybe this is the match we see that. As of course, uh, we're going to see uh, Chetan Sharma inserted into the attack. He's had a very respectable day with the ball in hand. It's a good line length. Um, 
There's a few comments about his uh, fielding, as of course, uh, looks like we're getting the mosquitoes right back here. Uh, or just landed on the side of my head. But uh, Sharma, he was a few fielding errors, but his uh, bowling otherwise has been terrific. He's uh, I mean, a, a standout bowler for the Black Caps so far today. He's just been very consistent with his lines and lengths. And that one's going to be given a wide. Just straying a bit there, but you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to just, uh, yeah, he's trying to go for that body line, sort of uh, line and length, aim for the rib cage, around the hip. And it just comes off the pads over there. Well, this is an interesting tactic by Sharma. He seems to be uh, targeting the pads for uh, Abdullah Al Tasman early in this over. I mean, Abdullah Al Tasman, he got off to a good start against Markhor. Managed to make 20 runs, uh, 15 deliveries, but uh, they really needed him to kick on to uh, try to get to that target. But. Uh, this time around, the fighters are chasing a slightly lower target. Back then, the target set for them was 164, 125, a little more attainable. But really, you feel their chances of winning this match all come down to Al Abdullah Al Tazmin. I mean, it's a very similar construct for this side to uh, what we've seen with Everest. You know, with Everest, we really see how Jeevan Lumsel tries to guide them through games. It's the same over here. When it comes to the, uh, you can see a fighters. That's a full toss. It'll surely be struck away. But he's actually just handed a simple catch to Tej Winder Singh and long on. And boy, he'll be absolutely livid with himself, Abdullah Al Tazmin. He's been given a full toss. And I believe the umpires have signaled this a no ball. Let's just see. I mean, they were getting ready to celebrate the Black Caps. Let's take another look. There's no issues over there, so uh, yeah. In the end, it's a it's a legal delivery. I think they were just asking Al Tasman to wait while they confirmed that, but certainly no question on uh, initial viewing that it would be a no ball for height. And Abdullah Al Tasman is very disappointed with himself. Just a one run of five balls by him, and just the manner he got dismissed in was uh, mildly frustrating. And now, now you really feel like the Nicosia fighters have dug themselves into a massive hole, getting just one run from their star batsman. Well, boy, they really needed him to play a big innings, make a make 70 runs, 80 runs, try to guide them through, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, they just find Tejwinder Singh. Tejwinder Singh is such a good fielder. He's not going to put those down. Look at that. Dashing here as well. And, of course, both these sides do have uh, brilliant uniforms as well. I mean, a Nicosia Fighters uniform certainly... Reminds me a lot of the MDOCs one. And then you look at the uh, Black Caps jersey. It's really uh, inspired by a retro New Zealand jersey. So a couple of the nicer jerseys we've seen so far this tournament. Yeah. And it gets behind this one well from yeah, and it's a duck ball. Yeah, we saw how well Mia bowled in the first innings, but it's a completely different challenge for him. Haven't seen him. Really scoring at a, a rate that is quick enough to uh, get to 125, but he's going to have to find a do it, find a way to do it. Of course, I uh, have to say the Black Caps have left a massive gap towards uh, cover. There's absolutely zero protection there, so they're trying to encourage the fighters to drive. And if you notice, there's about three or four fielders in kind of wide slippish positions. I mean, I'm not sure you can quite see them on camera. But really, the majority of the f fielders are a behind point. Of course, if you heard any of that uh, this clapping, it's uh, me trying to get rid of some of these mosquitoes. As, of course, we take a look at the standings for Group B, the Sri Lankan Lions. Started off perfectly well with uh, three wins on the bounce. Then the Markhor split their first couple of games, losing to the Sri Lankan Lions and then winning to the Nicosia Fighters. And, of course, the Black Caps here, they are winless so far, losing both their games. See the Sri Lankan Lions, one of them a really, really agonizing loss, just uh, losing by one run. And yeah, just take a look at that field. It's a very interesting field. Big gap uh, towards extra cover. And takes an inside edge.
What are you trying to induce to drive here? Black caps, that's not something you typically see in T10 cricket. And that's going to be a wide one by uh, Tejwinder Singh. A lot of encouragement from behind the stumps. And why not, of course, uh, they're feeling pretty chuffed about their chances to pick up a first win, having batted so well in the first innings. And this one's uh, just played away to point. And it's a little bit of a juggle for the fielder. And it will be a quick single for the Nicosia fighters who have to start striking boundaries. They haven't quite taken advantage of this power play, have they? Just 15 runs so far of the 14 balls they faced. It's going to be so tough, really, to get away a bowler of the quality of Tej Winder Singh. And uh, that one's taken an edge, hasn't it? And uh, Tej Winder Singh picks up his first wicket of this game. And uh, it's all smiles right now for the Black Caps, who have started this innings in style. Looking really, really dominant. And uh, you're just starting to fear it's going to be a familiar story for the Nicosia Fighters. Well, we saw them make 82 runs trying to chase down 164 and uh, they haven't started this one at all well. They haven't started well. Parvez Mia advancing down the wicket, takes an edge, it's through to the keeper. And that's a very good catch by Poen Deep. Well, we know how good he's been with his batting and some sharp glove work as well by him throughout the day as uh, the Black Caps now will be feeling very confident about their chances to notch their first victory of this tournament. It's taken a while for the defending champs, but they're... Uh, getting closer and closer to it. Although, of course, there's one man who can spoil their party. It's him, Anwar Hussein. Of course, uh, many more ECN faithful will be wondering why Hussein isn't playing for the Nicosia Tigers. Of course, he's a transfer to the Nicosia Fighters. Both of them are uh, Bangladeshi expat teams based in the capital city of this country. And uh, it's not particularly shocking for players to move between these two teams. Ones that just played away well by Hussein, and this is smart cricket. And yeah, it's going to be quite a chase, but oh, has that touched the boundary rope? Well, we'll wait and see and find out. But well, that's a stellar effort by the captain, Rajwinder Brar. It's uh, one captain trying to deny another captain a boundary. Let's just take a look at this. It's a great slide by Brar, but. The umpire's decision is that he's uh, managed to stop that. And uh, this one's uh, struck well by Hussein, but struck straight at the fielder. And boy, what a massive mix up over there. And uh, the Black Caps just not quite able to capitalize. Of course, we are rather late in the day. It's uh, almost close to quarter to six local time. And boy, oh, that's a massive mix up by both sides. That's a real comedy. They almost had a real calamity there for the Nicosia fighters. They, didn't, they don't need to shoot themselves on the foot any further. And this is a really, really well struck by Mahmoud. And that is an enormous six and a much needed six for the Nicosia fighters. This is so well struck. Take a look at this. A beautiful swivel. He works it by a fine leg. You can just see how long that's traveled. It hits the fence all the way out on the fine leg boundary. So a beautiful bit of striking here by Kamral Mahmoud. As the Nicosia fighters, they really, really needed that six to uh, get this run rate to something acceptable. It's currently at eight. Still uh, well below what they need it to be. But uh, maybe, just maybe, these two can get out there, build a good partnership in these middle overs and uh, put the fighters in with a shout near the end of the innings as of course we can see the Black Caps were 15 runs ahead at this stage. Now we're going to see Chetan Sharma continuing. This is this is a good move by the skipper. Pulling out uh, one of his key batsmen of course. I think the Black Caps are well aware of the Nicosia Fighters Achilles heel. It's uh, very similar to a lot of the teams we saw in Group A. They're, they're a top heavy side. And uh, if you can you can really just get early wickets, you pretty much cripple their uh, chances 
to uh, chase down any kind of a total. Of course, uh, a side like the Black Caps or the Lunkin Lions or the Nicky Tigers, these are teams that bat a lot deeper, but not the case with all the teams we've seen so far this tournament. Many of them are really dependent on two or three stars to score the bulk of their runs. And I certainly feel that's the case with the Nicosia Fighters with one of the key stars, Abdullah al Talzman, back in the dugout. And a big heave there by Anwar Hussein. Just trying to absolutely belt that one. The captain really should be maybe looking to play this one down the third man. Or look to open up the offside as well, I mean. Now this one's going to be a chance for a single, and oh my goodness, maybe it could have been a little bit tighter. But I love Deep Singh, just lets that one slip past him. I have to say, though, it was run very casually by the Nicosia fighters. Almost as if they were expecting Love Deep Singh to miss it. Granted, he wasn't that far from the stump, so maybe if he catches it cleanly, it have been half a chance for a run out. To the fuller one. This is struck beautifully. This is struck cleanly. And it's a great six. Mahmoud is looking scintillating so far. That's the second six he's hit. This is a gorgeous shot. Absolutely gorgeous shot. Gets underneath it so well. Hits it towards extra cover. And that's a great six. I mean, he's looking like a solid cricketer, isn't he? I've liked some of the shots he's played. He's played intelligent cricket so far, by the way. He uh, picks out the ex deep extra cover boundary because there's no fielder here. And a smart, smart cricket by him. He's not just looking to whack everything across the line. This time he heaves it, but it's gone straight to Rajvinder Brown, who's put it down. And he gets that little bit of fortune he needed. And, of course, uh, right on cue, he does the exact opposite of what I've said he's done so far. It's not the easiest opportunity for Brown, but you would expect a player of his caliber to take that. normally a very very good catcher very safe pair of hands I can't have saying I mean no real foot movement by him he's trying to just reach out and belt it towards cow corner I mean even if he does get some bat on that the best he can hope for is maybe a toe end or an edge that goes for a boundary don't really think that's the right shot to that kind of ball That's a terrific ball by Sharma and a terrific spell of bowling by him. Gave him just 10 runs in the two overs he bowled and gets, got that all important wicket as well. So the Nicosia fighters are 32 for two at the four over mark, going along at exactly eight and over. Now, if we just uh, take a look at the graph here, the fighters currently trending well below the required run rate. Gonna need to get that run rate up significantly, really quickly. I mean, Already climbed up to uh, 15 and a half required with the six overs to go. So, I mean, Kamral Mahmoud is obviously going to have to try to stick around here till the end, but he's going to need some good support from Anwar Hussain because not only is he struggling to hit himself, but he's really chewing up a fair amount of dot balls. And the captain, of course, Rajvinder Brar, inserts himself into the attack. Bit of a surprise that we haven't seen Kulwinder Singh so far. It was struck up in the air and it's struck beautifully by Mahmoud. It's going to be deposited into those olive groves. And look at that by the umpire. He signals a six. He gets his hands up. And once again, look how well he gets underneath it. Gets down low, watches it closely. And he hits it aerially. And that one is, uh, boy, it's gone very close to the camera tower. I mean, a uh, lot of credit to uh, Richards and Valentine. They've been up in the camera tower. And so many balls have gone past them today. It's uh, been an outstanding bit of work by both of them throughout this week. And, uh, this is just uh, played away gently. It's going to be a single. Now here's what Hossein, you know, you'd like to see the captain play some intelligent cricket. 
either way, should, if, he can, if he doesn't feel like he can hit the big shots, he at least needs to keep the dot balls to a minimum. And uh, try to get Mahmoud on strike ASAP. Really not want to see him go for one of those uh, heaves to the leg side when the ball is uh, a good five feet outside the off stump. That's another dot ball here, so uh, very, very precious dot ball. And just looking at these statistics, I mean, you really can't have Mahmoud facing just 11 balls the way he's playing. A lot of his teammates, you know, they've just chewed up too many dot balls. He hasn't had the support he needed. This is struck well by Anwar Hussein, and right on cue, he does give Kamran Mahmoud the support he needs. That is a terrific shot as Brar slightly over pitches this and it's right in Hossein's arc. I mean, look at that bat lift. Look at the bat lift. It's such a high bat lift. His bat's almost perpendicular to the pitch and he finally gets a hold of one. And now you can see the Nicosia fighters just five runs behind what the Black Caps were at this stage. So again, this is the key partnership. This is the most important partnership of this innings for the fighters. And once again, he just tries to swipe across the line. And as we can see, if anything's bold, wide outside the off stump, Hussein can get nowhere near it. He really needs to start opening up that offside. Looks like we're going to see a change of angle by Brar. He's not going to come over the wicket for the final ball of this over. This one's uh, just play this one right onto his foot, hasn't he? Yeah, that's an inside edge right onto the inside of his right foot. That is extremely painful for Anwar Hossein, but I'm pretty sure it was quite painful for Kamral Mahmoud to see a lot of those dot balls go by standing at the non-striker's end. So the Legacy of Fighters now just, they've managed to get that run rate up a little bit. It's now at nine. But still, you just have to, he, Mahmoud surely is going to be a little bit frustrated by the way his captain is batting especially when he's just seeing it like a football right now. And we're going to see Sarabjit Singh come into ball. Of course, Sarabjit was terrific in the first innings. Big pardon, Sukjinder Singh. He was terrific in the first innings. Made 30 runs of 13 balls. Hit two fours and clubbed three big sixes. And that's a good ball to start off. And it gets the respect it deserves from Kamral Mahmoud. Still no cool winder sing for the Black Caps, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, in the end, we don't see him used at all in this innings. We only saw him get the one over in the second match against the Sri Lankan Lions. That one is uh, angled at the stumps, and oh, was there? A, there's certainly a chance for overthrows over there, but he just turned his back, Kamal Mahmoud. He wasn't even looking at Anwar Hossein. Let's just have a look at this here. Oh, if the wicket keeper hits, that he's gone. Hossein has gone over there. That probably would have put a real dent into the Nicosia fighters' chances of getting anywhere near this target. Let's see now. Are we going to see a slightly different approach from Hossein? And at least he lets this one go for a wide. I think we've seen a few batsmen so far today. They've needlessly reached out at wides and... Uh, that's certainly been something the Black Caps have done an awful lot. Of course, we saw how Tej Winder Singh was dismissed. Reaching out at one that was incredibly wide, just throwing away his wicket needlessly. And of course, we just have a slight pause as uh, Kamral Mahmoud puts his helmet back on. Nice, clean him up. That is a terrific ball by Singh. Angling at the stumps. Is that a Yorker length? And Hossein, well, he's just been swiping across the line on every single delivery. He managed to get hold of one, but really, he's looked uh, subpar out there. And I think the captain will be thoroughly disappointed with himself. He should have put out a better effort. And uh, this is a, a good wicket for the Black Caps to get as the uh, wickets continue to tumble for the Nicosia fighters. And now they're really going to be looking at that dugout, wondering where the runs are going to come from. And the biggest disappointment is just the fact that Mahmoud has only faced 13 deliveries when he's looking as good as he is. I mean, his captain out there faced 11 balls 
scored just 10 runs when you're trying to chase a target of 125. I mean, if you're struggling to hit the ball, then I guess you're better off leaving or at least trying to get the informed batsman on strike. And uh, it's going to be Naeem Khan coming into bat at number five, of course. Uh, we saw he went for plenty of runs in the first innings. The Black Caps really targeted him. I think he bowled a few too many full tosses as he went for 31 runs in the two overs he bowled. And this is a good ball here by Sarvjit Singh. You have to say his length has been absolutely spot on. He's been bowling it nice and full. And he's not bowling it particularly quick either, which uh, seems to deceive a lot of the Nicosia fighters. I mean, we've often seen in this format that actually taking pace off the ball is a lot more effective. Oh, that's just missed the stumps by a whisker, hasn't it? The main thing is these dot balls keep piling up. I mean, we don't have Meyer Patel here today, but I'm just looking at the over summary for the match so far, and you can just see so many dot balls. And again, it's the little things that matter so much. The Nicosia fighters, they could have converted so many of those dot balls into singles. As, of course, we see the fourth dot ball of the over already, and uh, very, very good over for the Black Caps. Just the two runs off it, and they'll be mildly disappointed here. The Nicosia fighters... Uh, some of the cricket at times from them has been a bit lackluster. They've, you can see the potential. They certainly have players who are capable of excelling in this format, but they've just, they're just, they're just not got their thinking right. And I think the, once they get their thinking cap on in these next few days, hopefully we see a changed side, an improved side. But one thing we'll see for sure is Kulwinder Singh. So we've uh, really been looking forward to seeing him bowl. And yeah, the two matches so far, he's received just three overs. And let's see how he fares over here. This one's played officially. Could be a catching opportunity, and he just feel like the pressure got to Kamral Mahmoud. I mean, he's uh, been watching stranded at the non-striker's end for so long, and now he presents a catch to Raj Winderbrar, and that pretty much might be it for the Nicosia fighters. It's... Uh, it's going to be very hard to see how they'll get near this target. As the only batsman who's looked uh, convincing for them so far this innings has to depart. You know, you just feel he was starting to get frustrated at the non-striker's end. He's really not faced enough balls because his teammates have uh, seen off too many dot balls. So, fighters now. Well, it looks like they're staring at a second major defeat of the day. And uh, not the start they would have wanted to this tournament, of course. We do know that certain teams would uh, probably look to pick on them in this group and uh, they might be labeled the weak link, but certainly thought they would have the potential to upset sides. But if they, if they play this kind of cricket, I don't see that happening. And uh, hopefully their planning improves over these uh, next few days. Yeah, we're going to see Ahmed. Again, that was one that was going really wide. No reason to get your bat onto that, to just get a single. It's just little things like that that could easily be ironed out by these sides and uh, would improve them so much. I mean, just take a look at some of the extras. The fighters have bowled today. 30 plus runs of extras in both of their matches so far today. They've given up penalty runs because of slow over rate as well. And a lot of that is simply because they just spent too long between overs arguing about where to where to place fielders. And it's little things like this that I think I think you know Hossein is really gonna have to have a word with the rest of his team about. And again, that's a good full and wide bowl by Kulwinder Singh, and he gets a well bowled from his captain. Yeah, you can see all smiles right now for the Black Caps. I think they're just at a point now where they're waiting to uh, see out their first victory. And oh my goodness, could have been a better effort there. 
And that's just going to trickle over the boundary rope. And I think Kulvinder Singh is going to be a little bit annoyed. The uh, fielder at square leg hasn't put in a better effort. <laughs> it's basically nutmegs him. He's been nutmegged by the cricket ball. And uh, that goes away for a four. So the Nicosia fighters are at 52 for four at the seven over mark. And it certainly be a good chance to just uh, talk about how action has been so far today. Of course, uh, we haven't quite had a chance to just calculate the average runs for so far today. But of course, let's uh, before we do that, let's have a look at tomorrow's action. We start off with the same match that we started off the day with today. Mark Hoare against the Sri Lankan Lions. That was a very entertaining match to open up the day. And then uh, the Nicosia fighters will have to see Mark Hoare again after they really took a beating at their hands. And then, of course, you get to see the Muflons and the Limousons Zalmi for the first time this tournament. So it should be a very interesting Monday, a good way to open up the week. And uh, well, what's going on over here? And... The umpire signaled a, a dead ball, I believe. This one's gone up in the air. And uh, this is going to drop safely in no man's land. Because, of course, uh, this game is just beginning to peter out now. And uh, the result is beginning to seem fairly certain. So just looking at the scores today, of course, uh, you know, we ran some of the numbers for Group A, and certainly in some of the early days, the sides were averaging just 90 runs a day, but let's look at what a massive difference we've seen today. I mean, the first match between Mark Hoare and the Sri Lankan Lions, Lions scoring 135, Mark Hoare 113. He tries to just swipe across the line, and he gets it over. <laughs> Mangala Gunasekar is a very tall player, so it's a good little boundary here for Naim Khan. He'll be delighted by that. As, of course, a very hello to Kitty Hundley. Thank you for joining us here at the end of the day in Cyprus. It's been a fairly high-scoring day, as we pointed out. And we had that stellar match between the Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions. And as we take a look at this, this is going to be an edge and another slice of good fortune for uh, the fighters. Probably a, a little too, a little too late for them, but I think Naeem Khan will certainly enjoy adding a few runs to his uh, ECS account. That, that second match, though, was a really, really entertaining match, of course. I mean, you know, it came down to the wire. It was the closest we came to ending the golden ball streak. Sri Lankan Lions posted 119 runs. And the Black Caps need 11 off the last over with uh, Mangala Gunasekar on strike. And this one is uh, struck away. It's a good bit of fielding. And it was just a little bit surprising that Mangala Gunasekar couldn't actually make those 11 runs. Uh, at that stage, you really felt the Black Caps uh, would probably defeat the Lions in that game, and then Roshan City World, and he held his nerve. And Gunasekra unfortunately couldn't. And uh, the Lions managed to take that one. Of course, uh, eight runs were needed off the last ball, so the six in that match came off the very last ball, which made it a, a one-run victory for the Sri Lankan Lions. And then, of course, we saw Markor against the Nicosia Fighters. I mean, Markor scored the biggest total of the tournament so far, made 163 runs. That was uh, a very, very good performance. And the Nicosia fighters just about made half as many runs as Mark Hoare getting to a total of 82. It was uh, very disappointing for by them. And, of course, uh, we've uh, discussed some of their issues at length uh, throughout this second innings. And this one is struck away, and it's struck very, very well. Of course, that will be followed up by... a. Uh, a good match between uh, Black Caps and the Sri Lankan Lions. Of course, the margin of victory does say 45 runs, which sounds like uh, the Sri Lankan Lions utterly dominated them, but it was certainly a, a well-balanced match for uh, much of the second innings. I think right at the end, the Black Caps just slightly fell away. They lost too many wickets, and the Lions were able to take that one as we, of course, uh, take a look at this run rate. The Nicosia Fighters are currently well, well, well below the required And a big swing and a miss here for Khan. Well, 
I think tomorrow's matches really should be very interesting, of course. Uh, should have in these next couple of overs a chance to uh, just discuss these a little bit more. I mean, of course, we start off the day with that game between Markor and the Sri Lankan Lions. This one is uh, probably angling down the leg side. And despite that defeat earlier today, I was uh, quite impressed uh, by a lot of what Markor showed. I think it's a good team. There's, they've got a nice plan. Tactically very proficient. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're capable of beating the Sri Lankan Lions. I think, let's just take a look at this. And it's very hard to see from that angle, really, because the wicket keeper is uh, blocking the view. It's, a, it's an inconclusive angle, in all honesty. Might have to take a look at another angle here. And it looks like the uh, third umpire is satisfied with those angles. I would say this is the, way, the angle which really conclusively says he is run out. And so uh, a nice bit of glove work here by Pavandeep Singh. He's had a very good day, Pavandeep Singh, hasn't he? His batting has been terrific, and I've liked some of the work he's done behind the stump. So uh, another wicket falls here for the Nicosia fighters who are, once again, putting on a pretty tame effort with the bat similar to their performance in the previous game they played against uh, Markor, but let's continue our discussion about tomorrow's matches. I think that game between Markor and the Sri Lankan Lions is going to be uh, even closer than the one we saw today. Markor uh, certainly showed a lot of potential. I mean, that 163 runs they clubbed against the uh, Nicosia Fighters was quite spectacular. That team has so much fighter firepower, and then of course Markor immediately have a back-to-back -back game. They'll face the Nicosia Fighters right after that. One's uh, struck away by Alvi Chaudhry, the wicketkeeper. And of course, in the third match of the day, we'll see the Muflons against the Sri Lankan Lions. And this is going to be a very good look for me. Of course, uh, Muflons and Sri Lankan Lions, they've played each other many times in these big knockout matches in Cyprus. Of course, tomorrow's is just a group phase match, but these two teams know each other very well. They're two experienced teams. Of course, the Muflons have been in three consecutive ECS finals. This one's uh, played away towards uh, mid wicket. And, uh, of course, the Muflons will be feeling pretty annoyed about the way they uh, lost the last final. Of course, it was washed out. And the Black Caps won by virtue of the fact that they were uh, top of the table. Top of the table, though, by two points. Big part in two wins, to be fair, which uh, I think the Black Caps will say, look, that's, uh, that's proof enough that we're the better team. But I think this will be a slightly changed Muflon side. Of course, uh, we saw Kitty and a few others ask yesterday if Scott Austin will be playing for the Muflons. And... They're going to be missing some key players. No Grisavik Singh, no, Mo no Scott Austin. Of course, they will still will have the likes of uh, Captain himself, Mohamed Hussain, as we just see Alvi Chowdhury cleaned up here. And the six wicket falls for the Nicosia Fighters. And, uh, well, the score looks like 6-6-6. Six, six, six. So uh, this continues to really get worse and worse here for the Fighters as they need to try to get an unattainable 59 runs in the final over. So there'll be some key players missing for Muflons to, tomorrow, and uh, it's going to be a slightly changed side. So it'll be interesting to see how they're able to do in this tournament. I mean, they still did manage to make the semifinals in the local T10 league, so I don't think anyone should discount them. And then, of course, we have a good chance to see the Limassol Zelmi. I mean, they're, they're a terrific team. I mean, they made a fantastic impression uh, the last time they were here in the European Cricket Series in Cyprus. And, of course, they've uh, made it two consecutive domestic T10 finals here in Cyprus. So if we take a look at the bowling figures, that's uh, been a great performance all around. I mean, Ashwin Derbra did go for 13 in that one over. Uh, that was largely thanks to some uh, good batting by Kamral Mahmoud. Of course, uh, last year the Nicosia Tigers and the Limassol Zalmi faced each other in the T10 final. And it was uh, the Zalmi who came out on top there. And then this year, in the domestic league, it was uh, Zalmi who beat the Tigers. So we got a repeat of the final. And uh, this time around, it was Zalmi who won. So it'll be good to have a look at them for the first time this tournament tomorrow. And then, of course, we'll uh, round out the day tomorrow between the Muflons and the Zalmi. That should be a terrific match. So 
There's some really mouth-watering clashes tomorrow. This one's popped up in the air. Should be a catching opportunity. And it's a regulation catch for Mangala Gunasekara. As the wicket's just uh, tumbling here for the Nicosia fighters as they're going out rather tamely as we uh, conclude today's action in rather relaxing fashion. It's certainly been a, a good day of cricket. I think we've had a lot of close matches. The fighters, unfortunately, uh, haven't quite been able to uh, contribute to that. They've uh, struggled to make runs and gone for too many as well, but they'll have a few concerns themselves to iron out. So I look at this group, and it's very hard to predict who's uh, going to be able to make it to the Final Four. I mean, certainly the Sri Lankan Lions, they've, they've got off to a terrific start with three wins on the bounce, and you now have to really fancy them to make it out, and they can see a fighters for sure. I mean, they're going to be heavy underdogs, and they're going to find it really tough to... Uh, Gets to at least fourth place. Yeah, this one is down the leg side, and the umpire signals it a wide, but certainly they could play a role of a spoiler, the fighters. I mean, they could spoil it for one side, try to maybe knock off a team that uh, expects to just uh, brush them aside. I mean, if Abdullah Al Tasman can have one great innings, if he can go out there, he can make 70, 80 runs in a match, as we know he's capable of doing. I mean, these fighters will look like a very, very different team. I think today it's just been too many mistakes by uh, key players. A lot of silly errors. More than 30 runs given up in extras in both matches, but they'll have to iron it out. But, of course, uh, let's have a head over to the Black Caps now and give them some credit. I mean, they have to take two losses against the Sri Lankan Lions. Two tough losses. Yeah, this one is struck away, but I think throughout the day you've seen that this is a very strong side, and I wouldn't be too worried about their chances to uh, defend the title. They've uh, demonstrated they have a lot of power hitting, some good, some good bowlers. Rajwinder Brar is obviously a very smart captain, an excellent captain, a great cricketing mind. And this will be a very sweet first victory for them as, of course, uh, they can finally notch their first victory of their tournament. Of course, some adjustments they could make would be maybe at times not relying too much on their batting firepower. This is a wide delivery, and the umpire will just uh, spread his arms. I mean, we've certainly seen that they have the explosiveness, but because they possess so much firepower, sometimes with the bat in hand, they don't do the simpler things. For example, letting wides go, running the, the first, first run hard. And I think that's really been the difference between them and the Sri Lankan Lions today, is that the Sri Lankan Lions, they, they couple that firepower with doing a lot of the fundamentals right. And uh, I really feel that uh, as this tournament progresses, we're going to see this black cap side improve and uh, get back to uh, somewhere and near the top of the table as this one. They're going to take a thin edge and go over the wicket keeper's head as it's a streaky boundary to end this innings. It's been a rather tame performance, though, by the Nicosia fighters as the black caps uh, notched their first victory after a couple of defeats. Handed to them by the Sri Lankan Lions. So it's a 51-run win. And some very, very solid stuff here by the Black Caps. As well, of course, take a look at the highlights of this innings. Of course, we saw Tej Winder Singh bowl the first over. And Kamral Mahmood, he was really the only batsman who looked convincing. Oh, then they can see a fighter as we saw how well he played. One of the strike rate of 221. And Abdullah al Tazan, he'll be so annoyed with himself. He started off very slow out of the gates, and then, you know, a, a simple full toss. He manages to find the fielder out at long on. He'll be very, very annoyed with himself. And then we just saw Wicket continue to tumble at a regular interval. That was Rajvinder Bra, the captain, leading by example there with some great ground fielding. And look at some, some of these gorgeous shots by Kamral Mahmood. I love how he was willing to hit the ball all over the park. A true 360 degree cricketer. And this was a very nice looking shot by Anwar Hussein, but uh, unfortunately for him, there wasn't really much else to cheer. He saw off 11 balls, giving up, scoring just 10 runs on them. The captain, I think his shot selection was a little too poor. He just tried to heave everything to the leg side. No real foot movement, even if it was wide down the offside. He tried to smash it to count corner. And I think he'll be a little bit annoyed with himself. We uh, saw a few boundaries struck at the end, but really all this was uh, too little too late. But this was a very good run out, some uh, smart bit of glove work. Uh, and, uh, we can keep a problem deep saying what a very, very good day. Uh, we saw him bat extremely well earlier. 
And that's some good bowling by Sukjinder Singh. That would be the dismissal of Alvi Chowdhury. And that was a solid catch by Mangala Gunasekra. And of course, that was a streaky boundary right at the end of the innings by Ramjan Hussain. And in the end, the Black Caps notch a dominant victory and win this one by 51 runs, their first victory of this tournament after two losses against the Sri Lankan Lions earlier today. Let's have a quick look at the scorecard. Of course, as we said, really not much to cheer for the fighters on that scorecard outside of the 31 runs that Kamaral Mahmood played. He was looking really good, but he just felt the pressure got to him because he wasn't getting enough support. And in the end, he was dismissed, presented a catch to the captain, Rajwinder Brar. And it was just good, good, good work all around by the Black Caps. Everyone chipped in. They bowled quite well. And as you can see, the extras gave up six runs of extras. That was terrific stuff. And we'll now have a look at their bowling figures. Taking a look at the bowling figures, it's a very good all-round performance. Brar might have gone for 13 runs in his solo over. But, uh, of course, uh, that was thanks to some terrific batting by Carmel Mahmood. But outside of that, those figures are stellar. I mean, two bowlers with an economy rate of five. So Jinder Singh giving up just four runs in the two overs he bowled. So uh, terrific, terrific stuff. And a dominance victory for the Black Caps and a much needed victory after a couple of losses against that really good Sri Lankan Lions side and uh, this one will go down in the books as a Black Caps victory by 51 runs for the Nicosia Fighters who are still looking for their first win. So it's been a great day of action. So far here on this first day of Group B play, we've seen a lot of runs scored, a lot of exciting run chases, and I think this group is going to be very exciting. I'm really looking forward to some of the games tomorrow when we see the Zulmi as well as the Muflons feature for the first time this tournament. Of course, we're right at the end of the day, and it's a good time, time to thank all the people involved in uh, bringing you this production. Of course, a big shout out to our blue crew over here at ECN. I mean, these are the guys behind the scene who make it all happen. A big thank you to the Cypress Cricket Association as well for their brilliant hospitality and organizing this tournament. And last but not least, a big, big thank you to Spring Productions. I mean, Valentine's right there. He's holding the camera. He's been terrific throughout this week. Richards was up in the camera tower. He needed a helmet for all the balls that went past him. And of course, Martins, our director, has done a terrific job. They've all done a sensational job throughout this week. And unfortunately, we'll be saying goodbye to them. They'll be thoroughly missed. But of course, we'll have a new crew back here for you tomorrow. So it's been a great day here in Cyprus. We've seen a lot of runs scored. I'm looking forward to some more Group B action. And well, some of that will be coming up tomorrow. But before we bring you tomorrow's schedule, let's have a look at the highlights of today's action. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed today's play. Race, sex, color, or age. Stars of the future of European cricket are ready to take the stage. Balls getting quicker with the cooker barrel starting to swing. The keeper in your mind standing just behind, pressure is creeping in. Some give it flight and some give it rip as the ball really starts to spin. But our fast ones alert with the crack of a bat, the ball flies over for six. Cricketers. European cricketers Share your passion for riding flag with the world Cricketers European cricketers Time to cheer and show the world what you got Master blasters turn on the spire Cricket's a beautiful game Smiling faces and celebrations As the champions enjoy their fame European legends breaking records, making their own dreams come true. Watched by millions of European cricketers, show the world what they can do. Now picture this: ten runs needed to win off the last over of the match. Fielders are on fire, sliding and diving, want to take that world-class catch. 
tension building as the bowl runs in Will it be short or your curve or slow? A six will win it, four to tie into the golden ball we go Cricketers, hear me cricketers Share your passion for riding the flag with the world Cricketers, hear me cricketers Time to cheer and show the world what you got That's gone all the way over into the clubhouse and ordering a pint at the bar. Hundreds of clubs all over Europe are coming together today. Thousands of cricketers want to be stars, show their talents when they play. We've got commentary, action back, cricket frenzy. You hooked, you can't deny. Worldwide audience watching to see which team will lift the cup up high. Oh, cricketers, you be cricketers. Share your passion for riding the flag with the world Cricketers, hear me cricketers Time to cheer and show the world what you got la, 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 la. There he goes, he sent that pack in In the sun, but the shaka Six more Oh, cricketers, hear me cricketers Kookaburra ball that's going to be circling our planet for years to come.